This public hearing of the Committee on Public Services is now called to order. Before I begin, I'd like to greet you all a happy new year. Usually, if it's the new year, we make resolutions. But it seems like the airport sector has already broken there. So the first day of the year. Wala pang isang buwan nang magsalita ako tungkol sa kalunos-lunos na estado ng air transportation sa bansa. Pero andito na naman tayo talking about problems at the start of a new year. Parang masyado naman nating ine-embrace ang naiya ranking na third most stressful airport in the Southeast Asia and Oceania region. We've been told many different causes, as, a, as vague as a technical glitch, the interrupted, uninterrupted power supply, an outdated air traffic navigation system, over voltage, and most recently, a faulty circuit breaker. Sa pagdinig na ito, we seek clarity as to what transpired and what really caused this New Year's Day fiasco. We've been told that the damaged equipment and two additional UPS units have since been procured. Kung wala pa lang sira ang UPS, ano ba talaga naging problema? Allow me to share an interesting simulation by a social media user about the impact of the incident and the amount required for a new system. The latest published tally of affected passengers is at 65,000. It could have been more than that. If we estimate a $500 cost for each passenger in aborted flights and in transit, wasted fuel, accommodation, food, rebooking, lost time, lost baggage, staffing, overtime wages, emotional damages, etc., that would easily be 30 to 40 million dollars in impact. That would have already covered at least one sixth of the cost of a completely new ATMC. But above all, we cannot overlook the impact of this incident. The domino effect is massive and chaotic. Hindi ko na iisa-isahin dahil sigurado ko narinig na ninyong lahat ng mga reklamo. To this, we want to be briefed on the contingency plans of the OTR and major air carriers. The Air Passenger Bill of Rights mandates the passenger's right to full reimbursement in case of flight cancellation kung kasalanan ng airline. Pero kung force majeure o wala namang, wala namang kinalaman yung airline at ang gobyerno may problema, Ano ang makukuha ng ating mga pasahero at ano ang nakuha nila? Knowing that and why it happened and seeking accountability is to our best interest. But at the end of the day, our goal is to make sure that this will not happen again. Not only by upgrading the system or replacing the equipment, but also making sure that the institutions running these are empowered and capacitated. Thus, we also tackle today Senate Bill Number 1003, filed by Senator Sani Angara, which aims to strengthen CAAP as an institution. Furthermore, in our discussion about air transportation safety, it is only pressing that we also tackle Senate Bill Number 1121, or the proposed Philippine Transportation Safety Board, or PTSB, whose primary mandate is not only to investigate on transport-related accidents, but to also look at its causes and help prevent them. Kasi ngayon, ang nag DOTR at kaap rin. Pero sila yung involved mismo. So, it will be really important to ensure impartiality. And yung iniimbestigahan mo yung sarili mo, paano yun? Furthermore, in our discussion about air transportation safety, um, last Congress, the 18th Congress, we were able to pass on third reading the consolidated measure, which was subsequently approved by both houses. But unfortunately, it was vetoed. Apparently, it was redundant. But how can it be re redundant having an independent body, which we don't have now? There are many theories about being posited, but the only real answer will have to come from Kaap, as it has all the logs of the incident. It is important to note that CAAP follows the non-punitive 
nature of investigations, much like what we propose in the Philippine Transport Safety Board. CAAP does not investigate on pain of penalty or contempt because public safety should always be the principal goal of investigators. While the loudest call right now may have been for heads to roll, it is proposed that the hearing adopts a non-punitive tone for now, especially to technical officers like CAAP engineers if we are to exact the truth behind the incident and prevent the same from happening again. Accountability will follow after laying out the steps to ensure the safety of passengers. So with this, I would like to acknowledge the senators present here today, my vice chair, Senator J.V. Ejercito, who provides me with a lot of uh, technical knowledge on transportation. Uh, we also have here in order of arrival, uh, Senator uh, Jingoy Estrada, our majority leader, uh, Senator Villanueva, uh, Sherman. Sure. Um, we also have Senator Nancy Binay, our Senate Pro Temp, uh, Senator Lauren Legarda, our uh, minority member, uh, Senator Risa Antiveros, and Senator Bongo. Uh, may I ask the committee secretary to read for the record all the resource persons that are logged in. And for Thank those who are you. present online, please turn on your cameras. Uh, I would also like to acknowledge our senators who are present online, Senator Bong Revilla and Senator Robin Hood Padilla. Meron pa bang mga senators na hindi ko nakikita? Okay, um, Secretary, please read into the records uh, the, ones, the ones who are present here today with their designation. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam Chair. Good afternoon, Good afternoon Your Honors. Uh, for today's public hearing, the following resource persons are present. Uh, Honorable Jaime Bautista, Secretary, Department of Transportation. USEC for Aviation and Airports, Robert Colim. Um, Director General of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, Captain Manuel Antonio Tamayo. Together with him is Deputy Director General for Administration, Attorney Danjun Lucas. Deputy Director General for Operations, Captain Edgardo Diaz. Uh, Manager of the Philippine Air Traffic Management Center, Ms. Anna Papag. Also with them, um, Chief Aviation Service Safety Inspector, Captain Florendo Jose C. Aquino. Chief Financial Officer, Ms. Marian Raimundo. And Power Plant in Charge of the Manila CNS ATM Facility, Mr. Raymond De Jesus. Um, also here is the uh, ALP on duty, Mr. Radante V. Hebron. Attorney Adelisa Irugin of the Corporate Planning Office, Attorney Roberto Martin S. Buenaventura, Assistant Director General for Enforcement and Legal Affairs, OIC of Procurement Division, Attorney John View Masiglat, and Attorney Nestor Mendoza, Corporate Secretary. From the Civil Aeronautics Board, we have Executive Director Attorney Carmelo Arcilia. Together with him is Acting Deputy Executive Director Maria Elben Moro, and Acting Board Secretary Clarabel Ann Laxina. From the Manila International Airport Authority, we have General Manager Cesar Chiyong, Mr. Brian Ko, Senior Assistant General Manager, Assistant General Manager Ms. Irene Montalvo, and Mr. Enrico Gonzalez, Assistant General Manager for Engineering. Also present is the OIC, and, uh, OIC President and CEO of Clark International Airport Corporation, Mr. Darwin Conanan. Virtually present, we have General Manager Julius Neri from Mactan Cebu International Airport Authority. Also present is uh, former Director General of CAAP, Lieutenant General William Hotchkiss II. Together with him is General Rodante Joya, former Deputy Director General of CAAP. From the Department of Tourism, we have Honorable Maria Esperanza Cristina Garcia Frasco. We also have from the Department of Migrant Workers, Yusek Hans Leok Kadakdak, Under Secretary for Welfare and Foreign Employment. Also present virtually from the DBM, we have Director Elena Regina Brillantes, Ms. Maria Cecilia Socorro Abogado, and Attorney Carlos Borja. From the AFP, we have Colonel Roberto, Robert Bitas, Assistant Chief of Staff, for Command and Control Communications Computer System. Together with him, we have Colonel Ryan Rainey Sonsa, 
Colonel Alvin Hate, Colonel Fernando Ventura, and Colonel Francis Neri. From the Department of National Defense, uh, we have Assistant Secretary Ase Coselito B. Ramos for Logistics, Acquisitions, and Self-Reliant Defense Posture, Colonel Robert Bitas, Colonel Ryan Sonsa, and Colonel Fernando Ventura. From the National Security Council, we have Director General Clarita Carlos. Together with him is Major Jim Donaire. From the National Intelligence Coordination, Agency, we have retired Police Lieutenant General Ricardo De Leon. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, virtually present, we have Honorable Ivan John Uy. From the Governance Commission for GOCCs, we have retired Justice Alex L. Quiroz. And from, from the Commission on Audit, we have Director Emma Moises. Uh, and Ms. Virginia A. Lero, State Auditor of the COA CAAP. For our major air carriers, we have present from Cebu Pacific Air, Mr. Michael Ivan Shaw, Corporate Affairs Officer, Attorney Paterno Mantaring, and Attorney Maria Cecilia G. Natividad. From Air Asia Philippines, we have Captain Darren Adrian Acorda, Captain Gomer Monreal. And from Philippine Airlines, we have Attorney Carlos Fernandez and Captain Leo Bernabe. For stakeholders, present here today, we have Mr. Samuel David from the International Air Transport Association, Mr. Alfred Adriano from the Airline Operators Council, Mr. Rabi Vincent Ang from the Air Carriers Association of the Philippines, Mr. Genaro Velasquez from the Board of Airline Representatives, from Meralco, we have Vice President, Mr. Joseph Alan C. Baltazar, and Mr. Danilo Aquilio, Head of Energy Services, Enterprise, and National Government. From the Sumitomo Corporation, we have Attorney Lloyd Chadwick Lim. From Thales, Australia, we have Director Harry Nuske, and their partner, Attorney Jomini Nazareno from the Romulo Law Office. From the P2 row, the supplier of the UPS, we have Vice President Eric J. Soriano. From the Institute of Integrated Electrical Engineers of the Philippines, we have the National President, Engineer Linton Bage. And we have Captain Benjamin Solis and Dr. Maria Cherilyn Salazar Rodolfo, lead convener of Safe Travel Alliance. That's all your honor. Thank you. Uh, I would like the Secretariat also to administer the oath for our guests today. Uh, please stand, raise your right hand. Also, the ones attending online, please turn on your camera. To all research persons, especially those attending virtually, please open your camera. Please stand and raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this proceeding? Thank you. Madam Chair, for the record, all those who took their oath answered in the affirmative. Thank you to our secretary. Now, I would like to ask uh, if there are any senators who would like to have a brief, st uh, stress on brief opening statement. I'll acknowledge first the, in order of arrival, Senator Jingoy. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, fellow members of uh, this committee on public, public services and to all our resource persons. I filed resolution number 392 to conduct an inquiry on the reported power outage and technical issues in the uh, Nina Aquino International Airport on New Year's Day or on January 1, 2023, which resulted in cancellation of hundreds of flights, inconvenience of thousands of passengers, and shutdown of Philippine airspace, thereby further adversely impacting the image of the country as a tourist destina tourism destination and hurting the national economy. I follow this resolution with the purpose of ensuring that this fiasco or similar incident will never happen again. It aggravates the already unpleasant image of the NAIA, which is being regularly labeled as one of the worst and most stressful airports in the world. This calls for a remedial leg legislation and urgent action from the authorities to save NAIA from becoming a national disgrace or pambansang kahiyan. 
We need sophisticated technologies and competent manpower and experts to ensure uninterrupted airport operations and to defend, to, to defend it against sabotage, cybersecurity attacks, and other threats. And I joined the committee in identifying the actual problems and to come up with the needed solutions by crafting meaning, meaningful measures to urgently address this. This is of most, utmost importance because it is a matter of national security and safety. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Jingoy. I'd like now to wait. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Mark Villar and Senator Sherwin Gachalian. Um, Senator Joel, you may proceed with your opening statement. After which we will have uh, Senator Nancy in order of arrival, then Senator Lisa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Madam Chairperson, esteemed colleagues, and to everyone uh, present in today's uh, hearing, uh, good afternoon. Madam Chairperson, just uh, hours ago, the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration experienced a similar incident. And uh, while misery may love company, the sad fact is that on New Year's Day, many of our kababayans were indeed miserable. We all welcome 2023 with high hopes for the new year. Unfortunately, at 9.49 a.m. Philippine time, the festive mood of the previous hours was dashed by the shutdown of the Philippine airspace, st stemming from a problem in our air traffic control system. Habang nangyayari, to, nangyayari po ito, uh, Madam Chair, marami po tayong natanggap ng mga texts, messages, at iba-iba pa sa social media pages natin na humihingi po ng tulong. Alam ko, lahat tayo nakatanggap, Madam, Madam Chair. May mga naririnig tayo na mahigit walong oras na naghintay sa airport. Meron namang mga napilitang gumastos ng mas malaki dahil na-delay ang flight nila ng tatlo pang araw, Madam Chair, dahil po sa pangyayaring ito. May mga OFWs na umiiyak dahil nangangamba silang wala na maabot ang trabaho pagbalik sa abroad. Marami pa pong ibang kwento. Nang magbukas po ang Senado noong Enero at 3, agad nating inihain ang Senate Resolution No. 390 upang maimbestigahan ang pangyayaring ito. Nakipag-ugnayan po tayo kaagad sa ating Senate President, Mig Subiri, at ako natatandaan niyo po, Madam Chair, sa inyo po bilang chairperson ng Committee on Public Services. Senator Grace po, maraming salamat at nagagalak po tayo na nagpatawag po kayo agad ng meeting upang malaman natin kung ano talaga ang nangyari. Panagutin ang sino mang may kasalanan rito at siguraduhin hindi na po mauulit muli ang insidenting ito. Madam Chair, we believe that this hearing is not about pointing fingers. Rather, we need to establish accountability because this incident has far-reaching implications, not only economically, security, national security, but also in terms of the mental health of the people who were affected of the delays. During this hearing, we want to know was this really an unforeseen event, Madam Chair, or was this merely a disaster waiting to, ha waiting to happen? Meron po bang mga ganitong insidenteng nangyari na noon? Bakit hindi po nakorek? Totoo po bang outdated na ang sistema ng ating air traffic control system? Nagkulang po ba sa maintenance? Ang equip mga equipment natin kaya nagkaroon ng problema itong circuit breaker ng communications and navigation system. This representation hopes that this hearing can shed light on these issues with a view of ensuring that our country's air traffic management system is up to par with highest global standards. Higit po sa lahat, umaasa po tayo hindi na ito mauulit muli. We look forward to collaborating with and hearing from our resource persons from the DOTR, CAAP, other agencies and stakeholders to get to the bottom of the issue. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair, and may God bless us all. Thank you, Senator Joel. Um, after Senator Nancy, I'm sorry, I think uh, Senator... Um, Senator... Lauren arrived ahead. I, I, okay, Senator Lauren mm -hmm. first, and then Senator Nancy, then Senator Lisa. Senator Thank Chair. you, Madam Chair. I will not make an opening statement because I believe that we need to hear from the resource persons. I just wanted to advise the body that I filed Senate Resolution 418 that will be referred to the body and let the explanatory note be inserted into the records. And second, just a friendly reminder to all our resource persons, especially the agencies who are accountable to the Filipino people and the travelers, that let us not please use the U.S. outage as an excuse in 
any manner, uh, in any reason that we may give. So they may have the reasons for having undergone that. Uh, we want to get to the bottom of the outage in the IA so that it is not uh, replicated, does not happen again in the future. Just a uh, fair, uh, friendly warning or reminder. Wag po natin gagamitin ang nangyari sa Amerika uh, na uh, kung sila malaking bansa, tayo, nangyayari talaga yan. Hindi po ganun. Gusto natin malaman scientifically ano po ang naganap. Salamat. Yan. Pinangunahan na ni Senator Lauren. Maraming salamat. Um, Senator Nancy, you're now recognized. Uh, magandang hapon, Madam Chairperson, colleagues and guests. Maraming gustong magtanong, masamang pangitain ba ang nangyari sa NAIA sa simula ng taon? This year, 2023, was supposed to be a pivotal year for us. A year when after being bogged down by the pandemic, we could finally take off again to reach our shared dreams. Yet right on the first day of the new year, we suffered a failure to launch that hugged the headlines not only in our country, but in every news channel and newspapers across the globe. 637 flights canceled or grounded, more than 78,000 passengers affected, Di pa po natin na factor in ang impact sa negosyo at ekonomiya at ang implikasyon sa turismo in the two days that the Philippine airspace virtually stopped. The passengers have since moved on, but sadly the incident has left a bad impression on us in our effort to sell the Philippines abroad. This anomaly is an embarrassment that will not go away soon. The New Year's Day fiasco is a shame that we all bear and a responsibility that we all share. Nandito po tayo hindi para magturuan o maghanap ng sisisihin. Nandito po tayo para alamin ang ugat ng problema at hanapan ng pangmatagalang solusyon para di na muling maulit ang insidente. We cannot afford to drag our feet, especially not when we are starting to gain some headway towards recovery. What is important is to immediately identify the problems and how far and deep these have spread and do our best to resolve them and ensure that they do not occur again. We need to act decisively so that we can convince not only foreign tourists, but our own people that they will not suffer through hell to get to experience the Philippines. Ayaw po natin muling maulit ito at tayo'y muling mapahiya. Our tourism industry is targeting 4.8 million international visitors for this year. We are slated to host international events such as the FIBA World Cup along with major trade shows and conferences. Kaya po nandito po tayong lahat ngayon para pag-usapan di lamang po ang nangyari, kundi pati na rin kung paano makakatulong ang Senado sa pagtagdag ng pondo, sa pagpanday ng batas at polisiya, at iba pang mga isyong kinakaharap ng ating mga airport. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Ch Madam Chairperson. Thank you, Senator Nancy. Senator Risa Monteveros is now recognized. Salamat, Madam Chair, at magandang hapon po sa inyo at sa lahat po. Uh, ang sabi ng kaap ang meron sila ay uninterruptible power supply o UPS. Pero ang nakapagtataka kung alin pa ang sinasabing uninterruptible ay siya pang na-interrupt. Hindi yan katanggap-tanggap. May mga usap-usapan din na ito ay simpleng glitch o simpleng bug. Ngunit kung ito ay nagdulot ng napakaraming delays at cancellations sa flights man o sa mga personal at work appointments ng ating mga kababayan, this isn't something I'm comfortable calling a mere glitch or bug dahil buhay ng napakaraming tao ang nakataya dito. Ilan sa mga problemang una ng tinukoy ng kaap ay yung depektibong blower sa isang UPS at yung sirang circuit breaker. Ngunit hindi yan pasok sa tinatawag na acts of God at yung mga insidenteng nagkataon lang. Kaya ang isa sa inaasahan nating matutukoy ng ating komite ay kung ang insidenteng ito ay man-made. There should be no scapegoats or free passes from liability. Kasalanan ba ng tao? May kapabayaan ba? Kinulang ba sa maintenance? 
kinailangan bang palitan ang mga outdated na piyesa? This could have been much worse. An example, there was a report that the paths of two planes were dangerously close to each other and could have resulted in a mid-air collision, a tragedy narrowly, fortunately, avoided. At sa huli, Madam Chair, kung mga napaka-basic at napaka-simpleng desisyon o kakulangan pala ng iilan ang siyang nakapagpatigil ng lahat ng paliparan sa buong bansa, dapat silang managot sa batas. If someone became sloppy, they must be held accountable. Salamat po. Thank you, Senator Risa. Now, uh, before we begin our line of questioning, we would like to have Kaap. Uh, Senator Bong Revilla, raise his hand. Yes. Yes, yeah, Senator Revilla. Right. I have a short uh, opening statement. If it... Okay, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, magandang hapon po. Uh, sa aking kinakapatid, Chairperson Grace po, colleagues, and fellow public servants, and all our uh, resource persons present uh, in today's hearing. I would like to thank the Chair for the sense of urgency to discuss various issues affecting our country's civil aviation. I join our colleagues as we uh, seek to do for the truth behind the recent system glitch. I filed Senate Resolution 391 in uh, support for this investigation. Nice ko rin uh, malinawan sa mga nangyari dahil ang uh, higit na anim na pong libong kababayan nating apektado ng insidente ay hindi biro. It is unacceptable, especially because of the massive uh, inconvenience it has caused the people. Dagdag na pasakit ang delays and cancellations ng mga flights, lalo na ang uh, hirap at bigat sa bulsa ng rebooking. Hindi ito hangad nating pambungad sa bagong taon at, uh, at sa inaasahan nating pagpapalakas ng ating ekonomiya at turismo. Paano ba tayo hahakbang pasulong na may ating uh, masapul ang mga posibleng solusyon? We aren't here to fix the blame. We are here to fix uh, the problem. More specifically, sa ganitong sitwasyon, yung pinaka-importante, paano ang mga pasahero? Have their needs been uh, catered to when the incident occurred? And even more importantly, we have to determine what really happened. What Was it a uh, mere technical or equipment failure? Or was there negligence? Sino bang dapat managot? Meron bang economic sabotage? Nice din nating uh, ipaalam sa mga kasama natin sa hapong ito na mayroon din po tayong inakdang panukala na naglalay na bumuo ng Kaap ka Modernization and development fund. Uh, said fund will be for consistent upgrading of standards, systems, and uh, procure uh, procedures to uh, procedures prescribed for civil aviation and related functions, so that we will be uh, up to par with international standards. Uh, sa pagkakatong ito, mahalaga na bago magturuan ay uh, magtulungan. Instead of uh, pointing fingers, we must. Uh, come together and unite all efforts so that uh, incidents like this do not happen again. Isang kumpas ng mga hanay ng gobyerno, pribadong sektor at mga grupo upang higit na mapagtibay ang ating mga sistema, mekanismo para sa maayos na daloy ng serbisyo sa publiko. I look forward to our fruitful discussion. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bong Revilla. I was also informed that Senator Bongo has a brief opening statement. You are now recognized, Senator Goff. Salamat, uh, Madam Chair. I laud the chairperson of this committee, Senator Grace Po, for immediately calling for an inquiry of this airport uh, fiasco. A mere technical glitch inconvenienced thousands of airline passengers on the very first day of the year. The most affected were those who simply do not have the options to just leave the airport and rebook their flights. The tourists who were hoping to have a wonderful experience in the Philippines, but instead were faced with inconvenience. And of course, OFWs who faced the possibility of losing their jobs. It also endangered the lives of thousands who, have above our, uh, who are above our airspace. I agree with my colleagues that this is a serious issue that could have uh, grave national uh, security implications it is uh, unacceptable that critical elements of the country's transformation, transportation system 
could just shut down due to damage circuit breaker. Dahil dito, down po ang buong uh, Philippine airspace, paralyzed agad tayo, huwag nating ipahiya ang ating bansa, napakalaki po ng epekto nito, hindi lang sa pasahero, kundi pati na rin po sa buong bansa. May implikasyon ito sa negosyo, sa turismo at sa buhay po ng uh, bawat Pilipino. Nagpakahirap po si Pangulong Marcos na makakuha ng investments mula sa ibang bansa, kaya huwag nating sayangin ang pinaghirapan natin dahil gusto nating tuloy ang makabangon muli ang ating ekonomiya. More than that, huwag nating ilagay ang salanganin ang kaligtasan po ng Pilipino at ng bansa dahil sa maring kapabayaan ng iilan. Pinaghirapan po ng uh, Duterte administration ang pag-improve ng ating air transport system. Hindi lang itong communications, navigation, surveillance, air traffic management or CNS ATM which uh, started using in uh, 2019 to decongest our airport, especially na iyan 200 airport projects including long delayed international airport projects and the rehabilitation of airports severely damaged by natural calamities in previous years. Kabilang na dyan, ang Mactan Cebu International Airport, Clark International Airport, Bohol Panglao International Airport, at uh, marami pang iba. Sana po ay hindi ito ma mapabayaan. And in fact, nahuli na nga po ang uh, Davao City, natapos na po ang uh, termino ni Pangulong Duterte, hindi pa po naumpisahan ang Davao City. Madam Chair, it was admitted by our transport officials that the CNS ATM is working. Just like any other equipment and software, it just needs to be maintained and upgraded. This is therefore not an equipment failure. We must also look, in, also look into pos possibility of human error or negligence as the cause of this fiasco. Ayaw ko pong magsisihan tayo dito, pero kailangan po ng taong bayan, ng paliwanag, kung ano ba talaga nangyari at ano pang uh, kababayan, kapabayan at sino pong dapat managot at ano pang pwede nating gawin para maiwasan po ang pangyayaring ito. The government has the obligation to its citizens to explain what happened, especially to those who were affected. Bigyan ng paliwanag at hingin po ang pagpapatawad ng mga pasaherong na stranded. Naghintay ng buong araw at mga natulog sa airport. Ano bang pwede natin gawin na hindi na ito maulit? Second, Madam Chair, ano ba ang ginagawa natin para maibsan ang pahirap sa mga kababayan natin na apektuhan? The passengers who were affected must be entitled to... Uh, Uh, VIP treatment during these types of unfortunate incidents. I understand that the airlines are also victims in this fiasco. Transport authorities should have anticipated the influx of passengers since it's the holiday season and employed additional personnel and services to assist the passengers. Dapat po, tinutulungan po natin ang ating airlines sa pag-asikaso dahil sa totoo lang, uh, hindi rin po nila ito kasalanan. Nakausap ko rin po yung uh, isang uh, airline company uh, na normalize po yung sitwasyon after uh, two days at uh, talagang ginawa naman nilang kanilang uh, lahat para maasikaso po yung mga uh, pasahero including uh, providing meals and uh, accommodation. I commend the Department of Migrant Workers for swiftly uh, deploying teams to assist stranded overseas Philippine workers. Mabuti na lang po at nandyan ang ating uh, Department of Migrant Workers or OFWs Uh, na hindi pinabayaan ng ating mga OFWs na maring naapektuhan. Marami sa ating mga OFWs ang nangamba na mawala ng trabaho kung hindi agad nakabalik sa kanilang trabaho sa ibang bansa. In this regard, I request the DMW to continue uh, assisting our OFWs. Hindi ito natatapos lang sa pagbibigay ng merienda at akomodasyon sa kanila. Siguraduhin po natin na tanggapin sila ng kanilang mga employer walang mawala ng trabaho at hindi bawasan ang sweldo nila at hindi dapat maging dagdag gasto sa kanila. I also urge, Madam Chair, the review of the Air Passenger Bill of Rights so that in times of uh, like this, when neither the airline nor the passenger is at uh, fault, compensation must be provided by the government. We have a budget for this in 2023 under the Civil Aeronautics Board amounting to 147 million. So we must ask about their plan as where to use this budget. Kung hindi ba ngayon, Saan nila ito planong gagamitin itong budget na ito? Lastly, Madam Chair, I have received reports that X-ray machines and scanners at the airport departure entrance were recently removed to accommodate the concerns of passengers to have faster and more convenient travel. Mas lumuwag po ang ating security para mapabilis po ang proseso sa loob ng airport. Kaya lang po napansin ko, tinanggal po yung first layer 
Ang tanong dyan is, uh, this is an issue of security and convenience. Uh, do not compromise, do not risk the safety of our passengers. This may be terrorism waiting to happen. Hindi mawawala ang terrorism threat. Nangyari po yan sa Davao bombing noong 2003. Ayaw nating magsisihan pagkatapos na meron na pong uh, mangyari. Uh, hindi po ba makukompromiso ang uh, kaligtasan ng mga pasahero dito? Paano madedetect ang pagpasok ng kontrabando o bomba sa airport kung wala na po yung mga x-ray sa first layer? We must not put the safety of our passengers at risk. We want, uh, while we want convenience, we must not forget that it must be our primary concern to ensure the safety of our people. Kaya naman po, hinihimo ko ang ating uh, naiya, uh, tingnan po ng uh, mabuti at uh, dapat po magkaroon ng increase sa police visibility ang aviation security po ng PNP para masiguro na walang threat po sa safety ng ating mga pasayero. Napapansin ko kasi diretso na pong nakakapasok yung mga uh, pasayero without uh, check. Ginagaya na po yung sa ibang bansa. Uh, yun na po napansin ko sa NAIA 2 and sa NAIA 3 uh, Madam Chair. Medyo sa tingin ko delikado uh, kung kaya na ba nating ma-detect itong mga bagahe, yung maaaring may mga masasamang uh, plano. Uh, that is all, Madam Chair. Dapat magawan ka agad ng solusyon at hindi na po maulit ang ganitong pangyari. Siguro doon nating ligtas ang ating mga airport at huwag pabayaan ang karapatan ng mga pasaherong naapektuhan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Bongo. I would like now to ask Kaap to do their presentation, after which we'll open the floor for questions. I would like to remind our colleagues we want an efficient hearing uh, to cover as much as possible. We have a lot of valuable resource persons present, so please keep your questions short. We will time you for two minutes, after which you will have a chance to ask again um, after the first round was, uh, is concluded. Uh, we will now ask the CAAP, uh, Captain Tamayo, to please. Do you have a visual presentation? or? You... I, I have a visual pre uh, presentation. Okay, uh, the technical um, support, please have it on cue. If I may, ma'am. To the chairperson of the Senate Committee on Public Services, Honorable Senator Grace Paul, Members of the committee, government officials, guests, and fellow public servants, good afternoon. We are here today with the Secretary of the Department of Transportation, Secretary Jaime Bautista, and colleagues from other airport authorities to shed light on what transpired last 1 January 2023, and hopefully provide clarity to all the questions of this honorable committee and the Filipino people. On behalf of CAAP and the OTR, we again extend our sincerest apologies to all those who were inconvenienced and greatly affected by this circumstance, which is something we're not proud of. But we take this as a lesson and we manifest to this honorable committee and the fellow Filipinos that we take full responsibility and accountability for what happened. We commit to see through this ordeal remain transparent in all our dealings, and of service to the Filipino in ensuring that our skies are safe. With the permission of the Honorable Chairperson, I will now stop, proceed with my presentation. Go ahead, sir. We're eagerly anticipating that. History of the Air Traffic Management System. I would like to acknowledge the presence of our minority floor leader, Senator Coco Pimentel, online. If I may, Madam Chair. The Communication Navigation Surveillance System for Air Traffic Management, or CNSATM, using satellite technology enhances the safety, reliability, and efficiency of our air traffic and airspace of Manila FIR, or Flight Information Region. It was inaugurated 16 January 2018.
The CNS ATM added 10 raiders from the previous three, which brings the total to 13, which are located all over the country. Currently, CAAP can cover 100% of the Philippine airspace safely and efficiently. Next slide, please. Its procurement commenced in 2009, which was divided to package one and package two. Next slide. Package one is the construction of the Air Traffic Management Center or the ATMC in Pasay City. Package two, on the other hand, is the construction of all other facilities to complete the CNS ATM. Next slide. Construction of the ATMC commenced in December 2010, but was suspended due to a May 2011 notice of disallowance. Next slide. The disallowance was appealed and was eventually lifted in May 2013 through COA and Bank Decision 2013-035. The project resumed in August of 2013. Next slide. After four years, the CNS ATM was completed and turned over to CAAP in 16 October 2017 and inaugurated in 2018. Thus, the ATMC building became the Air Traffic Management, Management Center that we now know. Next slide. To recap, here is the timetable of events pertaining to the CNS ATM. Your, your honors, now we proceed to the discussion of the incident last one, January 2020. Um, actually, uh, uh, Captain Tamayo, there's just a quick interjection, just a question from Senator Jingdoy and Senator Nancy. How much is the total package, package one and package two? Uh, the the pack, package one and package two cost almost uh, about $10 billion, sir. Pesos, sir. Billion pesos? Pesos, dollar. yes, sir. You may proceed, Colonel uh, Captain Tamayo. Disruption of the CNS ATM. Cause of disruption. At around 9.49 a.m. 1 January 2023, the UPS, or Uninterruptible Power Supply, de-energized the CNS ATM equipment as it detected the flaw. This is a safety feature of the UPS to protect the equipment from further damage. Next slide, please. To, to illustrate, the primary power source is from Meralco with an input of 380 volts and 220 volts. The secondary power source are two 750 kVA diesel engine generators. These are connected to the automatic transfer switch, which will transfer the electrical power to the two UPS. Lighting and air conditioning system are directly connected to the power source. The UPS is necessary in order to provide continuous electric power during power interruption and it also provides clean power to the load. On the other hand, the AVR is used when both UPS are under maintenance for redundancy. The distribution panel contains the circuit breaker wherein the electrical lines for the CNS ATM system equipment in the ATMC building is connected. If you will see on the screen, it's a broken line. It separates the power plant building from the ATMC building. Two sets of three circuit breakers are shown on the slide and are all located in the equipment room of the ATMC building. These two sets of circuit breakers supply the redundant power to the CNS ATM system and equipment. Each CNS ATM system equipment is provided with circuit breaker of smaller rating. 
This is the flow of the electricity for the CNS ATM system equipment. Uh, please take note of that red circuit breaker on the right side. The issue was a faulty signal coming from a damaged circuit breaker. That's the red one. Cybercrime Investigation and Coordinating Center, or CICC, conducted a parallel investigation of the incident on 3 January 2023. The result indicates that the incident is unlikely due to a cyber attack. However, the damaged circuit breaker and power transfer switch were turned over to them for forensic investigation. Next slide. For a better appreciation, here is an animation of the regular flow of current. Next slide, please. This is what happened last 1 January 2023. So So uh, it's, it's a bit small. So as you can see, uh, the electrical power coming from uh, either Meralco, which was the primary source, goes through the UPS, and then the, the panel, uh, the central panel, then passes through the two sets of three circuit breakers before entering uh, the CNS ATM center. Now, the fault occurred on the, that was that red circuit breaker that I was pointing out, the fault occurred at that particular circuit breaker. So what happened, uh, this was detected by the UPS because an overvoltage occurred. So as a safety factor, uh, the UPS, both UPS, de-energized. This is to protect the whole system from further damage. But you have two UPS systems. That's correct. So what happened? After, isn't the UPS also, I was told, like a voltage regulator? That's correct. Okay. So the first one detected that there was uh, over voltage, so it shut down. What happened to the second one? Uh, just, just to explain, ma'am, this circuit breaker, are continuously working and support each other. It shares the load. And if it detects uh, a problem, both of them will work in parallel and will, will both shut down to protect the system. But it didn't. So I'm why was that? They supposedly, you had to re-energize. This is from the other information that I've uh, received. You're supposed you were able to re-energize the second UPS system. What does re-energizing mean? Does it mean you charged it because it was not charged? I mean, in, sim in the simplest terms, that's, that's how it seems. But, of course, you can shed light. The, the, the UPS, ma'am, just went on standby, standby mode. It did not shut down. It was working. It did what it had to do. So, sabay nag shut down yung dalawang UPS. And as I said earlier, this is a safety feature of the UPS. So what we did and that what the maintenance people did, I will explain later. Okay, on. go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Next slide, please. 
immediate actions undertaken to address the disruption. The first notam was issued at 10.41 a.m. advising airmen that certain Manila approach frequencies were unserviceable due to technical issues. Next slide. Then the engineers from Kaap immediately performed remedial measures such as manual re energization of the UPS and bypassing the damaged circuit breaker, which enable, enabled the power supply to be operated by 1.40 p.m. and resumption of partial operations by 4 p.m. To explain further, the input of the circuit breaker, the one on the left side, upper portion, you will notice that there are four cables that came in, that went in that are colored red, yellow, and black. Voltage on all of those three uh, were measured. Uh, th this is the input side. I, I forgot to, to mention also there is a fourth wire, the white one, on the rightmost, and this is the neutral. So the voltage going in the red, the yellow, and the black is 380 volts. 380 volts, please note. White is neutral. Any lines, any of the three lines I mentioned connected to white is 220 volts. So individually, if you connect white and red, you get 220 volts, yellow, and white 220 and black and white 220 as well. These voltages were measured at the input terminal of the circuit breaker. In the output of the circuit breaker, that's the lower portion, it should have the same voltages. However, the voltage measured between line three, that's the black line that I pointed out, and neutral is 380 volts instead of 320 volts. 220 volts, correction. To isolate the trouble, a continuity test was done, but it was found out that line three and neutral has no continuity. Thus, it was concluded that the circuit breaker was damaged. Because of the urgency to restore the power, line three, that's the black one, and the neutral wires were disconnected from the input terminal and instead connected to the output terminal of the circuit breaker, resulting to having a normal voltage. So pagdating niya, when it was connected below, again, the voltage was measured. This time, it was 220, 220 volts as designed. After getting normal voltages, each circuit breaker of the equipment was turned on to start up the, to start start a procedure was then executed. Next slide. As mentioned earlier, the power supply became operational at 1.40 p.m. and resumption of partial operations at 4 p.m. By 5.50 p.m., VSAT G1, which is the primary, was operational, which allowed resumption of normal operations. By 10.53 p.m., the VSAT GU2, or secondary, was operational. It acts as a redundant system for VSAT1. Next slide. Our air traffic controllers reacted swiftly to the disruption as well. They immediately switched to using 
tunable VHF radio and declared a ground stop to prioritize and safely land all flights that were already queued for landing. A ground stop means no departure, a priority lang yung aircraft that are landing. Using tunable VHF radios, our controllers were able to safely land a total of 39 aircraft despite the disruption. From 9.49 a.m. to 10.09 a.m., four aircraft successfully landed in MIA. From 10.09 a.m. to 11.56 a.m., 20 more aircraft successfully landed at MIA, while there were eight that landed in Mactan Cebu International Airport, in addition to three that landed in Iloilo International Airport, one in Bacolod, two in Davao, and one in Clark. Short-term measures. In addition to the damaged circuit breaker, in addition, the damaged circuit breaker was successfully replaced. So we were able to install that circuit breaker and restore, uh, the, restore normal operations as well. Next slide. Efforts to procure a backup system for the CNS ATM. DOTR and CAP is planning to procure a second CNS ATM, which will act as a redundant system for the existing ATMC. CAAP has already initiated measures to ensure systems redundancy and upgrade in the existing CNS ATM. The OTR and CAAP met with the representative of the system supplier on 5 January 2023 to finalize the terms. Target completion is the first quarter of 2023. That ends my presentation, Madam Chair, and thank you for allowing me to present this on behalf of CAAP. Thank you, Captain Tamayo. Um, I, I would like uh, General Hotchkiss to uh, later on uh, his observation because he's, he's also familiar with this. But uh, before I, I hand on the, the questioning to my colleagues here, I would like to ask, this equipment is from Thales and Somitomo, am I correct? That's correct. The CNS correct, ATM system. That's okay. Correct. Do they do regular maintenance service? Uh, the the uh, CNS ATM had a warranty that expired in 2020, and it is only up to that time that they were providing support as far as the CNS ATM is concerned. So what you're saying is from 2020 until until 2023, there's been no maintenance. Wala pong maintenance dahil nag-expire na ang inyong maintenance agreement or warranty with Somitomo and Tales. Am I correct? Uh, our, our personnel, ma'am, our technicians in CAAP are qualified and well-trained to uh, maintain the system. In fact, they were trained by uh, Tales themselves aside from CAAP. They are well experienced. They've been with CAAP for some time. So they, they are the ones maintaining uh, the ATMC. But there, there should also be an audit of this. As, uh, what I heard is the UPS system, one of the blowers had a problem, maingay na daw. Uh, so th that could have led to something, but the UPS system is maintained by another company. Am I correct? That's correct, ma'am. What, what company is this uh, again? K something, ma? Uh, P, it's P2RO, ma'am. P2RO, which is yes. a Filipino company, right? Yes, yes, And when was the last time they checked the UPS system? Uh, the, the last time they checked the UPS system was uh, two years ago when they changed the batteries. Alam mo, Parang yung mga ganyan, two years is too long, you know? I, I mean, this is just what I think uh, at the top of my head. But maybe we can ask uh, Somitomo and Tales if this is normal procedure, if, if you feel confident that the 
CAP technicians can do the regular maintenance checks. Um, can we have Somitomo first and then Tales? A pleasant afternoon, Your Honor. Attorney Lim. Uh, yeah, yes. Lloyd from but Spain. you're a lawyer, but do you know the technical details of this? Medyo po. Kahiligan lang po. Okay, yeah. uh, go ahead. So, um, ideally, uh, you should, there should be some uh, regular maintenance uh, aside from battery check. But uh, uh, DG Tamayo is correct when he says they actually have qualified people inside CAP who's been working with CAP for a while uh, who, who should be able to maintain uh, by themselves. No, But if, if they prefer to have, and, and I agree totally with you as well, uh, having a third party come in, experts such as Peter or supplier, would be beneficial. Um, for example, uh, how about Thales? What, what, what is your analysis on this? Uh, Mr. Nusk? Yeah, Nuski? So, um, good afternoon, Madam Chairman. Um, so, Thales uh, are not the uh, supplier of the uh, UPS system, so we don't have particular expertise in that area. Uh, we are the supplier of the of the air traffic management system, so uh, I'm unable to to comment on on your okay. question. All right, thank you. Uh, for example, like uh, if if I if I'll give a, an analogy, parents can really look at their children and determine if they're sick. Just use a temperature, a thermometer to take their temperature, etc. But there's also a regular time that you visit the pediatrician to check. And I think uh, Attorney Lim is correct that we should have at least a third party look into uh, whatever equipment we have. Hindi naman pwede. Kaya nga, kahit yung oil change ginagawa rin sa casa, hindi naman tayo lang ang tumitingin. Ang, ang dinig ko, may utang paraw tayo sa uh, ibang providers natin. This is true. So, Mitomo or Tales, do we owe you a billion pesos? Your Honor, hindi naman po ganang kalaki. But we're, we're working it out uh, with the current administration and uh, it's going smoothly. So hopefully we'll be able to close that out. And uh, How much do we owe you? Kasi kami, sa amin rin dadaan yan, if ever. Walang pera yung kaap. May budget po yan. It's actually DOTR po. Yeah, so yeah from there, which we also budget. give them. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, anyway, if, if yeah. you don't have the exact figures, please submit to the committee what that is so we can... Look into that. Um, if you notice, ladies and gentlemen, this has been ongoing since 2001. The study began in 2001. It was approved by NEDA in 2009, after which um, I guess there was a, a, a wrench was thrown into to it because it, it, was, uh, it was disapproved by, I, I believe, COA or NEDA again in 2011. And then it resumed in 2013. And the reason, later on, huh, we'll get into this. Because can you imagine just upgrading a system or installing? It takes more than a decade. There's a 511 million Manila Area Control Center currently gathering dust in CAAP compounds since 2011. Because apparently, whoever was in the DOTR at the time, they opted to get a Czechoslovakian supplied air traffic management system. And a lot, including the ANSU, uh, CAP itself, protested against it because it's untested and unreliable. So after that, bumalik na naman tayo sa Somitomo. Parang ganun yung naging ano, nung, nung administration na yun. So mamaya, kasi nga, what we have to focus on here, no? we will ask from General Hotchkiss what happened there, but the focus now is the safety, but that's a brief background. And, and the reason I also invited uh, Secretary Tugade here is um, I think you've been receiving unfair uh, reports. Uh, I'm actually here to give you the opportunity to, to clarify, because in my readings, hindi naman po napunta sa mga uh, aesthetic projects napunta naman talaga sa dapat mapuntahan. So, para wag ka nang wag ka nang mag-isip ko nang sasabihin mo. Uh, we're, we're okay na. I just wanted to to give you that opportunity. Um, let's continue now if, if there are questions. Um, Senator Jingoy, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to ask uh, uh, my uh, direct my questions to the uh, the uh, officials of uh, the Department of Transportation. Maybe uh, Captain uh, Tomayo may answer this. Uh, 
last January 1, you mentioned, I don't know who amongst the officials of the DOTR mentioned, that it was the uh, UPS that malfunctioned. And now, uh, your letter addressed to Senator Grace Paul, you mentioned that it was the circuit breaker that malfunctioned. Ano ba talaga? Stop the timer. Okay, go ahead. Um, um, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Your Honor, uh, the initial indication was the circuit breaker went on standby. So, the, uh, correction, the UPS went on standby, hence there was no power going in. So, there was a series of tests that was done by the technicians. And they decided to uh, restart or restart or re-energize the circuit breaker. So, I uh, the correction, the UPS. So, this was now working. So, all the while, may kuryente na. So, we were happy with that because uh, we just had to wait for the uh, re-initialization of the system para operational. But it turned out after uh, power was, uh, what's this, uh, allowed to uh, energize the CNS ATM, the people inside the equipment building uh, detected uh, a burning smell or something in the equipment. So what they did, they immediately turned off all the circuit breakers inside that equipment room to protect the whole system from further damage. So, ganun ho ang nangyari doon. So, kala namin, the first defect was the UPS. So, yun ho una lumabas, but then, troubleshooting occurred until they found out na yun hong circuit breaker pala ang nagkakos nung shutdown ng UPS. Bakit ngayon nyo lang nalaman after 8 days, bakit nyo, ngayon nyo lang nalaman ng circuit breaker ang may diferensya? Hindi uh, po. Uh, uh, if I may, we found out on the same day. Kaya on the same day? Yes, sir. Ngayon lang kayo sumulat kay Senator Grace sa January 9 na circuit breaker lang may diferensya. It, it, uh, it, it occurred on January 1 din po. Na Wala pong proper circuit. maintenance ang uh, circuit breaker? The, the circuit breaker uh, has minimum maintenance actually. Ang ginagawa lang ho ng mga technicians dyan is to check uh, yun ho mga nuts kanina na nakita natin they make sure it is tight, they make sure the voltage passes through it, and there is continuity. Uh, the circuit breakers are sealed units, sir. How did you fix the faulty uh, circuit breaker? We replaced it, sir. You make, did, you make, did you make any upgrade? Uh, no, sir. Exactly you just the same. Fixed it? Exactly the same. Is there a backup system? Uh, this, this circuit breaker, sir, mar marami, as, as I illustrated earlier, Bago pumasok po doon, tatlo pa ang circuit breakers. And then each of the equipment has its own circuit breaker itself. Aside from that, there are two panels for redundancy. Well, you mentioned uh, on the same day that uh, it was the circuit breaker that, ma that malfunctioned. That's, that's correct, sir. Why did you report to the, our, chair, our chairperson only now that it was... Uh, uh, the circuit breaker that malfunctioned. Uh, I would like to apologize, sir, for the late uh, submission to the chairperson. Kasi pagkakalam namin, UPS ang nag-malfunction. Yes, sir. Ngayon, sinasabi mo, circuit breaker. Are you incompetent? I'm, I apologize, sir. Okay, when was the system uh, purchased? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, the project started in 2010, and finally it was uh, inaugurated in 2018. 2018. How much? Uh, this was? Rough, uh, ballpark figures are 10, 10 billion pesos. Who evaluated the system? Were experts hired for this purpose? That's correct, sir. A feasibility study uh, was done. Who recommended the uh, procurement uh, to procure the system? That, that was in uh, early 2010, sir. The, uh, I think that was the OTC at, at that time. The, the OTC? Project, yes, sir. The project started. 
Okay, uh, I'll get back to you, Captain Tamayo. Uh, Secretary Tugade, uh, I think uh, according to our chairperson that there were unfair reports that you uh, diverted the 13 billion allotted to Kaap. Now it's your time to explain if you diverted the 13 billion or not. Uh, with the permission of the Honorable Chair and uh, the members of the uh, Public Services Committee, I would like to extend my appreciation and gratitude for the opportunity that has been given to me to be present today to be able to s explain certain issues and matters which unfortunately were so unsavory that perked me up and woke me up in my retirement moments. Nagulat at nagulantang ho ako nung sinabi nila, dalawang issue ho yan. Una ho, may diversion. Pangalawa ho, yung sistema is outdated and outmoded. Marami nagsasabi, hindi ko sinabi yan, hindi ko sinabi yan. Nakikita ko lang ho yun sa uh, Facebook, sa social media, sa mga dyaryo. Kung totoo o hindi yon, eh hindi ko alam. Uh, ngayon ho, nandito ako upang ipaliwanag ang mga bagay-bagay upang magbigay kaliwanagan sa mga nakikita natin sa Facebook, social media at pahay pahayagan. Una ho, sa diversion of funds. Ang sabi po nila, may diversion na 13 billion. Una ho, nag-isip ako, saan ang galing yung figure na 13 billion? Eh, pagkakalam ko, kung proyekto at proyekto lang ang pag-uusapan, ang amount involved is around 10.3 billion. Nasaan yung 2.7 billion? Hindi ko alam. Ngayon, doon sa diversion, alam nyo, yung salitang diversion, merong unsavory connotation yan eh. Para kang may ginawang ilinipat mo yung pera at ginawa mong pondo para sa ibang mga project na dapat gastusin mo sa mga proyekto ang kinauukulan. Yun ho ang hindi magandang tema dyan. Wala hong na-divert pagkat ang project ng CNS ATM is what we call a loan funded project. Ibig sabihin, yung proseso niyan na ang uh, nangangasiwa is JICA, hindi ho pumunta sa amin yung pera niyan. Bago ka makakuha ng pera dyan, marami kang submission na gagawin sa paniniwala at approval ng JICA. Kahigpit-higpit ho ng JICA. Wala ho sa amin yung pera. May proseso ho dyan kung kailan i-release. -re Rini-release ba yung pera sa DOTR? Hindi po. Rini-release yan sa mga kontraktor. Ah, sa ganung pamaraan, at yun naman ang panukala at pamaraan dito sa proyekto ito, wala pong pagkakataon o oportunidad man lang na mag-divert ka. Diretso yan na pupunta sa mga kontraktor. Ngayon, no, kung ang sasabihin mo dinivert yung GAA, funded uh, budgeted project, isipin ho natin na yung CAAP is an autonomous independent body, GOCC, may sariling budget ho yan, na hindi ka pwedeng magpalipat-lipat dyan. Criminal ho yan. At, <laughs> eh, abogado rin ho naman tayo, hindi naman ho tayo nagagawa ng ganyang kalokohan. Ang alam ko lang ho, there was once upon a time in 2018, a budgeted amount of 100, don't hold me to the numbers, 120 or 180 million, precisely for maintenance, administration, security, and operation of the CNS ATM. Bakit ho may ganyan? Papaliwanag ko lang ho. Kanina natanong, ano ang nangyari nung natapos may award yung CNS ATM? Meron hong pinirmahan na certificate of turnover na tinatawag. Gawain ho ng tales na i-maintain yan under warranty for a period of two years. Tama ho kayo, Madam Chair, na after two years, wala na. Bakit nagtuloy-tuloy? Sino ang nangangasiwa? Sino ang nagmaintain? May papel ho ako dito ng tangan. Ang nagmaintain ho, babasahin ko lang po, Madam Chair, if I may. Go ahead, sir. I, as Director General of CAAP, confirm that CAAP has accepted and taken over the new CNS ATM project Package 1 facilities 
properties on 16 October 2017 and listen to this and from that date will be responsible listen to this for the administration security operations and maintenance of facilities and properties pinirmahan ho ito ni Mr. Sijonko nung panahon na yon under the recommendation of the then USEC for uh, uh, aviation in the person of Mr. Uh, Iskita Mayo. Ito ho yung pinirmahan niya. May endorsement ho yan, yung tinatawag natin na contractor na tumutulong sa DOTR. Ang pangalan po, if I may read, Madam Chair, Dr. Yukinori Otani. Siya ho yung consultant nung proyekto na ito na nagsabi, na, na, na nag-witness nung turnover na yon. In other words, it is true that Thales stopped its operation and maintenance after two years because that is their warranty. But CAAP assumed the responsibility of taking full responsibility on maintenance, operation, administration, even security of the system. Kailangan ho yan tuloy-tuloy. Tama rin ho na kailangan meron kang core of skillful engineers that will help to manage the CNS ATM. Kasi nga ho, binitbit ang, ang responsibilidad ng kaap yan. Marami hong nandiyan sa kaap ngayon na alam itong dokumentong ito. Nagulantang at nagugulat lang ako na hindi sinasabi. Nandiyan, of course, si Mr. Sijonko, nandiyan si Mr. Tamayo, nandiyan din ho yung uh, Dan John Lucas na siya ho yung chief of staff nila si Jonko at Tamayo. Lahat ho dapat yan, ilinalatag at linalabas dito para maintindihan ng totoo at lubusan ng kumiting ito. Hindi ho pinabayaan ng tales yung maintenance. Uh, ito ho dapat ituloy. Kaya lang tapos na yung warranty. Kailangan mag-take over na tapos yan ng 220. Ngayon, bakit hindi tinutuloy ng tales sa kasumitomo yung maintenance? Kasi ho, gusto nilang pumirma ng service agreement. Alam din ni Mr. C. Jonko yan, alam ni Mr. Tamayo, alam ni Dan Lucas. Kasi ho, meron silang claim. Mga claim ho yan, hindi uutang yan. Claim ng tales sumitomo. Eto, humigit kumulang, please don't hold me to the number, mga 640 million ang kineclaim nila. Remember, this project has been born and begotten years ago na wala pa kami, kaya humihingi kami ng mga dokumento. Hindi ako papayag dyan kung uh, hindi nyo may submit yung dokumento. Sabi rin yung contractor na hapon, huwag mong bayaran kasi walang dokumento. Eh bakit ko ho babayaran? Uh, ngayon, sinasabi nila, kung hindi mo binabayaran, wala ng service agreement. Huwag mo naman ako hiostage dyan, kaibigan. You know, Uh, wala kami noong mga panahon na yon liwanagin natin yan. Kaya nga ho, meron akong pinapirma sa kaap na sila ang uh, mga ngasiwa sa maintenance administration and security. Naniwala ho ako sa dokumento na yan. Now, nagkaroon ho ng diskusyon with Thales and Sumitomo. Ano yung diskusyon with Thales and Sumitomo? Sabi namin, kung gusto mo, out of good faith, babayaran ko na yung mga issues na walang problema na kumpleto ang dokumento. Pag-usapan natin, yung balance, punta tayo sa arbitration. Eh, nabinbin lang nabinbin ho ang usapan. Walang nangyari. Nag-create ho ako ng internal committee sa DOTR uh, para tignan yung claims ng Talis Sumitomo. This committee was composed of three gentlemen in DOTR. Number one is Yusek Uh, Gary, uh, nandito ho siya ngayon, dati siyang USEC for Finance. Nandiyan dyan yung dating ASEC ng procurement at project implementation, si uh, Mr. Banoy Lopez. Yung Gary ho, di Guzman ang apelyido nun. Yung pangatlo, si Renier uh, Yebra, na head ng legal. Sila ho ang nagsabi sa akin, alam mo ba, Huwag mong bayaran yan. Bakit? Kasi mas malaki pa yung liquidated damages because of the delay 
on the project. Eh, bakit ko mababayaran yan? So, hindi ho utang yon. Yun ho, claim na pinag-usapan at pinag-uusapan. Dapat ho yan, umandar at umusad nung umalis kami six months ago. Alam ho yan ni Mr. Sijonko, ni Daniel Lucas, at alam din ni Mr. Uh, uh, Tamayo yan. Uh, sec ito ho yung uh, Secretary Tugade, so ang sinasabi ninyo, dahil na-delay nang na-delay, yung implementation ng proyekto, nagkaroon tayo ng binabayaran na parang uh, penalty. Yun Meron yun. dapat silang bayaran na penalty. Ho. Ang tawag ko dyan, liquidated damages na babayaran ng kwan. Because of the delay that we caused. Ah, hindi ho. Because of certain delays also sa Tales, sa Kasasumitomo. Okay. Kaya nga sabi ko, yung amang na wala tayong issue, bayaran na namin kayo. Irerecommend ako sa JICA, bayaran kayo. And sabi ko naman nung iba, huwag mong bayaran. Uh, kailangan bayaran mo yung buo. Sabi nung komite ko, yung tatlong abogado, mas malaki pa yung claim namin dyan sa liquidated damages. Eh bakit ako magbabayad? Maliwanag kung plunder yan. Eh hindi ko gagawin yun. Okay. Thank you. Uh, sorry, Senator Jingoy. Yung sinasabi ninyong pinirmahan na ter ter turnover to CAAP, Sino'y pumirma nun? Uh, hindi yun sa administrasyon pa ninyo? Uh, hindi ho. Administrasyon ko yan. Pinapirma ko sila kasi iteturn over na. Sabi ko kay Mr. C. Jonko, pumirma kayo dyan na kaya yung administrasyon. Uh, administration and maintenance nung CNSATM. Pumirma ko sila. Bakit sila pumirma? Inirecomenda ko ni Mr. Uh, Tamayo. Ito ho yung pirma niya. Ah, uh, okay. All right, now that's clear. Uh, thank you, uh, Senator Jingoy. Madam Chair, Chair woman, can I have a, can I, uh, uh, sorry? Can with I, the, uh, uh, with the permission of, of Senator Jingoy. Uh, yes, uh, please uh, uh, furnish, the, furnish the committee a copy. We appreciate it. Senator Villar. I'd just like to say something uh, because uh, for point of information, because I've also had experience with foreign loans. And uh, what Sec Art said is correct, that when there is a foreign-funded project, uh, you, they are very strict about the requirements. You cannot simply uh, take the money and use it for another project. That's uh, impossible. So uh, I hope this puts that issue to rest. And also, uh, any no secretary has the power to uh, realign funds within his department. As you know, these are, it is our mandate to implement what is in the GAA, which is a law. So this idea that uh, secretary, Secretary Tugade would uh, divert funds from one uh, project to another is simply uh, uh, impossible. Uh, and I, from my experience uh, serving in the executive, I just like to um, uh, support that uh, support that fact. Thank you. Thank you for the clarification, Senator Villar. You have 19 more seconds, Senator Jim Goy. Anyway. Uh, Going back to uh, Cap, uh, thank you very much for the explanation, uh, Secretary Tugad, and I believe in you. I believe. Maraming in you. salamat po. I trust you, and uh, you have my full trust and confidence. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, uh, Tamayo. Meron bang pangyayari na bago nangyari itong January 1 uh, glitch? Meron bang nangyari na power outage before? Uh, none, Your Honor, to the Chair. None. This, this is the first time it happened. Sigurado ka none. Sa CNS ATM po. And no September of 2022, nagkaroon ng power outage sa Terminal 3. Am I correct? Uh, that, that, that is uh, Terminal 3, sir. Yes, Terminal it, 3. That's not correct, sir. That's the airport. Uh, bakit sinabi mo wala? Uh, I'm only referring to the CNS ATM. Sir. No, no, whatever. Power outage pa rin yun. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, wh there was. What did you do there? Nagkaroon na ng president, ng president, whatever, na nagkaroon na ng power outage noong September sa NAIA Terminal 3. What actions have you taken to prevent similar recurrence? Uh, Bakit nangyari ulit ito? Uh, to, to Hindi ba kayo nadala na nagkaroon na tayo ng power outage noong September uh, last year? Th through the Chair, Your Honor, may, may I request the GM of MIA to explain this? Okay. Mr. Chong, you're recognized. Madam Chair, yes. Uh, Your Honor, yes, there was an outage at uh, NIA Terminal 3. It lasted for about um, six hours. 
Actually, ma'am, the uh, standby generator was able to power up naman po. The, it's just that there were some uh, critical mission uh, items that were not uh, connected to the standby generator. And that was the immigration um, connection po. That's why there were some queues. But what happened, ma'am, there were only about uh, 20 flights that were affected. And actually, uh, na-restore naman po siya after a few hours. And there was no outage that happened after. So did you learn your lesson there? Uh, you have the contingencies in place already. Na-connect na ninyo yung immigration? Yes, ma'am. Senator Jinko, if you need an extension, no, wala na akong ano eh, oras. Just, uh, magbibigyan ko na na iba. What a gentleman. Okay, uh, ipagpapatuloy the next round. Uh, the next is uh, the good one, uh, Senator, the Vice Chair. <laughs> no, no, no. The, no, di, di ba sabi niya, the better one yung isa, di ba? Kasi, so, the good one naman. Thank you, Madam Chair. And we'll just be centering on three points. One is the safety protocols, what uh, our um, cap personnel did, and also the air traffic management system. And last but not the least, will be on the issue of national defense. So first of all, big CAAP can answer um, with regards to the safety protocols. So, um, so uh, Saturn Director General, um, who was the incident commander during the time that... Uh, uh, the power outage happened. Was there the incident commander? Uh, the uh, the head the head uh, technician or manager of the CNS ATM is with us. He is uh, engineer Arnold Balukatin, and uh, he is the one supervising the uh, maintenance and repairs. No, my, my concern is uh, we will go to the equipment later. Yes, sir. My uh, concern will be on the safety protocols. Uh, um, I'd like to know what, who was the incident commander and whether, because this is this happened during the peak season, and we know, as we know that um, um, agencies that are uh, very vital, sa atin po ang ating, pag po lahat nag-holiday, tayo po walang holiday, das ka up, uh, um, do you still grant uh, leave during the peak season or hindi, wala, cancel na lahat leave during the peak season? W wala pong leave, Your Honor. So that means uh, during the, the incident, uh, during the New Year's Day incident, lahat po ng cap officials were still, were, uh, were, uh, pre were present and walang nakalive. That, that's correct, sir. I that, was there right away as well. Well, that is good to hear. Uh, to our Director General. So who was the incident commander doon po sa air traffic control? As, he, as I mentioned, si Arnold Balukatin, who is the head of the ANS. And, and is he present? He is present. Uh, okay, can we ask him to uh, to, to uh, take the floor? Arnold. Uh, also, sir, uh, at the time, uh, Ms. Marlene Singson, who is the head of the air uh, traffic uh, service was also present at that time. Gipo, um, is he present? Pwede bang ano? Ay ma'am, sige po. Um, can you uh, please uh, um, narrate to the committee what were the first um, protocols, were, were the safety and the uh, protocols uh, followed, strictly followed? Uh, through the chair. So I would just want to clarify, do I need to take a note? Because I was not among those who took the oath early, earlier. Si Komsek, andiyan pa si Komsek. Can you please administer the oath? Ma'am, please, uh, research persons, please raise your right hand. Please repeat after me. They swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this committee hearing. I do. For the record, Mr. Chair, the research person signs are the affirmative.
Load. Sorry for the glitch. Anyway, um, Ma'am Hagen, please narrate. You, you were in charge. You were the system. Uh, you, you were the incident commander during the time. Through the chair. During the, the outage, sir, being the chief of air traffic service, yes, I took responsibility and accountability for the provision of safe and uh, orderly uh, air traffic service po throughout the Philippines. And on that particular day, as uh, as the commander for the air traffic service, for the as the chief, we have immediately implemented the contingent, contingency plans that we have. Actually, sir, prior to this, well-placed po ang contingency plan ng air traffic service. We cover certain emergencies, including the the big one. So with that, sir, uh, nakasynchronize na po yung, yung actions to be taken for situations like this. Mawang napansin ko na po, yung nota mo, yung notice the airmen, were, were um, only issued at 10.41 a.m. Ano pong, what time was the system failure? What time? Did it happen around 9 o'clock, no? 9.30. So how come it took a while for the notams to be issued? Uh, actually, sir, the the blackout of the screens, the radar screens that we had, happened at 9.49. The NOTAM was issued. Ang um, situation, or rather the protocol that we have in the issuance of the NOTAM, we do not immediately issue a NOTAM. A NOTAM should cover a certain period of time po. We initially issue advisory, sir. But if the, the situation would reach an hour or two, then we issued a notice to airmen, sir. And the, the, the usual channel we used in the issuance of the NOTAM was included in the ATMC. So we resorted to the backup uh, plan that we have for the contingency plan using another server, another system we call CADAS. Did, so yung pong backup no, that we've been hearing, it did not work, hindi po gumana yung backup natin for the uh, ATS. Back up, uh, the back, actually, Paul, we do not have an independent backup system for the CNS ATM. We have one CNS ATM, sir. That is correct. Because I'll go to that later on, Madam Chair, no? to my second round. Uh, we had talked about the redundancy. So, you follow the safety and contingency protocols. But I'd just like to know if, are we prepared uh, for the worst case scenario? No? Ganito, just in case the worst happens, just like this one that the whole system uh, um, broke down, no? Nandawala yung system. Meron ba training? How often do does, uh, the AT, uh, air traffic management officers, the dati mga ATCs, um, are we prepared for such a scenario? Through the chair, the, the basic training we also include in the syllabus is the, the training for contingency plans. For training in the specific facility where the air traffic management officers are deployed have the respective training uh, for rating and this also includes contingency plans sir that's the reason why we were able despite the fact that the ATMC is down and out we were able to safely guide and control aircraft to land in several airports in the Philippines because Madam Chair if you'll allow me just like to finish this though um there, there was obviously also information from one um, that uh, when kasama puro sa CNS, no? that's communication, navigation, and surveillance. So also the communication system of uh, the whole aerodrome was out. No? Nawala po sila. Even yung nag-takeoff po, yung huling nag-takeoff, pinaswitch sila doon sa approach, communication, wala na po daw. So tama po ba nangyari ito? Through the chair. Actually, sir, within their traffic management center, we have the entire en route area control center. We have six surveillance approach uh, facilities inside also 
the ATMC. And one and the first contingency, the first step in the contingency plan that we have is to communicate with the nearest air traffic service. So we did that one, sir. We called by phone because all the lines are out. We used the mobile phones and we, we found out the Manila control tower is still up and about. That's the reason we immediately sent three approach controllers and three en route controllers to handle the traffic within the terminal movement area, the TMA, which is about 70 nautical miles from the airport reference point. And for the en route controllers, they handled the traffic outside of the 70 nautical miles, sir. And we even transferred the traffic to Bacolod. That's the reason we have two arrivals in Iloilo and Bacolod. We have traffic in Mactan. One of the things that we did during this pandemic was to have the proficiency training of air traffic controllers nationwide, sir. That's the reason we were able to revalidate and in easily implement the contingency plans that we have. Thank you, sir. So after the whole uh, um, air traffic management system um, already was shut down, we reverted back to our conventional. That is, uh, with the, we made, you made use of the air traffic control, which used, ano to, uh, yung conventional uh, BHF radio. Am I BHF radio. BHF po. radio. Yes. So the whole time, that the CNS was out, we reverted back to conventional, that uh, probably yung sa, uh, that uh, prevented a, mo, uh, a disaster or a catastrophe. I'd like to, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to commend our air traffic control controllers who were present. That, para kang bulag nun eh. Not at this day and present age, Madam Chair, if the CNS conks out, napakahirap nun, hindi alam, all the pilots, uh, all the aircraft in the aerospace, in the in the aerodrome, do not know where the others are. Tama po? Tama po, di ba? Yes po, so, sir. So, you reverted back to conventional um, and um, like ano tayo, no? Uh, we we um, relied on the communication and uh, at the same time, yung, yung uh, tawag nun, yung uh, conventional communication. So, pinatakbo nyo po yung mga air traffic controllers that are uh, assigned doon sa sa approach and ano pumunta sila po na control sa 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 ETC. Ah uh, how how long is that? Gaano kalayo kasi malayo yung yung si ay, ano niya, yung center to the air traffic control uh, tower. Actually the the ATMC po is located within the compound of the CAAP and Manila Tower po is located within the Terminal 2 complex. So using their personal motorcycles it only took them a few minutes to reach to reach Manila Control Tower, sir. And by the time they have reached Manila Control Tower, the tunable radios were already adjusted to the frequency that they will be using. And we have already given blind, uh, released blind transmission for aircraft within this particular airspace to contact 119.3. For traffic on 118.3, which the frequency used by Manila Tower, we have sequenced them to land using procedural conventional port. The same is true with the traffic within the 70 nautical miles. I would just want to point out, sir, that because we do not have um, visibility because of the outage of the radar scopes, the radar, the SSR, ang ibig pong sabihin ng conventional, procedural, mas malalayo po ang separation ng mga aircraft to ensure that there will be a safe operations po. Thank you, sir. So that means that uh, most of the aircraft um, airborne had to rely, mag-switch tayo sa VOR, no? Sa VOR, that yun yung naging, ang nag-guide sa lahat ng ating po mga existing or arriving aircraft. Uh, uh, sir, actually po, we have uh, communications with the, air, the aircraft, with the pilots. So the clearances that we have given them, yun po yung nag-guide sa kanilang papunta sa mga airports, sir. And uh, using also our personal mobile phones, we were able to get in touch with our counterparts outside of the Philippines like Hong Kong, Singapore, Ujong Pandang, and all the other FIRs adjacent to us to, to advise them that we are having a trouble with, with our system and that to hold flights going to Manila 
or accommodate flights that are already within the range. So, ganun po yung aming contingency talaga po. And right now, sir, because of the certain things that we have discovered during this incident, we are beefing up the contingency plan that we have and uh, we have uh, several meetings in order to revise our emergency emergency response plan. Thank you po. Okay. Mukhang na tayo rin eh. Kailangan magpa-maintenance check. So, importante talaga na regularly check. Now, I'd like to thank, um, well, of course, our air traffic controllers, the unsung heroes behind this, and all the behind the scenes that they had to go through riding a motorcycle to reach another location. And this also calls into mind the importance of keeping good people at work in the air traffic control towers. And we are experiencing, apparently, a brain drain because... Yung sweldo po nila, napakababa, ay kumpara sa ibang bansa. Kaya nga dito sa CAAP improvement, uh, the, the proposed bill, one of the provisions, I think, is to remove air traffic controllers and the ones that have to do technical work away from the sta salary standardization law so that their compensation can be competitive. Hindi sila nakapako dun sa regular na government salaries. I would uh, like to acknowledge, I guess, the majority leader who requested and our pro temp um, so graciously agreed that he be allowed to speak first. No, not the majority leader. I'm sorry. Our... Is it the Senate President who asked? Oh, okay. Okay, I guess not. Then, then our pro temp is um, recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. On, on third try. <laughs> Gusto ko lang po basahin ng ilang parte ng report po nyo kay Senator Po para po maliwanagan ang hindi mga technical para po maintindihan natin para maiwasan na mangyari po ng muli. Uh, to summarize the timeline, Kaap said that the two UPS of the CNS APM did not shut down, as you've been saying for the past 60 minutes. It was receiving power. It was de-energized, and this is part of a safety feature. Tama ba ho, uh, Captain Tamayo? Para lang pong maliwanag ang ating pinag-uusapan po. Tama po? Okay po. You can nod kung wala pong ojo. Uh, ito pong de-energization ay safety feature at sabi po dito, ang flow, ang pagkakamali ay isang faulty signal na sira po yung damaged circuit breaker. Tama pa ho? Okay. Ano po ang ibig sabihin yan na maayos po yung dalawang UPS? Ayon po sa mga unang report na luwabas na nawalan sila ng power, hindi po power outage Hindi po nang galing sa anumang power source na nawala, pero circuit breaker po ang damage. Pakipaliwanag po sa amin, ano ang ibig sabihin ng damage circuit breaker? Bakit po nasira? Ano po yung pagkasira? Sino po ang dapat nagbe-maintain ng circuit breaker na yon? At wala ba hong pangalawang circuit breaker? Di ba na-anticipate natin pag may masira, meron po pangalawa or pangatlo yung tinatawag pong redundancy. My very simple questions, I'm sure uh, Captain Tamayo and all the CAAP and DOTR can answer this para po maliwanag sa mga hindi technical na tao. 
Salamat. Captain Tamayo, please. Um, can we ask the Senate maintenance to handle this, please? Yes, our majority leader. Um, uh, I have audio. Uh, there must be a working microphone there. Pahiram po nyo kay Captain Tamayo. Uh, ano pong gumagana dyan? Yes. Mm -mm. Sabi ni Senator Mark Villar, pag walang maintenance, yan ang nangyayari. Sige. Simple Madam tanong Chair. lang po, Captain Tamayo. Opo. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, I would like to uh, request to display the uh, one-line diagram to give more clarification in my ex explanation. My, my simple question, sir, was there was a flawed or a damaged circuit breaker. Pag sinami po natin yung salitang damage, very general. Ano po ang ang sabihin, damage? Ano yung pagkasira? Uh, ito ba'y bago, luma, ito ba'y minemaintain, wala bang backup na circuit breaker dapat, backup 1, 2, 3 for redundancy. Okay. Sige, pwede pong may letrato po, gusto lang po namin marinig. Apa, sir. Sige. Okay, okay, ano pa? Okay. Yung, yung one, line one line diagram, please. One line diagram. Okay, ito po yung ito po yung ano natin power one line diagram po ng power supply natin sa CNS ATM building. Kung kanina po uh, sinabi po ng ating Director General na mayroon pong uh, commercial input galing po sa Meralco at mayroon din pong uh, generator as backup po. Doon pong nangyari po yung incident, dum dumating kami sa site. Ang initial findings po namin, wala pong output yung UPS. So ang ginawa po namin ay nagkandak kami ng, ng troubleshooting. We follow the protocol of troubleshooting until sa the time na nagkaroon po ang output ng UPS. Alas 12 po ng tanghali nung nagkaroon po kami ng output ng UPS. So nung mayroon pong output na po yung UPS, Yung mga tao namin sa kabilang building, dito po sa air traffic management building, nagsimula na po yung start-up procedure na sinasabi. Unti-unti uh, na pong inun yung mga circuit breaker. Tapos until sa the time na mayroon pong isang circuit breaker sa mga equipment na nung inun nila, mayroon po yung mga may nag-spark at may nangamoy. So ang ginawa po nila, pinatay nila ulit yung pong isang circuito. Kung nakikita po sa diagram po, yung, pang, yung pong kulay pula. Yan. Pero yung pong mayroong mga red na tatlo, diretso po yun. Uh, mayroon na pong kuryente yon At yung po nagsimula yung uh, na-operate po namin yung equipment na Tagaytay facility base. So at, one, at, at 12 o'clock, mayroon na pong kuryente yung ibang equipment. Ngayon po, ito po ngayon, uh, mayroong sirang circuit breaker, dito po kami nag-focus. Dito po namin nalaman na yung pong isang circuit breaker ay nasira. So, tulad po, in-explain po kanina ni, 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 ng aming Director General, yung circuit breaker po ay mayroong apat po na line. So mayroon yung uh, line 1, line 2, line 3, yung po yung mga um, uh, between them, mayroong 380 volts, at saka between neutral, at saka line, uh, um, line uh, yung isang line is 220 volts. Pero pagdating po sa baba, doon po sa output, yung isang pasi po ay naging 380. 
So para ma-determine pa namin yung ma-validate ma ma namin yung yung nakita naming problema na yon, inof namin yung input voltage doon tapos nagkantak po kami ng continuity test. At nalaman po namin ngayon na yung yung input at saka output po ng pangatlong linya, yung L3, ay open. Tapos po yung neutral, open din po. So, tapo, yun po yung ano, tapos nasukat po namin na 380 volts yung sinusupply po nung linyang yon So, dyan po kami ngayon nag-decide na i-bypass po yung circuit breaker, yung dalawang line po. Kasi kailangan po namin ma-provide yung kuryente para sa mga equipment na nakakonekta doon. So, ulitin ko po, alas 12 po, mayroon na pong kuryente yung isang sirkito. Kaya lang po, ang pinuprovide po ng, na, na kuryente, ang mga equipment na mayroong kuryente ay yung mga Tagaytay Base at Epa. Yeah. Salamat po. Maliwanag po na sabi nyo na sira ang isang circuit breaker. Tapos sinabi po nyo nag-oversupply, kaya po nasira. Correct? That's your explanation of the damage. Uh, was there no voltage regulator to control the influx of the power? And my question earlier was, wala pa bu tayong uh, substitute, pangalawa, pangatlong circuit breaker para kung isa yung nasira, meron kaagad na pwedeng gamitin para may continuity po yung enerhiya. Madam Chair, uh, yung pong UPS po ay isang function po niya, po niya yun ay to volt, uh, voltage regulator. Ibig sabihin po yung lumalabas po doon sa UPS ay uh, na, maayos na po. Maayos na po yung uh, malinis na po yung kuryente na lumalabas sa UPS. At na din po namin dito sa input ng circuit breaker na tama po yung mga voltahe. Kaya lang paglabas po ng circuit breaker, yung pong isang pasi po, 380 volts po ang nasukat namin. Simple po, ano po ang kadahilanan noon? At paano natin masusuri? How, do we, uh, how can we be assured that this 380 surge in that particular circuit breaker will not happen again. What is the contingency? That's why a, a non-technical person like myself wants to understand it. If the UPS were both receiving power, it was not a power outage. It was a circuit breaker. And that circuit breaker received more power than it actually had to receive, which is 380. How do we assure that there's no upsurge of power again? And what is a contingency measure that must be done so this is this does not occur? That's my simple question, sir. Your Honor, uh, what we have done is to replace the circuit breaker. Na na pinalitan po namin ng maayos ng circuit breaker. Uh, ang isang ang ang nangyari po kasi ng nakaroon ng 380 volts, mayroon pang nasirang mga equipment dito sa dito sa downstream. So, yun po yung nag-prolong po ng outage. Paano po natin maiiwasan na masira ng muli ang circuit breaker na hindi po magkakaroon ng oversupply na nakaka po sa iba dahil pong masyadong sumobra? Hindi ba po voltage regulator ang tawag dun? Hindi ako technical, pero sa bahay, di ba, may circuit breaker, may voltage regulator, di ba ho? Tama po. Ano, gusto ko lang po maintindihan, pa, paano natin maiiwasan po mangyari ng muli? Yun lang po ang ating assurance na gustong marinig. Ang, uh, yung UPS po, sabi ko nga kanina po, mayroon pong regulator. So, yung pong ano dyan, ang kwan po is, uh, yung pinipare po, po namin yung recommended practices ng pag po ng equipment. Ngayon po, uh, uh, dumapas po yung incident. So siguro ang, ang, ang gagawin po namin is uh, double time po yung pag-check namin ng mga, ng mga circuit breaker para ma-anticipate po namin yung mga possible na mangyari po. 
who is responsible for maintaining the circuit breakers? Uh, which company is, which supplier provided it? And which company is maintaining it? And when was it last maintained? Sir. In your honor, uh, yung pong circuit breaker po ang nagmimintim po ay yung mga uh, ENS personal po na under po sa akin. Yung mga, yung mga pag-check po ay ginagawa po nila. Nagmimeasure po sila ng mga voltahe at tinitignan nila kung properly working yung mga circuit breaker. Ang manufacturer po niyan is LS Electric uh, uh, Korea. Korean made po yan. Uh, yung, uh, yung mga ano, yung mga equipment po yan, ang lifespan po niyan ay 20 to 30 years at saka ang trip cycle po niyan ay nasa 20,000 trip cycle. Ibig sabihin po, pag nag-trip, iyon mo, bibilangin po yon mga 20,000 po yung, yung manufacturer's uh, data po. So, napakalit po yung, yung parang required uh, maintenance po dyan sa circuit breaker na yan. With the indulgence of our Senate President Pro Tempor, Ay, generic tanong ko lang. Kaya nga circuit breaker yan. Pag may surge na pumasok, mag-disengage -dis so as not to damage the system. So bakit merong ganung lumabas na 320 volts? Dapat pag nag-trip yan, 380, to protect the system. ba? Kaya nga walang ano eh. Hindi naman yan fuse eh. So circuit breaker, pag ka nag-trip, pag normal na yung pagpasok ng kuryente, pwede nyo nang i-switch back. So ano po nangyari? Uh, Your Honor, uh, yun po yung isang question mark po sa amin na, na ano, hindi namin maintindihan yung yan. Kaya ang request po namin is magka-i-conduct po ng under forensic uh, examination yung circuit breaker. Yung sagot po, yeah. ba, malakas ang boses ko. Yung sagot po sa katanungan kung bakit po nag-surge ng 380 sa circuit breaker ay hindi po Senate Legislative ang makakawa. Sagot po niyan sa technical po sa inyo, siguro po ay yan ang importanteng malaman po natin at ano pang mga abirya ang maaring mangyari at ano ang contingency measures. Nakakapagtaka po dahil sa rekomendasyon po dito ay nakalagay na merong number 18 po. Emergency procurement of equipment. Nakalagay po that CAP initiated the emergency procurement of two additional UPS, including a five-year parts and service warranty. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Kung hindi po sira yung UPS and there was no uh, power outage and it was a glitch, on a damaged circuit breaker of which we do not know the cause. Uh, why are we purchasing a UPS unless that is part of the system and we need to purchase that? Kindly educate us and clarify us whether this emergency procurement will cure that issue of the circuit breaker, sir. Thank you. Uh, for the chair, ma'am, uh, the plan to uh, purchase this UPS was done because of that initial emergency that that occurred. So, also we uh, invited the manufacturer to evaluate the uh, circuit breakers and tell us what the conditions are, because how they can use a computer to uh, diagnose and to download whatever data that they need to download. To find out uh, what is its condition. So, ho, during the time that we met with them, they informed us that we asked them, ano pang like lifespan ng circuit breaker na ganyan? UPS. Uh, UPS na ganyan. Ang, ang sabi ho sa amin, uh, on the average, ano na yan eh? It should be, because it's so uh, critical equipment, uh, usually about uh, seven years, we have to replace it. But then they said, uh, it can, their products can last up to 10 years. So, yung decision ho na, decision ho na yon is based on uh, something that is preventive because the UPS that we have are just about seven years already. 
at the same time, nung dinayagnos ho nila, although the one of it was perfectly okay, yet, yung isa ho, uh, sira yung fan motor. So, hindi ho namin ginagamit yan kasi kailangan palitan. Now, uh, so that, that is the reason how it's more of preventive now. So, the issue of the emergency procurement of the two uninterrupted power supply system, the UPS, is not the answer to the circuit breaker question mark on how there was a surge of 380 that destroyed the other equipment. Ibang problema po. Dalawa po ang ating UPS. Sinabi po dito sa inyong report, hindi po sira in terms of power. Hindi po nawala ng power, pero ang circuit breaker isa sa inyong letrato ay nasira, pero hindi pa nyo alam po technically yung dahilan, kaya po magpo-forensic po kayo. Para lang baliwanag po sa ating kaisipan. Tama ba ho ang aking pag-intindi? That, that's correct, ma'am. Okay. So, the emergency procurement is not the answer to the NAIA glitch of January 1. But it is a preventive measure from a possible UPS breakdown. And in this case, there was no, un, uh, there was no problem with the uh, power in the UPS, but it is this question of the circuit breaker. Is that correct, sir? That's correct, ma'am. Okay. I understand it clearly now, but the question mark is whoever can tell us the reason for the circuit breaker issue and uh, what else do we need to do to make sure the circuit breaker does not be, is not damaged in the future. And then last question, ano ba ho ang mga aberya na maari pang mangyari na Ganito gawin nyo. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ano pa ang contingency measures para hindi po mangyari yan? So aside from the UPS, preventive measure, uh, question mark on the circuit breaker, inaamin nyo, mas magbuting mag-amin na kaysa mag-invento tayo ng sagot. Hindi pa natin alam kung bakit nag-surge ng sobra yung kuryente. Ano ba ho? What else can go wrong? Uh, and what equipment uh, needs to be done or what maintenance needs to be done? Which brings me to my last question uh, on the um, paper read by former Secretary Tugade that the maintenance is now in-house. Is that, um, do you recommend that? Or do you recommend that those who supplied, there should be a third party maintenance? After my questions are answered, I thank you, sir, for, um, for finding time and we would be happy to receive all the answers. Thank you. So, uh, regarding the uh, the last question on having a service provider, an outsider, to help us maintain or to provide uh, oversight as far as the maintenance is concerned, uh, we totally agree with you as far as that is concerned. While it is true that our technicians are qualified, experienced, and fully trained, uh, iba pa rin ho yung merong to meeting in from the outside, and that is why we were negotiating with Thales to help us out in providing this particular oversight. Since uh, mahirap po yung ano eh, yung CNS ATM, is, it's only the the uh, the the fact the the OEM, original equipment manufacturer, who can really advise us on what to do. Now. Uh, to the chairman, uh, that, that was discussed earlier, even by the good secretary, Secretary Togade, that, yeah, that uh, we tried negotiating with the supplier, and they are here, and they are aware about that, that we wanted a service contract with them. In fact, they sent us a quotation and the scope of the coverage. Am I right? That was in... Uh, 2020, if I'm not mistaken. So we, we had a budget for that. 
specifically for that. And uh, unfortunately, uh, we, we still had the DOTR and the supplier had, uh, and the contractor had still issues on claims and counterclaims. But this, this is being resolved right now. It was a 2020 discussion on maintenance of the equipment and it's 2023 January, two years have lapsed and we're still negotiating. In the meantime, sir, the lives of people are at stake. I'm not saying that those maintaining from inside do not know what they're doing, but as you yourself, sir, asserted, it is better that the supplier does their own maintenance. So can we, if we may suggest, uh, wag po natin pabayaan na yung mga supplier ay hindi po accountable sa kanilang sinusupply po sa atin at hindi mo, di siguro tama ang gobyerno da, dalawang taon, panahon pa ni Secretary Tugade Sec Tugade, ba't yung pinabayaan po to 2020 and Sec Bautista, both my friends mula po noong July 1 hanggang ngayon ay nag-uusap patungkol sa terms that's very, very important yeah. in the meantime, um the question of what happened to the circuit breaker still has not been answered, but I leave it uh, to your better judgment later on after you've done your own scientific technical investigation. Ano po ang talagang kadahilanan? Thank you. So when will you renew or when will you have the suppliers maintain all your equipment, sir? Uh, as soon as possible, ma'am. We, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Chair. Our majority leader. Yes, uh, I, I, I am giving way to, of course, our Senate President Pro Tem. I will wait for my turn, Mr. President. propound on those questions, uh, Madam Chair, if I may. Uh, yeah. The problem is, uh, we can't hear enough. you, Madam. Uh, can I uh, uh, ask for a minute suspension for the technical people to restart our system? Nagka-glitch din po tayo, so kailangan daw i-restart. Just a few, uh, a minute. Technical. questions. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our Senate President, uh, Senator Mig Zubiri, and he will be the next because he has uh, uh, another commitment after this. May we ask our resource persons to please take your seats. Uh, our Senate President will be fielding his questions, but before I acknowledge, uh, I recognize the Senate President, I'd like to remind our uh, colleagues here that there are other areas to touch on, aside from what caused the failure, what is uh, the real failure, who are responsible. We also need to know um, if this could possibly be uh, a security issue, a national security issue, a threat. 
Uh, we just have to have that on record from the NICA as well as from the National Security Advisor. And also, we need to look forward to a possible privatization of the airport and maybe also the air traffic control, which is done in other countries like Canada, for as long as the board is composed of different stakeholders as well as the government to ensure that our airspace is safe from... Um, from an, in, an attack, so or, or that our national security isn't compromised. Okay, now I'd like to recognize uh, Senate President Mig Subiri. Yes, good afternoon, uh, Chairperson Grace Paul. Thank you very much to my dear colleagues. Mine will just be, uh, instead of, uh, uh, we will just be uh, making a quick statement. And basically, uh, of course, we will discuss and wait, uh, await the the uh, explanation of the other COP officials to our uh, members of the DOTR that are there today, a pleasant uh, good afternoon. Hopefully I'll be able to join you, Madam Chair, a little bit later. I just got back from a very important, uh, another important meeting, but I'll be able to go, go uh, pass by the Senate later in the afternoon. But um, my question, Madam Chair, is very simple. It's, uh, I just can't fathom the idea that uh, our um, CNS ATM, our navigation system for all our flights would conk out, especially in such an important time as January 1, where uh, it is in the peak of the holiday season. Um, I can't seem to believe the fact that the system conked out on its own. And as I mentioned in many interviews, could be three possible scenarios. One was really incompetence of of our personnel at that particular point in time, maybe the outdated equipment, and probably the third would be sabotage. We'd like to pursue uh, these three, uh, of course, uh, uh, topics during the line of questioning today. And I even mentioned uh, your honor to you when we met over dinner last night uh, to discuss this hearing. Um, we, I mentioned that it should be treated like a forensic investigation. Uh, so, may I make a suggestion to our committee members that are present now, if they can lay the uh, timeline, and when I say lay the timeline, from the day the uh, the day this thing had happened, all the way to the uh, repair of the machinery and equipment. Um, for example, we'd like to know, and we'd like to ask up, Madam Chair, if they can submit to us the uh, CCTV footage. Oh, I, I hope that there are CCTV footage. Can we confirm, Madam Chair, to the COP, through uh, uh, Director General Tamayo, that these uh, particular areas no, have uh, CCTV footages? And are they online? Captain or on time? Tamayo, you are recognized. Please answer the question of our Senate President. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, unfortunately, we don't have any CCTV coverage inside the equipment room. But in other areas of, of the facility we have. Are you trying to tell me, uh, Director General, that in the most sensitive portion of uh, the functions and uh, uh, navigational equipment of our uh, country, uh, which is the CNS ATM uh, room, we have no CCTV. So you cannot tell if somebody actually went inside it and sabotaged me. Uh, that's Thank correct, sir. The, we have implemented very strict security protocols as far as the CNS ATM is concerned, and sp uh, more specifically, the ATMC building. Not just anybody can enter. In fact, you need a special ID or key just to be able to have access, aside from having 24-7 uh, security at all times. Now, you, so, you're home and off. Yes, Director General, I have a very short time. What you're trying to tell me is the security checks and clearances are done in the entrance of the building. And you're doing, you, what you're telling me is the security checks are done in the entrance of the building. So what about the secured facilities, the very uh, sensitive uh, and highly, uh, I'd say, uh, uh, of course, guarded facilities like this navigational system? So. What you're telling me, pag nakapasok na yung tao, hindi niya na namamonitor kung saan pumapasok yung tao sa loob ng building niyo. Is that correct? 
that's that's correct, sir. But in some areas, we do have CCTVs. Unfortunately, wala ko dun sa ano. Because before you're able to enter the this particular equipment room, kailangan ho natin ng uh, ano, uh, RFID just to be able to access. So you have, so you know, and we can place in your timeline these personnel who were there prior to the breakdown of the equipment. Is that correct? Yeah. That's correct, sir. We have the list of personnel on duty. Uh, we have logs of everything that happened inside. But unfortunately, the, you have the logs of what happened, but nothing compares to a CCTV footage. Is that correct, Director General? That, that, that's correct, sir. So at least now we now we realize in today's hearing that a very sensitive portion of your uh, uh, facility has no CCTV footage or coverage. I mean, I was showing Senator Grace Paul last night and Senator Lauren Legarda uh, in my home in Cagayan de Oro. I have CCTV footage for for uh, the, my whole house. So I mean, it's not that difficult to put CCTV cameras, uh, Your Honors. You have billions of pesos of equipment in these facilities and yet you don't have cctv footage in these sensitive areas because yes you may have qualified people general you may have qualified people to look at these facilities well trained but you know it could also be negligence on their part they go in there uh they make a mistake on what they connect and you will never know because uh it is their word against yours it is their word against yours because there's no CCTV footage. I just cannot believe that there's no CCTV footage uh, in that uh, highly sensitive area. Well, that's an eye opener for me, uh, your honors. So uh, it's safe to say that you can only rely on the logs of those uh, uh, personnel that had gone into these uh, facilities at that particular time. Is that correct, DG? Uh, that, that's correct, sir. And not just anybody is allowed. Only those authorized to enter the uh, uh, equipment room have access. No, that's correct, Your Honor, uh, Director General. You're absolutely correct. But what if that fellow made a mistake? What if that fellow? Yeah. What if that fellow plugged us? That's the that's the Marites. No, and then we got the Marites all over social media and what's been reaching to us that there was a mistake in the plugging of a particular equipment from 220 to 380 voltage. That obviously, that's a, a human error. If that's human error, as I said, head should roll. Uh, in this case, somebody should get punished or at least uh, uh, a case should be filed against him for negligence. Pero kaya nga sabi ko, paano natin masasabi yun kung hindi natin nakita? Di ba? So yan ang napaka-importante. This is just a simple system of security. And I see that we have a lack of uh, security, particularly in these highly sensitive areas. You know, um, uh, Director General, I had a chance to go to a nuclear power facility in uh, France, and Senator JV was there with me. He's there now in plenary. We had to go through four different uh, systems check. As a matter of fact, yung executive assistant ko, hindi nakapasok kasi mali yung, fault, uh, mali yung pangalan na middle initial na inilagay niya sa ID that we had to uh, get when we enter the facility. And he was not able to enter the facility even if we were an official mission. They were that strict when it comes to protocols on security. Every corner of the facility had uh, CCTV systems. Every corner. There's not one blind spot in that facility. Now, um, Again, there's national security concerns here. Kami ni Senator Bato de la Rosa, who just went online, we feel that uh, we need to protect this system at all costs from any forms of sabotage and uh, or even incompetence. Because as I, as I can see, uh, uh, it looks like the maintenance is the, or the lack of maintenance of these facilities is the cause for this uh, particular uh, outage. Now, my second question, can we now... Uh, your honors, uh, Director General, come up with a timeline, minute to minute uh, uh, report on what had transpired so we can tell if it was the equipment that was faulty, if it was human error, or a combination of both. Can we do that, Director General? Uh, we, we, we shall comply, sir. We will provide that. 
OK, going back to the maintenance and equipment, and I will uh, wrap up in a bit because I'll be heading there later. Uh, Director General, is it true that Thales and Sumitomo were in charge of, how was it Sumitomo? Thales and the Mitsui band, uh, or Sumitomo? Sumitomo. OK, it was Thales, it was a French company, and uh, uh, Sumitomo, a Japanese company, doing the maintenance for the first two years upon uh, its uh, uh, initial delivery on 2018 or switch on in 2018 to 2020. Is that correct, Your Honor? Uh, three years, sir. Three years they were with us. Three From years. 2017 to 2020. And they were supposed to continue with the maintenance of uh, this equipment or were, were you, was it supposed to be transferred uh, to you guys, like a technology transfer to the CAAP? Uh, it was uh, through the chair. It was technology transfer, sir. So our personnel, our technicians were trained and they took over maintenance after the expiry of the uh, warranty in 2020. So the, the initial uh, contract was for them to maintain only until 2020. Is that correct, DG? That's correct, sir. Because what the information that I had gotten last night, and the good chair was with me last night in the house of the ambassador, French ambassador, ambassador to France, is that they were supposed to be maintaining the equipment, but they were failed. They, they, we failed to pay them. Hindi po natin nabayaran sila. Totoo bang may utang po tayong 1 billion sa kanila? There are existing claims, uh, Your Honor, and uh, it's still being, it's still under negotiation up to now. I think uh, both parties are here and they were ne negotiating up to last night to be able to settle these claims as soon as possible. Sir. So I, we want to find out and uh, get to the bottom of this issue, uh, Director General, because we want to make sure that uh, baka we nag, nagtipid po tayo, hindi na lang natin binayaran, at sinabi na lang natin, tayo na lang mag-maintain, kaya natin to. But we all know that uh, this technology is highly technical and it is uh, very, uh, uh, very, uh, uh, I would say, tedious uh, or very uh, uh, difficult no? uh, technology to master. So... Who certified? Did we certify our people? Did Thales and uh, Sumitomo certify our people to be able to run uh, the facility? Uh, through, the, through the chair. Yes, uh, our personnel are factory trained and they were certified. And then, uh, in fact, they're here. We can confirm it with them that uh, they agree that uh, our technicians are indeed proficient. May I ask, uh, Madam Chair, may I ask Thales uh, or Sumitomo, the representatives that are there today, uh, the question, can I ask them if uh, indeed their contract expired in 2020 and uh, and therefore they had no other, ob no obligation to maintain the equipment after that, even uh, with an extended contract? Or ask if we asked for an extended contract? Uh, before you answer that, I'd like I'd like to acknowledge the online presence of Senator De La Rosa, and then also earlier uh, I saw Senator Tolentino present, um, and now I, I would like to recognize um, Sumitomo, Attorney Lim. Through the chair, my uh, hapon, Your Honor. Um, that would be correct after the uh, uh, taking over by the DOTR on the CNS ATM project. Uh, the DOTR had their own turnover to CAP. Um, that's 2017 in October. Uh, we had a one-year defects notification period where we conducted both repair and maintenance of the system. And it's until 2018 of October. Uh, after that, two years extended warranty, that's what we call it, uh, where we provided warranty services. No? Um, it, before the taking over on uh, October 2017, we had proper trainings and uh, operations and maintenance manuals turned over to uh, the CAA personnel. No? So while we were implementing the project, although this was a, a DOTR project, uh, we were already working hand in hand with CAA 
people. Because the facility, the CNS ATM, uh, we call it the ATM Center Building, is located within the Kaap compound. And uh, with that, uh, Mr. Lim, Attorney Lim, my uh, hapon. Uh, with that, uh, Attorney Lim, you think that uh, our men and women of the Kaap were capable enough to run it without the uh, necessary expertise of Sumitomo and Thales? For the uh, in this particular case, Your Honor, uh, we were talking about the concern in the power system. Uh, so that would be a concern. Uh, uh, works of actually works of Sumitomo. Um, in general, yes, uh, Kaap personnel are competent enough to make uh, to do the uh, regular maintenance, uh, but it would be beneficial if they also have support from uh, third party suppliers. Uh, in this instance, we also provided uh, Kaap a list of all our uh, suppliers with the equipment installed for the CNS ATM, uh, so that should they prefer or decide to have additional support, they can contact them. Attorney Lim, uh, these are similar, and the Kaap personnel are there, and they know uh, uh, they're the ones who actually make sure that airlines, airplanes, uh, planes, or helicopters get cap uh, yearly renewal. Uh, we all know when you have an airplane or a helicopter, there's the 100, 100 hour maintenance, there's the one year uh, inspection of CAP. Um, this equipment, the Stales also and uh, Sumitomo, don't you also have to do the inspection of this equipment to make sure that this equipment is in tip top shape or all the systems are in properly in place? like a regular scheduled maintenance by the manufacturer? Uh, through the chair, Your Honor. Um, basically, uh, Sumitomo in this case was more or less like an integrator as, a main, as the main contractor. And we have different suppliers who have each their respective expertise on the products they sell. Uh, so they would be the best, uh, uh, best entities to do these maintenance and checks. Uh, it would also be cheaper for Kaap, for instance, to deal directly with them since there is no on top cost. If, uh, for instance, if Sumitomo were to come in again with all these suppliers, definitely there would be on top cost because we will have our own cost as well. Yeah, but the question is, did they? Uh, so what you're saying is there is maintenance. There's ne it's necessary to have it maintained. It, there's necessary it, maintenance to be done. Now, it would be very beneficial. Yes. Have they followed the maintenance schedule needed? Uh, since 2020, uh, Your Honor, after the uh, end of the warranty period, we've had no visibility anymore with respect to the operations of CAAP. So it is difficult for us to comment on this one, Your Honor. Uh, may, okay, thank President, you, Attorney. Maybe we can ask you, Madam Chair. Please, please go yeah. ahead. Okay. Uh, when you were still in charge of maintenance, how often would you do an audit or a maintenance check? Was it quarterly, monthly, yearly? Oh, that would depend on the, uh, Your Honor, it would depend on the equipment. So there is actually in the operations and maintenance manual, there are periodic checks for uh, daily, weekly, monthly for different components. So there is daily, huh? There is, so we just follow those uh, uh, list box. So daily of a third party uh, inspector auditor. When, when we were doing the maintenance, but yes, but. That, that's kind of quite significant number of days. Thank you, uh, Senate President. So thank you, Madam. Maybe we can ask the Director General. Uh, Director General um, Tamayo, we'd like to now, the, the committee would now like to ask if you would follow religiously the maintenance schedules that were supposed, that are supposed to be done. And you know this because you're also a pilot. I, I, I believe you're also a pilot. You know, planes cannot take off if they do not do the regular 100 hour maintenance, uh, you do not do the cap uh, inspections, uh, the cap inspections. So we also have this for this type of equipment. Hindi to, hindi kasi ito salpak lamang at bahala na si Batman and then we just make it run for the next 10 years. I think this has to go through um, uh, regular maintenance checkups as mentioned by Attorney Lim. Were we religiously doing this? Uh, through the chair. Yes, sir, we are religiously doing, following the, main, the, the maintenance checks, daily checks, weekly checks, monthly checks. These are all followed. There are protocols that each of the uh, 
technicians follow by the book as how they were trained before. And even each of these equipment, even if you don't have the checklist, nakapaskil ho do sa ano eh, do sa mga cabinets nila on uh, what you have to do. But then, as I said, it is followed and it is logged. If there are any unusual parameters, it is likewise logged. So, but oh, Director General, siguro maybe we can ask a copy of this uh, maintenance schedules this last year uh, or so. Maybe we can ask a copy from your office uh, for our investigation to see if the equipment has been properly maintained and uh, has been properly, uh, of course, a proper scheduling for maintenance. Could we uh, uh, get a copy of these uh, uh, particular logs uh, and dates of the chairman. maintenance? But we can yeah, see. We for the we, record. We, have sub, we have submitted it to Lenny. Okay, thank you. And and we have copies now if you require. Thank you, sir. Yeah. It's um, hundreds of pages. Uh, we It was submitted last night, so we're looking. We will have engineers take a look at it, uh, perhaps a technical working group, uh, the information yes, of our Senate the president. But maybe as an enjoiner, may I ask uh, Director General Tamayo if now you are considering actually getting a third party Maintenance provider, are you? Yeah, yes, ma'am. We have been negotiating with Thales to get them as our uh, third party uh, provider as far as maintenance is concerned. And, and how much are you going to be paying for that? We're still negotiating, ma'am. I'm, I'm sorry? We're sti we are still negotiating. And, and it didn't push through with Sumitomo because of certain charges that you were trying to uh, figure out, right? Uh, go ahead, Madam Chair. Good afternoon. Um, the the power supply is uh, uh, not with respect to Thales, because Thales is for the equipment and systems. Um, thank you, Your Honor. Um, I understand you also invited Pituro, the supplier of the uh, AVR and UPS. Um, they would actually be good entity to provide maintenance for both. Um, for the uh, breakers, you have Fujihaya, supplier of the same, who can do it. Um, yeah, okay, so Somitomo would be more with the AT, uh, CNS ATM system. With the building and civil works po as integrator, for more or less. No? So, uh, lahat. Main contractor, yes. Um, although, as I, uh, we have mentioned, uh, our obligation, contractual obligation has ended October 2020, we remain very supportive po to Kaap in uh, whichever what, way we can What help. was the ongoing negotiation for how many, for three years? It's with Somitomo and Kaap, is that it? Uh, DG Tamayo? Uh, it's with Thales, ma'am. With Thales. Yes, ma but wh why didn't it push through with Thales? Because of... For three years, huh? That, that, that's correct, ma'am. They gave us an offer and uh, with a caveat that we have to settle first. <laughs> and how much are we thinking? Because you're, you're, you're compromising, you're putting in jeopardy the safety of the passengers. Okay, so how much are we talking about? Just, a, just as a reminder, the cap earns between a billion to two billion plus every year, pre-pandemic. So, I mean... Usually, if there's a, an agreement, a loan is needed, then the government can step in. But if it's something with your revolving fund that you can actually afford it, how, how much are we talking about? Uh, the, the figures that we have, ma'am, uh, for delay damages, which is for DOTR, claim, claimed by DOTR, it's uh, 644 million pesos. Okay, so we are owed. You feel... Uh, the OTR feels it's entitled to 644 million pesos. That, that, that was the claims. Think, but I'm chairman, I think that's what they owe, Thales. I think that's, is that what is uh, what you're trying to is say, that, Madam Chair, with permission? Is that what we owe, Thales, that you think is what we owe, Thales? 600 no, million? Uh, Mr. Uh, Senate President, because we also, apparently, we have also certain violations with their contract. That's why they're also charging us. So, Please clarify, is this something we owe Thales or Thales owes us? The 600 uh, million. With the permission of the chair. Yes, uh, uh, you as said a, Bobby did recognize. Uh, your Honor, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the delay damages that is claimed by the OTR for the delay 
in the delivery of the system is 644 million plus. Okay. So since the other party is a joint venture, this really is an integrated claim by the OTR against the contractor. Now, the claim of the contractor, uh, there are three types of claims. The one is suspension claims, and it amounts to 477 million. Now, you can trace this from the time that the original contract was suspended due to the notice of disallowance sometime in 2011 which was only lifted in 2013. So that's what time, what type of claim. The other type of claim is the prolongation claim, again by the contractors, in the amount of 387 million plus. Uh, again, this is a consequence of delays, a combination of delays due to suspension and the implementation of the work. Uh, instructions given by DOTR. Uh, it, it's really a, a, a lot of factual issues are involved here. And there were efforts on the part of both parties to reconcile these claims. No? And third would be the price escalation claim arising from the delay. As a consequence of the delay of the project, the contractors made a claim of 121 million uh, plus. So, the total of that would be 986 million 653 157.81 that would be the claim of the contractors so, so what has happened here uh, in the past was a a claims resolution committee was organized uh, sometime in 2020 um, and uh, you know, there were uh, presentations of the positions of the parties, but ultimately the Claims Resolution Committee denied uh, the claim of, uh, of, the, of the contractors. Your Honor, Madam Chair, and, if I may, if I may, you know, Madam Chair, it, it's, it, it's kind of uh, painting a clearer picture that there is a problem between the, the, the CAP and the, the, the provider, with the service provider, in this case, Thales, which I think is not a good thing to have. It's not good to have this kind of friction between the manufacturer and the operator. Why? Because obviously the manufacturer has certain warranties and they also provide the services that they know. These are highly technical equipment. These are radar equipments. These are uh, secrets that they cannot just uh share to other uh operators um it's like for example having a toyota vehicle and then away mo yung toyota vehicle dadali mo sa ibang kasa na gagawin na lang nila sila na lang gagawa ng paraan so yung maintenance natin these last years last three years mukhang tayo lang yata ang gumawa ng paraan na para ma-maintain ito my equipment na ito that's why i want to ask thales if thales is there I would like to ask them their opinion, particularly on the maintenance of this equipment, Madam Chair. If I may uh, direct my questions to them. Yes, uh, we have Thales here, but before I ask Thales to respond, I, you know, we're talking about three years of negotiation for 986 million. Now, uh, the information of, to the information of our Senate President, what happened with the delay is that the former DOTC tried to get another provider, and they've already spent $511 million on that. And now, uh, later on, we'd like to know, what's going on? It's just there, it's not just there, it's not being used. In the meantime, our services that, that we need are not being provided. Uh, can we ask uh, Thales what the possible uh, response is to our Senate President? So, uh, Madam Chair, the, uh, the outstanding uh, claims, uh, particularly in the case of uh, the suspension claim, has been outstanding since uh, 2013. Um, so the, the, position, the position for Tallers is that we're, uh, we're not willing to enter into uh, a new contract until we have resolved the outstanding claims of the existing contract. I, I should also add 
that the support uh, service that we are discussing with CAP relates to the ATMS software. It does not relate to, for example, a UPS support. So it's, uh, it's a slightly different uh, system, different technology to what the incident occurred on the 1st of January. So in short, you are not willing to provide the service until, of course, the claims are resolved. So why don't we go with Somitomo? Ibaba, your system. Your Honor, for the equipment and systems, but we don't have the expertise of that one. So yet. we really have no choice. We have to resolve this, and I think three years is long enough. Uh, I don't so, know if we have so to Madam bite Chair, the bullet. Yeah, Madam Chair. So who are who is who can we get to as a third party provider, Madam Chair? Who can we get as a third party provider to make sure that the systems work? Remember the MRT problem before. When the when the when it kept uh, breaking down, it used to be run by Sumut, Sumitomo, and then for some reason I do not know what happened. Uh, there were maybe corruption issues, and they stopped. Uh, Sumitomo decided not to continue with us, and then now we got them back, and our MRT system uh, is running uh, in tip-top condition. Alam mo ni Sato Javian, who are we going to get now? Who are the possible third-party providers? in terms of maintenance checks to make sure that this does not happen again. Uh, can the CAP answer or the DOTR? Uh, Madam Chair? Who, who can answer? Please identify yourself so the Senate President will hear you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, the, I am the head of the in engineering, engineering of CAP. Okay. What we are doing right now is that we are uh, maintaining the equipment. Our personnel are uh, heavy training, and we can determine the problems whenever there is a problem in the system for the equipment, the critical equipment. Now, uh, when whenever we uh, identify the parts, defective parts, then we need to purchase these defective parts from the manufacturer. So we uh, previously we have the spare parts supplied under the contract, but now it is already depleted. So we need to con uh, we, we we need to yeah. pass through yeah. a procurement. Uh, Madam Chair, no, with the, with permission of the with the engineer, engineer. Uh, uh, pawalang galang na po. Yan nga ang uh, problema natin na yun. Yung sinabi mo nga na uh, naubos na yung spare parts ninyo. These are highly important equipment. Uh, these are necessary equipment uh, uh, that uh, is needed to fly people in and out of the country. Uh, it, we're playing with lives of, uh, of people here. no? Uh, hundreds of thousands of lives every day. Kaya nga Napakahalaga yung maintenance ng equipment na ito. Kaya ako hindi naniniwala na on its own, it just count out on its own. I think it is the lack of maintenance. Maybe it is the lack of preventive maintenance. Maybe the lack of, of, uh, of parts. Uh, or maybe just the lack of inspection from third-party um, audits uh, by the manufacturer to be able to make this work. Uh, do you respect to the men and women of CAPA? Mahal ko kayo, hindi ko kayo inaaway. Ayaw lang po natin mangyari na nangyari po na itong January 1 na uh, buong mundo nakatingin sa atin, walang makalipad na aeroplano dito sa ating bansa and they would show pictures of the, uh, of course, the maps, no, the sky maps na talagang wala ka, walang makakadaan dito sa atin. So that's a big black eye on our uh, record, our track record that, just, that's, that, that didn't just scare tourism away but it, of course, open up uh, issues on national security. So, kaya, um, uh, we have to, I will end, no, Madam Chair, para you, the others can ask questions. Ang akin lang dyan, Madam Chair, let's dig deeper into the issue, of course, uh, on the maintenance of this equipment or the lack of maintenance of this equipment or the lack of equipment, and for that matter, as admitted by the engineer, na paubos na po yung kanilang spare parts, 
And uh, pangalawa, yung security issue, hindi ko po maintindihan na wala pong CCTV doon sa pinakamaselan lugar nitong mga equipment na ito. Na hindi po natin alam na baka may double agent na dyan, hindi natin alam. May uh, isang tao dyan that uh, actually uh, sabotage the equipment. We could never know. Because of course, you will have to uh, believe them hook, line, and sinker from the logs that they had put in. The only way to the only way to be able to tell that if there were proper CCTV in that whole facility, we would have been able to nail it. We could see if the system was overheating, if the system was diverted. We could see it all throughout uh, 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 this uh, particular period if it was properly recorded, and we need to do that now. It's unforgivable that we do not have that kind of monitoring surveillance system in that facility within the most important facility of that Kaap building. Uh, I'd like to make that uh, point very clear, uh, Madam Chair. Budget is not an issue. They could have always approached us at any point in time. Alam po ni Yusek Dani Lim yan. Alam po ni Secretary uh, uh, Bautista yan. At any time, we could have helped them with their budget. But we were never alerted. We were never informed. There was never a request on our table. Even just the mere uh, paying of the of the uh, the fines or the itong issue nga and claims ng ng uh, tales, we could have acted on that as well very easily, Madam Chair. And that goes to goes boils down again to uh, I'm sorry to say this incompetence on our part. Siguro pwede na ito. Uh, ang Pilipino kasi, mahirap kasi, Madam Chair, ang Pilipino, kung pwede na to, okay na to. Pwede na to, kaya na to. It's not that. Eh. If you want to reach middle income status economy, if we want to beat Vietnam, we want to beat uh, Singapore and our neighbors, Malaysia, we have to think higher levels of, of service. We have to think higher levels of service for our people. So, yan lamang po, Madam Chair, and maybe on the second round, when I listen to more of the explanations, I'll ask a few more questions. Marami salamat, Madam Chair. Thank you to uh, Kap. Thank you as well. Um, I think uh, the Senate President used up his second round also, but but uh, of course you're the Senate President, so what else can I yeah, say? Right? Uh, I would like to actually, if there are no senators who will ask anything about the DOF for now, uh, I, I mean the DOT. Kasi kanina pa si Secretary Frasco, but uh, you're you're a member of the CAB, not the CAAP. But we know that there's an impact in tourism. That's why you were invited. But just a position paper from you, ma'am. Uh, what you think, how it impacted tourism that day and uh, what the airports can do if a situation like this will happen again. So thank you for your time. And I'm sorry you um, had to wait here this long. Thank you. You're excused, ma'am. Okay, uh, now the next is Senator Monteveros. Huh? Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, with the permission of, uh, uh, she, he was earlier, but he didn't come down to have his name listed. Kala niya automatic yung log on pagpasok ni Nunsano. So, um, with your indulgence, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, Chair. Okay. Th Senate thank you, thank you, Madam Chair. But before I ask my 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 my, my first question, let me uh, take this opportunity to uh, join your honor and my distinguished colleagues in commending our uh, CAAP employees and uh, other government employees who walk the extra mile during this uh, fiasco in the airport. Dahil uh, talagang kahanga-hanga yung mga ginawa nilang sakripisyo. Madam Chair, let me first ask my uh, question. When I uh, filed Senate uh, Resolution 390, nag-aral ho agad tayo, nag-research, nag-study, kaya hindi na bago yung narinig natin kay Senator Jingoy na hindi po ito nangyari ngayon lang. Uh, so, question natin sa CAAP, uh, bakit po parang hindi nyo alam na nangyari na dalawang beses? Binanggit nga po ni Mr. Chong, 22 flights were uh, uh, affected and Doon ho sa PNA, Mr. Chong, 31 flights yung report ng PNA. So, hindi nyo ba talaga alam ito? Did you conduct a risk assessment after this? Mr. Chair, 
it's it's for Kaap. Yes. I'm just informing you, sir, that the PNA says it's 30, 30, uh, one flights. And to the chair, uh, to, to answer the question, uh, the CNS ATM is under Kaap. In the incident last September, that's Terminal 3, it is under me, MIAA. So, magka, magka if I may, yan. Madam Chair, if I may, sir, and I hope I don't get the, the because the time is running every time I have to uh, correct somebody uh, of what he or she is saying. Your Kaap, sir, 31 flights, hindi nakalipad, naapektuhan. Sasabihin natin, baliwala yun. And this is, did not happen just once. Twice po ito nangyari, bago nangyari itong January 1. We have all these documents. We have talked to some people. Again, as I was saying, we, we study here before we conduct this investigation. So I wanted to find out. Uh, during that time, again, and I'm repeating my first question, did you conduct a risk assessment? Uh, to the chair. You yes, sir. yes, sir. We did. Yes. You did conduct a risk assessment, but yes, during the beginning of the hearing, you did not say na may nangyari po na ganitong power outage. Let me go to, uh, can we show the, 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 the flow chart kanina? Pwede? Okay. Show niya lang yung uh, presentation niyo kanina. Yung diagram. Just the one diagram. Yan. Alam niyo po, pagka yung binabanggit niyo na reasoning at explanation, binanggit niyo dun sa tatlong araw na tulog sa airport, sa nawala ng trabaho, sa hindi nakabalik dun sa ibang bansa, hindi ko tatanggapin eh. Hindi ko tatanggapin. Bakit po? Binanggit nyo po kanina, ang naging problema dun sa pula na yon. Sabi nyo po, at dyan sa flowchart na yan, wala sa UPS yung problema. Yan din yung binanggit nyo doon sa House of Representatives. So, ano nangyari dun sa AVR? Hindi ba dapat alam din ng AVR yon? So, are you saying na, Kagaya nung sinabi niyo po, doon sa House of Representatives, the AVR did not warn of anything. Is that correct? And the, the function of the AVR is not only to regulate or condition the electric current. Smart AVRs na po ito eh. So if it, IUPS, rather, if there are any malfunctions or any issues like overvoltage, na katulad ho nangyari ngayon, it will go on standby mode. So, so why do we have AVR there? Yes, sir. Sabi nyo, papalitan nyo to. Kung papalitan nyo po yan, hindi naman mas mareregulate kung ano yung papasok na 320 dyan eh. Diba, subali, wala pag pinalitan mo po yan. Kasi hindi nyo maalam kung ano yung pumapasok na oriente. The, the, sir, uh, ma'am, if I may, uh, as I mentioned earlier, even in the, even in the schematic diagram, uh, Dual voltage po. It's 380 and 220 po yung pumapasok yan. And this is regulated by the AVR. Uh, correction, by the UPS. <laughs> Alam niyo, sir, nakakawalong is... correction na po kami and the records will bail me out. Kaya kami nalilito, sir. Pati yung 220 nyo, tsaka 320, nalilito kami. Yung talis kanina, wala naman sila dun sa power outage. Nababanggit nyo rin po. Kaya baka pwede yung pakilinawan lang po. Yung, dyan po yung problema. Dyan sa... Circuit board na sinasabi niyo po, pero hindi niyo nakokontrol yung power. 380 ka niyo yung pumasok. Hindi eh, dapat nalaman ng AVR. Kaya ho may AVR, hindi po ba? At yung AVR po, chinek ko sa Shopee tsaka sa Lazada, 10,000 piso lang po yun eh. Hindi ko alam kung yan din yung ginagamit po ninyo. E eh, 2.5 billion yung nakukuha yung subsidy from the government. Arnold? Can I request uh, Arnold Balukatin, the engineer, to reply to that? Uh, sir, thank you. I think uh, I'm just saying this. I hope you uh, appreciate what I'm doing here. A lot of people were affected because of this. And if we're going to make that kind of explanation, may AVR pala, pero hindi pala gumagana. Yung AVR, pag tinik-chinek mo sa Lazada, 10,000 lang. Eh, doon ba naka, depende yung ating buong uh, airport? Isang, isang ano lang, circuit breaker, 24 hours bago kayo naging regular sa ano ninyo, travel, merong engineer na nagre-race ng kamay. Baka si itong si engineer Bage, baka mas ma 
Baka mas kaya mo. Kamayin po namin. Sir, uh, ilayman muna natin. Yung circuit breaker is the protector of the system. Unfortunately, si circuit breaker yung nasira. Now, dapat po mag-forensic kasi may maraming possibility like arc arcing sa loob. So, nasira yung mechanism. So, hindi na siya mag-operate mag as a circuit breaker. So, the only way dapat may redundancy, yung may separate circuit breaker din na mag control o mag-turn off pag nasira yung unang breaker. Now, yung sinasabi yung ABR is the different setting. Nandun sa kabila. So, kiniklaim nila, base sa assessment namin, sir, wala po kaming basihan dahil wala po yung actual plan kasi kailangan natin yung actual plan, yung circuit na binabanggit. Kung tama pa ba yung circuit since 19, ah, 2018 up to now kasi dapat updated po tayo parati doon. So, yung sabi nila na yung UPS is regulated, meaning tama yung nilalabas. Nung pinakita nila kanina, tama dun sa input, pagdating sa loob, nagka-problema. Maari yung apat na linya may nagdikit dun, tumaas ang bultahe. Okay. Balik po natin yung, ano, yung uh, diagram kanina. Sir, ang tanong ko sa inyo, tama ho ba itong diagram? Kasi kung ganyan... Hindi po namin matsisabi. Kasi, itong diagram. Sorry po, hindi po namin masasabi kung tama yan kasi we don't know yet the detailed plan, electrical plan, doon sa kaap. Thank you. Which, unfortunately, mukha hindi nila i-reveal because of the security reason. Yeah, that is my point, sir. Yes, sir. Because if you, if you show me this diagram and listen to your explanation, sasama ho yung loob ko. Sasama ho yung loob ko. Naramdaman ho nung ilang mga senador po yan. Kaya po, pag nag-show ka ng diagram na ganyan, maliwanag nyo ng maayos. Kasi kung may AVR pala na ganyan, hindi pala na-re-regulate yung, yung uh, electricity, Uh, Mr. Eh, Chairman, ako, kahit yung Mr. Chairman, nare-regulate po nila as they claim. Ang error dun sa parte na may pula. So, pumasok yung bultahe dyan na tama, pero nung lumabas, problema. So, ang may problema po, yung mismong breaker. Hindi po yung UPS. Hindi po. Yes. Kasi, nung gumili sila, sabi nung provider, okay yung breaker nyo. Unfortunately, yung, yung, mot, yung pan ang sira. So, papalitan yung pan. Now, ang suggestion dyan is, Basically, balikan yung plano because of the AIDS probably. Baka hindi na na hindi na na-update. Tatanda po natin that every time we need to update as built. Parang sa bahay po yan. Pag bumili kayo ng rep na mas mataas ang rating, so dati yung rep, tingnan nyo yung breaker nyo. Baka hindi kaya. So kung may nasirang breaker, maaaring dapat yung susunod ang mag-break para hindi ma-protecta o ma-protectahan natin yung system. Now, with regard to the provider, baka hindi nila bigay yung inside ng system. So, yun ang isang problem. So, engineer, bagay, ano pong trabaho niyo ngayon? I'm an electrical engineer. I'm a professional electrical engineer. I'm teaching at TUP Manila. Baka dapat uh, kunin ka muna nila. <laughs> para Sorry mag, po. Uh, para uh, naman actually, may mag-explain ka sa amin. Uh, sa hindihan na po namin ngayon. But again, dinabanggit ko po itong diagram na to at yung explanation. Hindi ko katanggap-tanggap. One minute na lang po ako, pasensya na. Yung concerns natin, lagi natin binabanggit ito tuwing budget hearing. Alam ni Secretary Togade. J.O. and Contract of Service. Tingnan po natin yung CAAP. Yung CAAP nag-increase ng 59.8% ngayon ang kanilang workforce na job order at contract of service. Nag-decrease naman yung kanilang regular employees. Bakit po? At pwede bang malaman yung... Uh, How many employees ng CAAP involved in activities relating to the ATMC, our contractual or job order? Thank you. Uh, before uh, that's answered, I would like to thank Secretary Togade for his presence here today. You are excused now, sir. Ma'am, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Bago ho ako magpaalam, may mga pipitawal lang usana akong suwestyon na solusyon na pwedeng tignan ng grupo o ng komite. Okay, with the... With the... Okay, with the permission of Senator Joel. Obsesyon ko na po ito nung araw pa. Ang kaapo performs two dual function. One is regulatory, the other is operation. Noon pa lagi kong sinasabi, dapat regulatory ka lang. Huwag kang mag-operate ng airport. Iwan mo sa mga privado yan. Nang sa ganun, meron kang check and balance. Hindi mo malalaman, noon pa ho, inaano ko yan, pero kailangan ho ng legislation ito. Pangalawa ho sa staff. Tama ho kayo dapat pangalagaan 
yung mga nagtatrabaho sa tower at traffic. Meron hong ginawa si, si Chonko na kung saan itinaas yung antas ng compensation ng no, mga nasa tower at traffic. Pero hindi ho sufficiente. Kailangan pag-aralan ho yan. Critical ho yan sa seguridad at safety ng sambayanan at ng mga uh, tao. Mahalaga din ho na dapat pabaunan natin ito ng detailed training program na kung saan ma-assure mo yung succession ng tao. Darating ho ang panahon, AIDS will catch up with them. Kailangan merong continuing training dyan. Kailangan ho natin makipag-ugnayan sa mga airlines. Tutulong at tutulong ho sila dyan. Pangatlo ho, pumirma na tayo ng pangalawang service agreement. Maalala niyo ho yung nangyari sa MRT3 na kung saan aberia dito, aberia dyan, lalakad sa release ng tren ng mga tao. Kasi walang service agreement. There was a point in time na yung stock room ng mga parts, wala na, alam ni Senator JB dyan, zero. Kung aasa lang tayo sa internal, magkakaroon ho tayo ng problema dyan. Kailangan magkaroon tayo ng second service agreement kung kinakailangan. Maalala nyo yung sinabi ni uh, uh, Atty. Lim, merong basket of suppliers sila na nagbibigay ng mga critical parts and critical equipment. Kung wala pa yung service agreement, sinabi naman ni Atty. Lim yan, magkipag-ugnayan dyan, ugnayan dyan, baka mas mura pa yan. Huwag natin gawin yung purchases on our own. Nangyari ho sa MRT noon yan. Sa MRT 3, hindi ako nanunumpat. Noon nag-assume kami, nauubos ang spare parts. Alam niyo ba, on the record, saan binibili yung spare part? Sa ganda. Sa raon. Sa eh, kailangan ho tayo, may quality of spare parts. Kailangan ho natin yung uh, service agreement. Pangapat ho, yung budget approvals. Nasabi ko kanina, at uulitin ko, GOCC ho yung kaap. Ibig sabihin niyan, autonomous yan. Kaya nga yung budget nila hindi nagdadaan dito eh. Pag-aralan niyo ho na kung saan, and I've been advocating for this, meron kang cap kung ano yung dadaan dito. Pag security and safety, kailangan dumaan sa ratification yan. Pag meron kang CAPEX, set ceiling. Ma-achieve yung ceiling, kailangan pumunta ka ng uh, Congressional and Senate approval. Uh, wag ho tayong uh, pumayag na komo GOCC yan, absolute yan, full autonomy. Pag-aralan ho natin yan. Panglima ho, and I have been an advocate of this, alam mo ni uh, Senator Joel yan. Pagpipili ka ng head ng management sa kaatap sa agencies, kagaya ng kaap, kung kaap, bakit kailangan piloto lang ang uh, qualification niyan? Kailangan Marunong ka mag-manage, marunong ka magbasa ng financial statement, meron kang aspeto ng engineering. Kailangan holistic ang approach dyan. Ah, Pag-aralan ho natin yan para sa batas, ilagay ho yung mga qualifications na, na nandu doon. Noong panahon po ninyo, sino yung ka-up head? Po? Noong panahon po ninyo, sino yung ka-up head? Ah, si uh, dati ho, panahon, ah, si si Jonko. Pero, uh, yung Yusek ho niyan, si... Uh, Uh, Mr. Tamayo. At meron silang chief of staff, si Dan John. Uh, so, so ano rin siya? Technical Pil na ganyan. Piloto rin po. Yun. Oh, chief of, uh, Ngayon po, yung USEC po ninyo, meron din uh, uh, financial capability. Meron ba kayong ganon? Uh, uh, Ma'am, in ka-up now, we have a CFO already na kinuha namin who is a certified public accountant who takes care of the finances. Okay. So, anyway, I, I'm a, I'm, I might be digressing. Alam ko naman uh, na... Ito po yung mga bagay-bagay na hinihingi ko na kung pwede silipin. Okay. Because as mentioned earlier, we are here not to finger point, but to look for solutions, long-lasting, so that we can avoid this. These are my two cents worth, Madam. Okay. Again, thanks. Madam Chair, uh, members of the committee, maraming salamat po for giving me the opportunity I hope I have shared. And there, there is, if there is anything I can do in the interest of the Filipino people and government, 
I am ready to help in whatever capacity. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, Secretary Tugade, for rousing you from your retirement, semi-retirement. But it's always good... It's always good that you are here uh, to help us. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, you have asked Senator Joel as a pending question. Please answer. Through, through the chair. Uh, tama po yun. Uh, marami ho kaming uh, Jeong ngayon kasi kulang po yung plantillas natin. So, uh, we are undergoing uh, reorganization po based on a study made by Willis Towers and we are fast-tracking this eh, para ma-implement ho sana namin fully within the first quarter and uh, ma-resolve ma po yung issue natin na kulang na manpower at saka yung yun nga ho, as I mentioned yung uh, plantilla position sa kahap. The second part of the question is meron po bang J.O. doon sa May meron po Jay o. Doon po sa... Yes, sa CNS ah, So, ayan po. You don't deny this figure, sir. Um, alam nyo, the entire budget season, I, I tried to look at the, uh, the the minutes of the hearings. Wala ako ni isang na binanggit tungkol dito sa mga problema na ito. And uh, while the uh, CNS ATM was being uh, set up, uh, did you request yung CAAP uh, variations to update and integrate new aviation technologies that have emerged from the time the CNS uh, ATM project started up to its inauguration in uh, 2018? Uh, that's uh, through the chair. That, that's correct. You, you know, uh, upgrades as far as the uh, software is concerned, you know, meron na kaming uh, nakapending for the past two years. Eh, yun ho sana ipupush namin kung if Thales can help us out with this in spite of the issues. And then, uh, in fairness to them, uh, they gave us advanced information. Eh, yun ho mga software upgrades natin, kailangan ho sumabay yung hardware. Otherwise, kahit na mag-upgrade ka ng software, hindi rin ho compatible. So, one, one last follow-up lang, sir. No? Kasi doon po sa briefing ninyo, in January 1, uh, you stated that the country's CNS ATM, as far as the technology is concerned, is outdated. And compared to Singapore, sabi naman ni DOTR Secretary Bautista, that they are 10 years ahead of us. Uh, nung uh, hearing po sa House of Representatives, when you were asked, I mean, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it was uh, uh, Congressman uh, Akop, Tinanong po kayo, sabi niya, following the technical glitch that led to the disruption of flights on New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, the CAAP admits that the country's air traffic management system is outdated, to which you made mention, no sir. So, ano ba talaga? At uh, gusto lang natin uh, malamang gusto para maliwanagan po yung ating mga kababayan. Uh, to the chair, regarding the term obsolete, no, no, Your Honor, the, CN, the CNS ATM is not obsolete. In fact, it is state of the art eh, up to this point. Uh, to be accurate, kailangan lang natin yung mga upgrades to make it up to standard. And that is what we are trying to do. And we have the budget for that. And sana ho ma-implement namin ka. Yun nga ho yung uh, pinag-usapan ni no less than the secretary with the provider. If indeed we can... Uh, move forward as far as the supply requirements are concerned. Thank you, sir. But would, would you agree with me that uh, if we have a working uh, maintenance checks, eh, hindi yun ang yari to. The, the chances of it uh, happening will definitely be reduced if we have a maintenance check. Well, the answer is yes. I think yes. I, would, I, would, I would consider it as a yes answer. And yes, sir. Yes. That's why maintenance checks... Uh, matter sir i hope and pray that uh, we'll do our part again as i was saying a while ago in my opening uh, remarks uh, we wanted to find out if this is really an unforeseen event or 
merely a disaster uh, waiting to happen. Uh, importante ho na magtulungan tayo, nandito kami para tumulong. And uh, again, binanggit ko kanina, all the time na pinag-usapan ng budget ng DOTR, all the time na pinag-usapan ng CAAP, we've been very supportive. Itong Kongreso, itong Senado. Maraming salamat, uh, Mr. Chair, dear colleagues, thank you for your patience. Thank you. Thank you, our Majority Leader. Next uh, to ask questions is uh, our Deputy Minority Leader, Sen. Teresa Otiveras. Salamat, Mr. Chair, at magandang hapon po muli sa lahat. Um, balik ako, January 1. Uh, sinimula ng ipaliwanag ni Director General Tamayo sa tulong ni Engineer Balukatin at ni Ma'am Singson at ni Engineer Bage. So, subukan ko na lang Uh, Mr. Chair, i re ko yung mga tanong ko kasi yung iba ay lilinisin ko na lang yung mga follow-up questions ko dun sa mga naitanong na ng mga colleagues ko, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, I have a prior question on, uh, binagit kanina ni Chair uh, O na walang pera ang kaap, but I would like to inquire into that a bit more sa mga future hearings na maaaring itawo ng Chair kasi I have information na nung 2018 at 2019, yung mga taon bago ng pandemic, Record remittances daw ang kaapatang naiya sa gobyerno. So dapat may pera sa mga dapat nating ginagawa para iwasan na may mangyaring ganitong insidente ulit. And I have a prior question on uh, conflict of interest. Pero babalik ako dun sa original scene, yung pong single line diagram kung pwedeng makita po ulit. Kasi, well, uh, kasi po, Director General, most of the people in this room, kasama na po itong representation, don't have backgrounds in the technical aspects of air traffic control. But no una, nagmukhang yung mga statements na binigay sa media briefing noong January 1 ay hindi 100% consistent sa report submitted sa komite as of January 9. Medyo na ipaliwanag na iyon. Na no una, dun sa, sa online press conference, akala nyo cooling blower ng main uninterruptible power supply uh, ang nag-fail pagkatapos maglabas ng Uh, warning. Uh, tapos nung report nyo naman sa aming komite sa pamamagitan ng chair, uh, nakasulat doon na uh, the CAAPS uh, ATMS went down due to an electrical problem. Nung uh, uninterruptible power supply nag-shut down, yung second backup UPS also failed to operate. Pero upon confirmation, ang basa ko dito ay upon further investigation, it was discovered that the UPS de-energized the CNS ATM because it detected a flaw in said system at yung flaw ay faulty signal galing sa damage circuit breaker. Kaya isip ko tuloy kung original scene to, kung yung misteryosong damage circuit breaker yon yung mansanas or yung ahas. So ano ba talaga? Um, let me ask follow-up questions about that. Sino po yung nag-supply at nag-install niyang faulty circuit breaker? Kanina po kasi, Director General, sabi niyo, LSS Electrical ng Korea, pero may binanggit din ng Sumitomo na Fujihaya. It sounds like a Japanese uh, company. Alin po ba talaga ang source nung damaged circuit breaker na yan? Yung pang-apat, yung nakapula sa single line diagram. Chair. Maari, yes please, uh, Mr. Chair, si Engineer Balukati. Brother Chair, your honor. Uh, ang manufacturer po ay yung LS Electric na made in Korea. Okay, sorry, LS lang pala. Hindi LSS na, uh, ano nga ba yung LSS hindi, sa hindi musika? Pa. Last song syndrome. Ito, last breaker syndrome, Mr. Chair. So, LS Electrical. Electric, sorry, of Korea. Uh, andito po ba sila, Mr. Chair? Is LS Electric among our resource persons? Wala. Ang LS Electric din po ba ang nag-install nitong dami, uh, faulty circuit breaker. Brother Chair, uh, ang may kontrata po sa civil work ay ang Sumitomo po. Ang Sumitomo. Okay. Alright. So does uh, Attorney Lim, Mr. Chair of Sumitomo, confirm this? Um, that it is Sumitomo that has the contract for maintenance? For civil work. Civil work for sorry, for know. civil works. Yeah, through the Chair, up, Your Honor. Um, so... The installation of the uh, LVSG and the breakers are under Sumitomo. Right. Uh, the supplier for that one is Fujihaya. Uh, they supplied both the LVSG cabinet mm -hmm. where you install the breakers and the breakers, uh, the brand is L uh, LS. Uh, they also supplied this one. 
So um, there were two suppliers, Attorney Lim, not just LS Electric, but Fujihaya as well. It's it's uh, uh, Fujihaya is the one who's carrying the brand LS. All right. Yeah. So they, they supplied both the cabinets mm -hmm. for the switchgear and the uh, and the panel boards, as well as the breaker. Okay. Pero kung kunyari si singili ng kaap or si singili ng senado, sino nagsupply? nag-supply ng faulty circuit breaker, hindi pwedeng dalawang kumpanya. Was it's, it Fujihaya uh, or was it LS Electric? It's difficult to, to say that uh, uh, it's the responsibility of the supplier because these um, breakers have been installed since 2016 mm -hmm. and they have been operating smoothly for the past six, seven years. Um, if I may help, po, Your Honor, if you briefly, permit. please, because yeah. my time is running. Ah, sige, so, thank you, Attorney. Po, please do, please do. Be, uh, With respect what to you the share single line diagram now. earlier, just for the yes. please, uh, Honorable Villanueva din sana makaintindi. The way the UPS is designed is that although there are two of them, they communicate with each other. Mm. If it's a fault that is detected, which is what happened in this case, there was a breaker issue. So it's a fault detected to protect everything. They shut down. Mm -hmm. And they stop all the current flowing out, including current coming from the AVR. Mm -hmm. And this is why even uh, when, when the UPS detected the fault and shut down, it would not allow the AVR to supply power. Okay. Now, if the UPS has its own problem, internal problem, hindi ko kaya, kailang kutulong, okay? AVR will come in and kick in. I will supply power for you kasi may problema kay. Hindi naman line fault ang problem natin. If I supply power through you, nothing will happen to the equipment. Mm -hmm. But because it was a line fault, sabi ni UPS, pare, wag ka muna pumasok. Mm -hmm. If you do that, magka problema tayo. So, sa sinasabi niyo, Attorney Lim, tingin niyo ba hindi kompleto yung uh, diagnosis ng kaaps na nangyari? It, it, was it, the problem not only a faulty circuit breaker. May problema din ba yung UPS mismo? I think, I th I think it's more of explanation lang po of uh, how the design, uh, uh, the specification and design of the system is. Uh, one, yeah. Mr. Chair, I'm not even yet asking for the electrical plan na sinabi ni Engineer Aba, Bagin Aba. na baka hindi maibigay in open session. Actually, papunta ako doon, Mr. Chair, na baka para malang maitulong to get to the bottom of this big mystery about a small part, a circuit breaker, Baka pwede man lang pagtulungang i-reveal kahit in executive session o kahit ma-submit man lamang sa aming chair so that kami sa Senado, yes, we can be most useful in our findings and recommendations. Yes, uh, we have actually discussed this with uh, Yusek Bobby last night um, for uh, uh, to, to allow us to provide uh, uh, the diagrams if you need them for a better understanding. Yes, yes thank and, you, uh, Attorney uh, Lim. Yusek Bobby has kindly agreed this is attorney, oh, magkamag-anak magka po ba kayo? Hindi <laughs> naman. Salamat, uh, Yusek Lim, for, for enabling this uh, helpful partnership, no problem solving uh, between go our government and, and private sector. So the committee can count, Mr. Chair, on this uh, additional submission from Kaap with, with Sumitomo. Are we talking here, attorney Lim, about the elec actual electrical plan na binanggit ni Engineer Bage. Yes, pa. Thank you. Yes, pa. Uh, salamat, Mr. With Chair. With the indulgence yes, of uh, Senator Tiberos, <clears throat> I, uh, the Chair received the report that uh, the automatic voltage, AVR, the automatic voltage, voltage regulator uh, in the power plant of CAAP was, was damaged or was not working last August. Is this, uh, ano, totoo ba itong ano? Meron lang info. Uh, engineer, please answer. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, during that time, the EBR is uh, under maintenance. But like what the Director General uh, stated before, the EBR is used, is used only when the UPS is under maintenance, when the two UPS is under maintenance. Uh, the UPS perform the voltage regulation and this EBR is a mechanical, uh, me uh, mechanical wherein it will also perform uh, automatic, automatic voltage regulation, but not like the smart UPS. So, ayos na po yun? 
yung uh, AVR that was damaged uh, in August? Uh, we have we have already uh, uh, coordinated with the P, the supplier, and uh, right now they have assessed already. We cannot touch the uh, right now. We we avoid touching the system. For Ibig sabihin sa ngayon, as we speak, hindi pa siya na ayos. Yes, Your Honor, but we oh. bypass that, and the UPS is working. So even though the the ABR is not working. Uh, the UPS is now working. So, uh, uh, in my uh, yes, yes or no? Uh. Thank you, Senator Riza. Salamat, uh, Mr. Chair, Madam Senator Chair. Senator Riza, yes, before Ma you Madam continue, Chair. I was in the lounge attending to something quickly, and uh, I was half listening to the hearing. I I would just like to clarify that I did say CAAP has the income. In fact, yes, they do. The only reason why we gave them money. Uh, to the tune of about 1.4 billion in 2021 and 2.4 billion in 2022 and a little bit over 100 million in 2023 is because they depleted their savings uh, to give about 4 billion uh, in savings and 4 billion in dividends to the government because of the Bayanihan. But yearly, the average income of CAAP is between more than a billion and 2 billion pesos because of the services that they provide, uh, the landing, the takeoffs, all of that. And in fact, this year alone, as of September 2023, September 2022, last year, they were already at pre-pandemic levels when it comes to their income. So I, I studied this very well. So just a correction. I stand corrected at salamat para doon, Madam Chair. Uh, so... Well, sabi po ninyo, engineer Balukatin, the the AVR is tamas, the AVR is working. Or oh, sorry, the UPSs, the two UPSs are working. Sinasabi niyo po ba may problema sa AVR? Um, kasi babalikan ko yung sinasabi ni Attorney Lim. Pag natignan niyo na po, uh, Yusek Lim and uh, Attorney Lim make the submission to the chair nung um, actual electrical plan so, may makikita po ba tayong problema sa AVR? Yung pong uh, regulation function po ng AVR ay uh, hindi po nag-prepare po ngayon okay. kasi yung uh, isang isang party po ay sira. Kaya okay. po binaypas po namin yung AVR. Okay po. And uh, Attorney Lim, if if your if Sumitomo's own view about what happened ay nagko-concur dun sa sinasabi ni Engineer Balukaten, uh, lumalabas na yung dalawang APS na nagko-communicate sa isa't isa kahit humingi sila ng tulong sa AVR, hindi mabibigay ng AVR kasi yung AVR mismo ay may problema. Through the chair, tama po kayo, Your Honor. Alright, yeah. So the AVR has to be fixed as soon as possible. Okay po. So we will, the committee will really await uh, kaap sumitomo submission to the chair of the actual electrical plan and salamat kay engineer Bage for mentioning that term and allowing this representation to uh, ask about it. So, uh, engineer Balukatin, so what actually caused the fault in the circuit breaker? Yung faulty circuit breaker, saan nanggaling yung fault niya? Hindi ba yung ganitong equipment subject sa regular na inspection at maintenance? If you would like to add anything to the earlier discussion on the maintenance. On your honor, uh, sabi nga po, hindi pa namin ma-determine kung, okay. kung mayroong uh, nag-cost ng pagkasira ng circuit breaker or nasira yung circuit breaker mismo. Okay po, engineer. Although, talaga pong bagabat clay person ako sa usaping ito, medyo isa't kalahating linggo na eh. Dapat sana ay alam nyo na at nasasabi nyo sa komite at kung hindi nyo, hindi sinasabi ng kaap, magtataka kami. Bakit? Or kung hindi nyo pa alam, magtataka din po kami. Kasi, sino pang mas dapat nakaalam sa lab, la, loob na labing isang araw kundi po ang uh, ang kaap. Ito po siguro yung pinaka um, tingin ko importanteng tanong ko tungkol dyan sa yung tinatanong din ni Sen Lauren kanina, Sen Legarda. Um, hindi lang natigil sa faulty circuit breaker yung sira. Yung damage ba dun sa circuit breaker na yon nag din ng damage sa VSAT sa very small aperture terminal uh, na nag naman ng loss of comms. Sa araw na yun. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Adamits po yung BSAT po namin, BSAT equipment. Kaya po, noong pong 
uh, 1, 1.44 ng PM, mayroon na kaming communication using only the Tagaytay Base Facility kasi hindi po gumagamit po yung BSAT noon. Pero yung mga equipment na nandun sa malayong lugar like Lawag, Dabao, Mactan, gumagamit po ng BSAT yon Kaya po, uh, hindi po nagamit yon Nung 5, 5.45, five, past 5 po, mm -hmm. doon lang po naayos yung isang bisat at po, nagsimula na po yung uh, yung uh, yung pag pag pagsimula na po ng services ng air traffic service para sa operation po. Yung visa po yung nagpo-provide ng two-way communications sa mga satellites na ginagamit para mag-provide ng data necessary for air traffic control. Yung visa po ba yun, na yon na na-damage ng faulty circuit breaker noon, ay maayos na ngayon or kailangan pang i-repair or i-upgrade or palitan? Yung pong, ay dalawa pong bisat yon okay. na-restore na -restore po namin parihas, pero uh -huh. na-restore na namin yung dalawang bisat na po, uh -huh. pero tig-isa tig 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 po lang po yung uh, system niya. So uh, sa ngayon po, uh, pinahiram po kami ng CICC ng equipment Uh, Naka-install na po pero hindi pa po namin na uh, uh, ginamit Kay, kasi kailangan po namin itis muna at uh, kailangan po i-schedule po namin. Yung... Sabi niyo po, restored na yung dalawang visa pero tig-iisang system lang. Okay. Bakit? Ilang system po ba ang nasa bawat visa? Normally po redundant po sila uh -huh. kaya, kaya ano po, uh, mula pa. Iisa lang po yung ano. Dapat po ilan? Dapat po dalawa. Dalawa. So, hindi pa fully restored, partially restored ang dalawang visa? Yes, Your Honor. Tama po. Okay po. Uh, yung isa pa pong binanggit ni Engineer Bage, yung arcing, yun ba yung nangyari sa faulty uh, circuit breaker? Nung, nung, uh, Or, sorry sir, mali yata yung pagka-pick up ko sa sinabi ni Engineer Bage. Yun ba yung nangyari dun sa apat na magkakaibang kulay na input na dapat 220 volts lang pero paglabas nung dalawa yung isa at saka yung neutral na nasukat nyo na 380 pala. Arcing ba yung nangyari doon? Uh, is parang spark po yung na, rin, na mayroon pong spark at, at saka, saka may amoy ng sunog. May sunog. Kaya po namin pinatake agad yung system. So and then uh, pag, pagkapatay po ng system doon po kami nag troubleshoot kung ano po yung naging uh, bakit naging cause po nung spark na yun. Ano po? At, yes, sorry. At, uh, yung po, nakita po namin na yung pong isang pase ay nagiging 380. Briefly po, ano po ba yung arcing na sinasabi nyo hindi yon ang nangyari? Uh, spark, spark at saka parang... Sorry, uh, engineer bagay, arcing ba yung... Ah, pareho lang, arcing and spark. So, arcing po ang nangyari. Ah. Well, ayon at least po kay engineer bagay. Um, okay, and you... Uh, yung actual electoral plan, uh, electrical plan, uh, salamat, ibibigay na ng Kaap and Sumitomo sa komite through the chair. And lastly po dun sa mahiwagang faulty circuit breaker na yan. So, uh, it actually reminds me of yung unang paliwanag ng Kaap nung online press conference nyo, nyo nung January 1, yung tungkol sa fan. Kasi nung online press con, sabi po ng Kaap, Uh, may cooling blower ng main UPS na nag-fail. Pagkatapos itong blower, I suppose fan, parang arcing at spark, blower at fan, ay nagbigay ng warning. So, uh, sa, sa updated na pag-imbestiga nyo po, problema pa rin po yung uh, fan, tama po ba? Nag kasama po siya sa nag-fail? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Uh, ang, initial, ang initial report po nung naka-duty, may narinig po siyang pag-ugong po ng fan. Pag ano po? Yung pag-ingay ng fan. Pag-ingay ng fan. Okay. So, uh, kaya po, isa pong, nung namatay po yung output, nawal, namatay po, nawala po yung output ng UPS, isa po yun sa suspect po namin. Okay. But, uh, in, as we go on with uh, our ano, analysis, hindi po nagkaroon, hindi po, hindi po yun ang dahilan ng pag-shutdown. Mm -hmm. Ano po yung dahilan? Yun nga po, naka, nagkaroon ng signal sa UPS na mayroong flow doon sa, sa load circuit. 
Sige po, uh, Engineer Balukatin. Um, aabangan po namin yung ulat ng Kaap Sumitomo sa komite through our chair. At sana naman maulat nyo na di lang sa amin sa Senado, sa publiko, ano ba talaga yung buong nangyari bago pa ma-figure out namin sa Senate. Kayo naman po yung technical experts dyan, ang Kaap, hindi naman po uh, uh, kami. Um, in the course of operating, Uh, modern digital equipment log files are generated. Related din po sa isang tanong ni Sen. J. Viata po kanina na kung sino yung incident commander. Uh, in fact, many enterprise-grade UPS units ay capable sa automatically logging data at saka events. So, ma Madam Chair, respectfully requesting po uh, sa CAAP na i-provide nila sa ating komite yung relevant system log files. Para sa UPS, yung dalawang UPS, yung dalawang VSAT, yung CNS ATM, at ano pa mang ibang relevant systems. Maaari po ba yun, Madam Chair? Um, Atron Atron Chair? Uh, uh, or baka dapat itanong ko kay Director General, maaari po bang mahingi yung lahat ng mga um, uh, log, relevant system log files na iyon? Through the chair, we, we shall provide, ma'am, although we submitted some already. Ah. Kung ano man ang kulang, we will submit it. Salamat po. Well, uh, hindi ko alam kung, kung kulang o kompleto, pero yung sanang masagot ng mga log files na yon ay ano yung specific nature of the problem observed by CAA personnel, who were the personnel at the ATMC na unang nakaobserba sa problema, Anong specific equipment ang naapektuhan o na damage at anong remedial measures ang ginawa? Uh, 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 Madam Chair, kahit nga krimen or uh, military encounter, may may uh, log kaagad yun eh, no? incident uh, report na tinatawag. So, pati siguro sa ganitong uh, nationwide uh, na event. But, uh, salamat kay Director General sa commitment na ibigay yun sa komite through our chair. So, who were the vendors? Okay, napag- Uh, usapan rin. And again, uh, Madam Chair, I'd like to return to Sumitomo and maybe even Tales if the committee through our chair would request the assistance of the two uh, apart from the the ongoing and between negotiations, uh, we would really appreciate uh, your technical uh, views about the matter. And I, I thank the two representatives for um, seeming to assent by nodding their heads. Uh, Director General or uh, Engineer, uh, are manual operations or manual maintenance logs prepared vis-a-vis -vis yung UPS, VSAT, at saka CNS ATM? So bukod po dun sa system logs, may manual logs din po ba? Uh, me meron po, ma'am. So we po, will sir. provide that. And thank you. Uh, at may existing maintenance or service contracts ba na... Ah, okay, natanong na rin ito kanina. Covering the equipment and did these suppliers make any performance uh, guarantees? Lastly po, tungkol dun sa, um, sa it, well, the, the UPS in general, or, well, specific causes related to the incident. Uh, so the ANS is mandated to implement regulations, policies, at saka standard operational procedures. May manual po ba ng mga SOPs para implement in the event na may fault na mag-occur with respect sa CNS ATM or kahit alin sa mga components na to. May manual po ba? We, we have complete manual, sir. We have complete ma manual, sir. At yung mga procedures pa ni rehearse, may drills po? Uh, th there is a uh, usual schedule for that. Uh, I just don't remember how often. Baka pwede pong i-submit din po in writing sa komite through our chair yung schedule po ng mga drills or rehearsal ng mga uh, procedures uh, na iyon. We, we, we shall submit. Salamat po. Madam Chair, do I still have time or should I wait for the next round? Actually, is it okay if you uh, wait for the next round? Because Senator yes. Gachalian and then uh, Senator Tolentino just presented me with something quite uh, revealing. Okay. Thank you, so, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Lisa. I, Senator Gachalian. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, from the... Uh, uh, well, uh, let me just manifest uh, before or, or um, beforehand Um, I also filed Senate Resolution 421 on the same topic, so let me uh, let me just put that on record so it will be formed uh, part of this uh, discussion. Um, Madam Chair, uh, let me um, 
start with uh, my observations. In fact, um, uh, this is uh, quite a surprising event, especially happening on January 1, you know, the first day of the new year. And uh, my top of mind um, uh, um, reason or top of mind, uh, the first thing that came to my mind is uh, this might be a result of uh, cyber attacks. Because I read in many uh, articles that um, systems like this, no critical infrastructure like this, uh, are prone to cyber attacks. And uh, it's, it's actually a target of uh, uh, cyber terrorists. And um, very trivial equipment such as UPS can be a source of cyber attacks. No? Um, I read something in the internet that uh, a lot of the modern inter modern UPS are actually connected to the internet because of maintenance purposes and um, updating of software. And um, because of its uh, connection to the internet, um, th that can be a possible route for uh, cyber terrorists to, um, to uh, attack and to damage the system. But uh, I read in the uh, communication to our chair from uh, Director General Tamayo that uh, uh, the Cyber Crime Investigation and Coordinating Center ruled this out already. No? And I want to get some details on that no? because in, in the letter it's only one uh, paragraph. So may, may I direct my question to the Cyber Crime Investigation and Coordinating Center on why they already ruled out uh, that this is a this can be a result of a cyber attack. Good afternoon. I think it's you, Sec uh, Ramos. Yes, sir. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Uh, I'd like to correct the uh, report. Uh, when CICC was called upon to uh, to the joint uh, conference different agencies to to look into the matter uh, we were tasked to help out the priority was the restoration of the system so uh, we conducted an initial investigation and uh, saw all of this equipment that were involved or maybe the source of the blackout it so happens the UPS system is an offline of grid uh, equipment so uh, that's out of the question. But the priority that was given to us is to help CAAP restore its system to normalcy. That's why we brought in equipment and manpower uh, on orders of the DICT secretary. You see, um, CICC has several engineers, certified engineers, that are working for investigation purposes. So we fielded them to support CAAP to restore their system and secure it. Did you conduct any investigation whether this is uh, this can be um, uh, uh, what happened can be a uh, possibility of a cyber attack? The uh, equipment that were the priority of our targets of investigation were offline and off grid. So we have not gone beyond that uh, restoration process. If there was an, uh, a cyber attack, we have not reached that level of communication within the um, CAP system. So in other words, there was no investigation yet, or formal uh, investigation yet, on this incident particularly? Not on the network side. Okay. But because the UPS is offline, uh, the report stated here, the result indicates that the incident is unlikely due to a cyber attack. But this is not conclusive. That is not words. conclusive, sir. So are you in the process of uh, investigating this? The uh, Cybersecurity Bureau was the equipment, a, a small equipment that the, that the ICT has, that was uh, scheduled to do a scan of the CAP system. You see, CICC doesn't have that equipment. Uh, after all our budget were cut. 
So in, in other words, even though you conduct an investigation, you cannot come up with a concrete conclusion because of the lack of equipment. Is that what you're saying? Lack of tools and equipment. Lack of tools and equipment. And uh, can you uh, can you at least give us some level of confidence? Uh, let's focus first on this incident. Uh, can you just at least give us some level of confidence whether this uh, incident is uh, from a cyber attack or not? As I've mentioned, we haven't reached that level due to lack of tools because... Uh, the focus of our assignment here is help in the restoration only. But may I suggest to uh, DG Tamayo to already initiate because uh, your report is quite misleading. If um, the CICC is saying that it's inconclusive, then um, this report is quite misleading because it, in the report, uh, it's stated that a cyber attack is unlikely. But there's no formal investigation. Uh, of course, notwithstanding the equipment issue, no? but there's no formal investigation uh, that was conducted uh, to determine whether this is from a cyber attack or not. No? Tinignan lang nila UPS, hindi na connect sa internet, therefore it's not cyber attack. But that's not a formal investigation. So, uh, uh, Mayo, I suggest that you already initiate a a, um, uh, a formal investigation uh, on the cyber attack uh, possibility. Senator Gachalian, just an interjection. Um, since you mentioned, uh, the CICC mentioned that they, do, they lack the tools and the equipment to be able to decipher and really in, look into it and find out what really happened, what equipment do you need? Do you know exactly what you need to be able to do a forensic test on this? And how much is it? Uh, right now, I, I can't see the cost. But definitely, we need additional forensic equipment. Like what? Uh, such as uh, looking into the, uh, the remote access to VSATs, remote access to uh, to UPS systems. So, meron ganon, meron ganon. There are. There are. Yes. Um, Maybe we, we have here also uh, Ms. Uh, Director Carlos I, who can uh, talk as a national security advisor. Ma'am, uh, during your meetings with the President, siguro pwedeng sabihin ito, no? Yung ating CICC, kulang na kulang ng equipment. Uh, just to, I, I know you've been waiting there for a long time, ma'am. So let me give you an opportunity now to weigh in on, on the topic, even if you're not asked directly yet. Yes, thank you very much, Madam Chair. First of all, uh, let me explain that the philosophical undergirding of everything that we're discussing right now is the one Philippine green sky. One Philippine green sky. We added the green uh, modifier because of our commitments to Paris 2015 and COP26 and COP27. It means that safety and security are indivisible. Di mo pwedeng paghiwalayan yung safety and security. That's the reason why I, as the National Security Advisor and National Security Council, are really quite concerned about uh, this happening because it has tremendous and very serious national security uh, implications. Uh, for one, that has been noted already around the table and by the uh, uh, many uh, senators uh, here, it affects uh, the, you know, we're selling the country as a tourist spot. My uh, colleague here uh, who we just left, uh, Christina, we are, uh, you know, when you listen to her report in the recent cabinet, sobra talaga ambition natin sa turismo. Tapos pag may ganito, talagang lubak na malaki eh. So, uh, bakit siya national security threat? Kasi meron siyang kadugtong sa employment. Meron siyang kadugtong sa, ano, sa confidence ng tao, hindi lang employment, investment. Kahit ikaw, ano, local investor, foreign investor, magdadalawa tatlong isip ka. Mag-invest ba ako dito na napaparalyze itong, ano, itong uh, civil aviation? Doon sa briefing, uh, Madam Chair and uh, the Honorable Senators uh, sa CAAP, which uh, we immediately attended together with my colleague here, um, uh, DG uh, Rick De Leon, sa, uh, sa NICA, uh, lumabas talaga na, ay mo ba tinanong ko si uh, OIC Secretary Faustino, uh, bakit hindi natulungan ng civil aviation? Uh, alam ko ang military kasi, because I also came from the military when, uh, 12 years ago at the National Defense College. Ang sabi niya, Madam Chair, walang MOU. 
pwede silang tumulong pero walang regulator uh, walang legal framework for the for the military na dapat isipin natin ito at sinabi ko na rin yan kay uh, Secretary Faustino noon na isipin natin talaga na i-push natin yan from even a national security perspective na pag na-compromise ang civil aviation gusto ko mag-kick in yung military Parang, uh, ma'am, correct me if I'm wrong, pero parang this is an ongoing study that there should be uh, co-equal monitoring for our airspace, both in the yeah. defense and the commercial. Yeah. There was supposed to have been a merging of that, like one sky policy, something, yeah. pero hindi pa nangyayari. I think that was like the third phase of the, what Talis was trying to do. But anyway, uh, go ahead. Yeah, but... um. You know, siguro para sa information ng mga hindi nakakaalam, uh, kami po ay naging consultant ni General Hatchkiss for three years. As a matter of fact, uh, siguro bibigyan ko kayo, Madam Chair, ng napakakapal na aming strategic planning for 30 years, kung saan itong mga, that time nyo, 2013 and 2010, ilang taon na ba yun? Parang 12 years, di ba? Kita nyo yung report namin, nandyan itong nangyayari ngayon. <laughs> Nandun din. It's a composite of people, uh, bureaucracy, equipment. Yan tatlong composite na yan. These are the variables that are leading to the things that we're discussing right now. And if we do not address them, we are really in deep trouble. No? So I, as the National Security Advisor, I would like the Senate to please pay particular attention to this national security concern. Napaka-serious po nito, hindi lang sa commerce natin, sa trade, no? Napaka-serious sa human lives. No? So, uh, siguro, finally, um, Tati-rate, siguro dyan ang Huskies, eh, itong pag-usapan mo kasi mas may alam ka dito, yung air defense system natin ay should be crusaded with our civilian air defense, air space management system. Dapat ginaganchilyo mo yung dalawa na yan, hindi siya, hindi siya dalawang, ano, uh, uh, ano pang link to, St uh, stand alone. And I guess, um, that is a general um, deficit of our bureaucracy where not only you have overlaps, duplications, you have frontier lines of authority. And kitang-kita mo yan dito eh. And by the way, let me follow through. Wala na yung ano ko, friend ko si Secretary Tugade. We were also his consultant for four years because we did their transport uh, roadmap uh, up to 2050. Nako, paano ang ka regulatory tapos operator ka? Alam mo, pag regulator ka, you cannot uh, regulate yourself. So, siguro tignan natin, uh, I'm sure my uh, uh, colleague, uh, Secretary Jimmy, na-raise ko na yun sa cabinet, you cannot be regulating and you cannot be operating. Magbubungkuan yan eh, niregulate mo sarili mo, di ba? Yun, yun din ang point namin, kaya we were pushing for the National Transport Safety Board eh. Kasi kung may kasalanan, let's say, yung nag-issue ng lisensya sa isang franchise ng bus, eh bakit iimbestiga ng LTFRB yung sarili nila? By the way, uh, Madam Chair, because I wrote a book on bureaucratic reform, siguro alam mo niya nung previous ano mo ako, naging guest mo ako, kitang-kita to, sana napakaraming ayan siya. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, ma'am. Um, Senator Gachalian, you still have a few minutes left. I just want to ask uh, if it's okay lang. Kasi connected to eh, and I invited, I, I also asked him to delay his flight, uh, General Hotchkiss, the former director of the CAP is here. Sir, can I hear your uh, opinions on what's happening now? Suggestions, weighing in on the issue? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I'd like to start uh, within the context of 9497 itself, the CAP law. And the timeline in 2008, uh, when the CAAP law was enacted, uh, the CAAP law was enacted to comply with international civil aviation organization standards of safety within the flight information region that was given to the Philippines to manage and administer so that all flights going through that flight information region will be safe and secure. That, in essence, is our obligation to the international community through the ICAO. So the ICAO is the one that does the audit of all states to see 
the International Civil Aviation Organization. That's, <laughs> we are an original signatory to that in 1944, even before the end of the Second World War, for the simple reason that the sky, uh, the airspace above us, was the point of issue. So that as early as that, the skies of the globe were already sliced, and we were given part of the biggest slice of all. Of course, America extended all the way to the Pacific, the US. But it's the Filipinas, because of our archipelagic uh, nature, uh, we were given that big space. And the source of income of Kaab. The main source of income of CAAP is from the overflight fees of all airlines, all airplanes that fly through that flight information region. And that is the biggest, uh, I'm sure CAAP would can tell you later how much is that. And that is why the ICAO also requires that the Civil Aviation Authority of a state must have fiscal autonomy because those fees are not taxes coming from the citizens of that republic. They are fees, uh, user-based fees. You use the airspace, metro per kilometer, uh, every time somebody files a flight plan from Europe, flies to the Philippines, but the obligation that we have is that we should provide communication, navigation, surveillance, air traffic management, CNSADM. Before 2008, we had the Eurocat system using only three radars. So, uh, and coverage not in a, we could not control. In other words, we could not manage the airspace that we had that was given to us at the time. So, kahit na nung nung pa sa Air Force, I became commanding general in 1996 to 1999. Matagal na pinag-uusapan namin both to the Air Force and the ATO pa noon. Ano? ATO pa. And by the way, ATO as a civil aviation authority is not acceptable internationally. Uh, so before 2008, ATO was just an office of the DOTC. So itong CNS ATM na ito, and I conceptualized 2000, even late. Uh, late 90s, late 90s, and then made you na punta sa planning board na talaga, 2000, 2000, you know? and then uh, na, na, na finalized na talaga 2010. Um, okay, so <laughs> na kwan ako sa timeline, you know? uh, 2008, yung kaablo. So, by 2008, we were in the blacklist of Europe. Our airplanes could not fly to Europe. They were blacklisted because our airspace was unsafe. We had unsafe skies. The U.S. categorized us as category two which is the lowest level of safety category. Uh, ICAO had a lot of significant safety concerns. One of them was the organization, but they, I'll not go into that anymore. I'll go to the CNS ATM project. Um, so uh, before 2008, the procurement agency of any mission critical equipment of the CAAP the ATO of the Philippines, for that matter, was the OTC. There's no question about that. Uh, 
So all the way from 2008, 2010, all the way to 2017, when the CNS ATM was turned over to CAP, I was no longer there. I, I got off 2016, uh, but uh, I'll tell you my role uh, later. By 20, how is it? 2017, it was t the operations and maintenance of the CNS ATM project was turned over to the CAP, as mentioned by Secret a former secretary to Gandhi. But it must be remembered that even if he said that it was turned over to uh, the DG at the time, uh, who's the DG at the time? Uh, Sidionko, Sidionko. Uh, it must be remembered that the chairman of the CAAP board is the secretary of the DOTC. And so therefore, uh, <laughs> So, some batalgang responsibility, accountability for the project. Who is accountable for the project? Uh, and budget before was the DOTC through the national, well, through, through the Congress. But when I was DG, I always fell back on the fiscal autonomy provision of the law, which was very simple, you know. All the fees of CAAP must be used for CAAP operations, especially uh, the buying of equip equipment to make sure that the skies are safe for everybody, not just for Filipinos, but for everybody uh, who wants to fly to the Philippines, so tourism, etc. Everything is uh, 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 affected. Everything will be affected. So there, from the point of view of governance, therefore, uh, the law must be very clear on the delineation between the OTC and CAP. Well, there is a clear provision there which says that CAP, actually, if you look at the law, man, uh, the director general of CAP is the vice chairman of the board of CAP, and he, he is at the same level as the secretary. Actually, he's the CEO of CAP. He has a lot of things to do, really. You know, so uh, when we came in in 2012, I came in 2012, the CNSATM project was disallowed by COA in 2011, or a year before. I was not yet there. Bakit din disallowed? They're pushing for a check system, right? Well, uh, yes. there were many reasons. Essentially, it was because meron ang binili ang DOTC na MACC. Yun nga, Manila, eh. ito uh, may study since the year 2000. Mm, but that was sidelined uh, in favor of this Czech company, yes. right? And supposed what is, to, no, supposed what's to happening an upgrade na, of the old Eurocat system. So nasaan na yung, ano na yun, yung system na yun? Nakatenga na. Yung, uh, yung our ano, technical yung people, Mr. Balukatim. Yung MACC, and, where is it now? I think it's, I don't know, ma'am. It's still there, Maybe. probably. So, that was a waste of money, you would it say? It was a waste of money because we, we found it to be useless. So, who decided to do that, the OTC at that time? The OTC, yes. And they were able to do it rather quickly, huh? Which one, ma'am? I mean, they were able to just decide unilaterally, let's get this MACC system yes. by passing uh, something that has been okay. studied since 2000. Yes. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, anyway. um, sir, I, I think in the interest of time, let me ask you this. You raised an important point that the income of CAAP should be used by CAAP for capital outlay, for improvements, yeah. for salaries, oh. etc. How much is CAAP earning? And I mean, how much is CAAP remitting to the national government? Nung panahon ko po, wala, ni isang sente mo. I insisted on that. Okay. Because that is in the fiscal autonomy provision of the law. Okay, how about now? Uh, Mr. Tamayo. Uh, from, uh, from 2012 and then 2016, 2017 up to present, uh, we remitted 22.4 billion. Why is it 
that during your time, we are allowing that to happen. Whereas in the time of uh, General Hotchkiss, hindi naman tayo kumukuha ng pera sa kaap. Kasi imbis na national government pa yung magbayad ng improvements, no. dapat dun sa revolving fund na ninyo, di ba? General Hotchkiss. Yes, ma'am. Not to be... Well, I'm proud of the fact that it was because of our existence, uh, insistence on the fiscal autonomy provision that we were able to convince EU, the EU Safety Commission, that indeed we have an, we have an independent CAAP, an independent CAAP who, who is uh, really responsible for the airspace uh, management. Uh, Amy, Amy, when I made my presentation, I just said, we're going to improve the safety conditions of 41 airports that Kaab manages at the time. Uh, we will buy uh, international standard uh, fire crash equipment because we have the budget for it. And I was sure that I had the budget for it. And the EU Safety Commission was impressed because of but because of that, because of that, we were taken off the blacklist. Yes, and actually, thank you, sir, for your foresight and your service. So at the time, you were already against the MACC. Which one, no? That you were already against the Manila Area Control Center by the checks, right? Yes. You expressed. Not, it's not being a guest, but we made a judgment that it could not be used. It was unsafe to use because... Uh, you look at the airplanes that are there, they are not in the actual coordinates. In other words, it paints a false picture of the sky. So who decided that? Which one? Who decided to approve that? That was during the time of uh, uh, President GMA, I think, Leandro Mendoza. The Secretary, the Secretary of the OTC, he, uh, the late Leandro Mendoza. So that was during the time of GMA, the 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 MACC, 2012. MACC, matagal na huyon, 2000, 2008, 2010. Ah, okay. So 2008. Okay. All right. Uh, oh. Okay. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm sorry to have the. Uh, Senator Gachalian, you may continue with your question. <laughs> Sorry, yes. sir. Thank Go you, uh, Madam Chair. But I think that was quite enlightening. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, good history. Definitely. Thank you, General Hotchkiss. Thank you, Madam Chair. So, yeah. uh, Madam Chair, going back to the cybersecurity topic, uh, again, uh, to you, Sec Ramos, can we categorically say that this incident is not due to cyber, cyber attacks? Is that, is that conclusive? No, it's not. So, it's not conclusive. So, it, there's still a possibility that this, what happened, in January 1, uh, can be due to cyber attacks? Uh, there may be, but uh, we need to conduct the assessment. Yeah. Uh, Even though you mentioned that the UPS is offline and off-grid, there's still a possibility that this is due to cyber attacks? Uh, because our findings are, are quite different from their findings. And, uh, so like what are to, your findings? Can you like to discuss this in an executive session? Okay, so we'll request the uh, chair, the chairman uh, later on for an executive session. M maybe not today, but uh, on a later date. And uh, because that's a um, moving forward, what, what we're after here is to prevent uh, all types of uh, um, disruptions to our air traffic. And I think uh, what is most talked about now you know, is cyber attacks from different uh, uh, cyber terrorists uh, out there. No? So we're not only focused on the electrical items, but on a bigger point of view, and this, is, this question is directed to Secretary Carlos, have we conducted a vulnerability and penetration test of the CNS system? Because this is also very important. No? And uh, outside of the UPS, outside of the circuit breaker issue, have we conducted a vulnerability test uh, on the entire uh, operations of CAAP? Because I'm not a technical person, uh, Your Honor, um, I'm really leaning on the CICC to make this kind of determination. 
but I'm looking at the vulnerability in terms of the critical infrastructure uh, status of the of the uh, For example, during the briefing, they said that they need the backup system, but it cannot be in the same building. In fact, they were talking of Clark. So they, you will have to support them to really have another separate building for a backup. Hindi pwedeng sa parehong building yung kanilang backup. Okay, the other part is that uh, together with my colleague here, uh, Rick De Leon, we said uh, those the people who are, uh, uh, you know, manning equipment for navigation, etc. you know, to, to give the signal to the pilot to come in and to fly in, to go out and fly in, should have security clearances. No? Na, aming binibigay din sa National Security Council. So, uh, we already uh, informed uh, Secretary Bautista about this need, uh, particularly because there is um, a very quick turnover of people mainly because of what already the Madam Chair noted, yung ang taas, na, ang laki ng gap ng salary na nila, yung air traffic controller minsan, on the average, during the time you were consultants there, parang dalawang taon lang sila. Pag nakuha na nila yung expertise, alis na agad sila, no? And usually pumupunta sila sa Singapore. So, siguro another one that I, I miss out is, sana alisin natin yung ka-up dun sa salary grade, ano ba yun, yung parang framework. Iba, eh, very skilled kasi yan eh. Alisin natin sila dyan. Kung hindi talagang yung tao nila will seek uh, better, better paying venues. Uh. Uh, with, in, with the uh, indulgence of Senator Gachalian, going to the yung sa concern of national security, ma'am, from what I know, kaya nga po yung CNS, it's uh, communication, navigation, and surveillance. And uh, all the aircraft, siguro si Captain Tamayo and the, uh, if any Air Force officials are here, can uh, um, can uh, shed light no yung philip yung uh, there's what we call as a philippine air defense identification zone yung pad adis na tinatawag wherein uh dcns also provides information on whatever aircraft goes in our aerospace no meron siyang identification so pag pumasok po yan doon sa adis uh, pag dumapos yun sa adis sa zone ng adis dapat po lahat ng identi identification will uh, to the transponder will be known. Pag pumasok po doon ang hindi po identified, that's already an uh, unidentified aircraft. And I think it the Air Force will be notified and they will already prepare their interceptors. Tama ho ba? So, it, the whole time, ang tanong ko lang po, uh, with Intelligence Center Gachalian, that the whole time that the CNS was down, does it mean also that uh, even our air defense system was down. Kumbaga, we were blinded in those hours that the CNS was not working. Tama ho ba, uh, Captain Tamayo? Uh, as far as uh, CAP is concerned, Your Honor, uh, our monitoring of the Philippine Air Defense Identification Zone, when our system was down, was definitely down. But uh, uh, what, what I know, is this is supposed to be a function of the Air Force. So at present, uh, we provided facilities for them at the ATMC. Mer na ho silang present sa amin ngayon eh. They have a room there to be able to monitor as well. So is the, uh, is the Air Force uh, merong representative sa ano? Mer merong pang nagmo-monitor sa ating ADI, sa ating uh, uh, CNS? Meron ho. They, they are with us. Whatever. So siguro, uh, no, no? kasi may tinatawag dyan na si Edgar Gacharyan, yung IFF na kung sino mang aircraft pumasok dyan, it has to be identified. Either, kaya IFF yan, identify as friend or foe. Tama ba? Hindi BFF, IFF, either that, friend or foe yun. That, that, that's correct, sir. So, the, the Air Force is always also on standby. Nandun po sila to monitor sa CNS on whatever or all aircraft that enter our aerospace. So that in case there are intrusions of unidentified aircraft they should already mo, um, notify our um, yung sa basa airbase, yung atin pong uh, ano wing ba yun. Pero those are our interceptors, tama po ba? That's, that's correct, sir. So, so they have a presence with us, 24 /7. So that's ano ko lang, Senator Gatchalian, that's my ano, no, that the, old, the whole time that our CNS was down, our national defense um, uh, cover also, yung uh, security was also down. We were blinded during those times. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Gichayan. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Chair, going, uh, again, I'll, I'll go back to the cybersecurity issue. 
Um, and uh, again, direct my question to uh, Undersecretary Ramos. Have you conducted a vulnerability test on uh, the CAAP system? Lahat po, no? the CNS, the uh, uh, ATM, and whatever system do they have. Have we conducted a vulnerability test whether they are vulnerable to cyber attacks? Not yet, but uh, as of three days ago, uh, there was a, uh, there's a task force that was created to conduct this. The Cybersecurity Bureau of our uh, DICT will be conducting it. But to date, we have, the, we have not conducted any vulnerability test. Is that correct? Uh, can, I, can we ask the director of the Cybersecurity Bureau? Yeah, go ahead. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Director Marivy Castro from the DICT. Um, actually, since the start of the incident last January 1, we are already in touch with, actually it's January 2, we're already in touch with the Department of Transportation and the CAAP because of this incident and our investigation on the forensic side of that uh, cyber attack, if there is really, is currently ongoing, sir. So we already started that as early as last week or uh, immediately a day after it happened. However, because um, it's after the fact, so that's why it's taking some time because uh, it's a forensic investigation already. On the entire CAAP system, to include the uh, CNS, the ATN, have we conducted a vulnerability test uh, on those systems? No, not yet, sir. We were not part since it was established. And do you see the need to conduct a vulnerability test on those systems? Well, of course we can if we're uh, requested. But do you see the need uh, 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 to conduct a vulnerability test in the name of national security? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, so because we haven't conducted anything, then therefore we're vulnerable. Because we don't know it. Well, uh, as I've been saying, uh, unless there is data, we cannot say that we are we are being at, at, attacked in the cyber. No, realm but just to not. make sure that we are vulnerable or not, have we have we done that? Yes, sir. Um, there, it's not only the VAPT that you're calling, yeah. but you know, other some other some kind of tools that we can use to determine if there are vulnerabilities in the system. Uh -oh. And we have conducted that uh, on uh, the system. We we are starting to do that. We are, it's starting pa lang, but in the past we haven't. No, not yet. Okay. And, this is um, the first time that yeah, you were DG, involved. I think Yusek Lim is, was raising his hands earlier uh, on this topic. Like, no, I was. I just wanted to advise the committee that there is already an interagency committee, the one referred to by uh, Yusek Ramos and uh, Yusek from the di director from the ICT. It's an interagency committee that is doing the investigation regarding the, the causes of this episode. We have, of course, NICA also and the NBI on board this interagency committee. My, my point there is, um, well, number one, um, it seems to me that we cannot rule out cyber attacks as a cause of this uh, disruption. Yes, and that was a statement of Yusek Ramos earlier. We, we agree with you, Senator. Yeah, because in the report, it, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's written there, unlikely. You know? But uh, it give, gave me the impression that it's already out of the table. But right now, and because of the request for an executive session, it seems to me a, um, uh, an ur a, a, a possibility and an urgency that uh, this should be looked at because of the possibility of a cyber attack. You know? So... And second, uh, from what I hear, we haven't conducted a vulnerability test on the, the CAAP system. You know? And uh, that leaves us very open you know, to any form of cyber attack. And th that seems to be the mode of, uh, of, of um, infringing on sovereignty by uh, external actors. So um, I would suggest to CAAP uh, to take this very seriously. No? And uh, Digita Mayo, that uh, we cannot just look at the traditional circuit breakers, but uh, we're, we're very open and we're very vulnerable no? to um, 
cyber terrorists and I suggest to Kaap to ready commence the vulnerability test. Again, notwithstanding the equipment that uh, the ICT requires. No? And you have our support in terms of uh, uh, giving you those systems. No? Um, you, uh, Digi Tamayo, you want to um, respond we, to that? We, we shall do it, sir. Uh, the, uh, as you said, it's uh, quite in, very important nowadays, especially with the news of what's happening in the other countries with similar systems. Uh, I know I'm not supposed to refer the U.S. had issues. That was yesterday. And then Canada had issues as well. And then there was another one during New Year, almost the same time as us, that had issues on their air traffic management uh, system. Uh, and it seems most of these are computer related or IT related. So the, definitely we, we will look into it because of you know, the threats that we have been uh, getting worldwide. Because we're offline or not connected, uh, bugs or, or, or malware cannot be uh, planted in your system. And that, that creates uh, a, a huge uh, opportunity for uh, cyber terrorists to, um, to to create disruption. So I, I uh, want to suggest that to Kaap. On a separate note, Madam Chair, and this is my last before the second round, uh, I understand that Kaap is in charge of the uh, IKO safety audit. Is that is that correct, Paul? No, that, that's correct, sir. And uh, following through with what uh, General Hotchkiss mentioned earlier, uh, the last audit uh, that was conducted was last year. Is that correct? Mo? Uh, if I may, sir. Yes, the, go ahead. The, the last on-site audit conducted by, uh, by the IKO on Kaap was in 2017. And quite recently, uh, as in the last quarter, uh, we agreed. And in fact, it was we volunteered for an off-site audit and this was appreciated by the IKO. It, took, uh, it was a positive move as far as we were concerned. So uh, it's ongoing and we are working on this continuously, continuously. And uh, we are expecting an on-site audit sometime this year. So th that is what we are But there were results in 2022, Tama Puba. That's right, sir. And uh, there are eight items on the audit. Uh, legislation we passed uh, with an 83% mark. Uh, organization, uh, 75. Licensing, 84. Operations, 84. Airworthiness, 90. Uh, accident investigation, 67. All of those six items were above global average. However, when it comes to air navigation services, 45, and the global average is 65. And when it comes to aerodromes, uh, the Philippine score is 45, and the global average is about 62. Uh, parang hindi ho coincidental that we failed uh, in the air navigation services, and we're here right now talking about air navigation issues. Um, uh, DJ, can you talk about, uh, can you explain to us why we failed the score on air navigation services under the IKO uh, audit results last uh, 2022? Uh, can, can I refer uh, to uh, Deputy Director General Dan, Dan Lucas? Thank you, Paul. And uh, just to put on record, air navigation services includes uh, air traffic management, communications, navigation, and surveillance systems, uh, services for air navigation, search and rescue, basically everything that we're talking about today. So I don't think it's a coincidence that we're here and we failed also the score for air navigation services. Uh, can you explain to us why we failed? And can you also give us some suggestion on how we can improve on our scores? As far as the overall audit, sir, is concerned, uh, 
it is reckoned based on the average of the eight critical elements as what you mentioned. So indeed, uh, we were scoring low on two items, but most of these are related to the current setup of CAAP. Uh, for AGA, that's aerodromes and ground control, it's a separation between the regular, regulatory oversight and the service provisions in aerodrome. So, you know, the one we were talking about, there should be, CAAP should be a regulator, not an operator. So that's one of the main issues. And then... So it's uh, good that we heard this for the record, that the Director General of CAAP agrees Yes. That they should only be the regulator, not the operator. And yeah. we, I have, I did file a bill on that. It's now under the committee and the GOCCs, chaired by Senator um, Pia Alan Cayetano. So hopefully that will be prioritized soon. Thank you. Thank you, Ma'am. I think we should uh, yeah. wrap up. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. And just uh, again, uh, let's focus on the air navigation services, uh, DG. How come we failed on that? And what are the items that we failed on? And of course, we want to improve. How can we improve? Uh, may, may, may I give you uh, the DG, Lucas? Yes, go ahead. He's a lawyer. The DG. Is this connected to what we are hearing right now? What we are talking about? I'm sure. Parang hindi siya kasi. It's, 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 uh, I don't think it's a coincidence that bagsak tayo dito and then we're here talking about uh, all of these things. Magandang, magandang hapon po, Your Honor, and through the Chair. Uh, first, the reason why we received 45%, because the schedule, Your Honors, for the validation of the Air Navigation Service is uh, scheduled on 2024. So, hindi po siya sinama sa computation at this point. That is why we received 69% global average, that is, uh, sorry, we received 69%, that is 2% higher than the global average of 67%. But we already received information that possible uh, items that they will be validating are somehow related to regulatory uh, functions of the CAAP. We received four items that we're supposed to be uh, working on to validate and increase the rating of the CAAP insofar as air navigation service is concerned. If I may read, Your Honors and Madam Chair, <coughs> excuse me. First item is the insufficient number of technical personnel in the areas of ANS. So, yun po yung isang item na titignan nila. Pangalawa po, ganun pa rin po yung sinabi nila that there should be a separation between regulatory oversight and the service provision of the ANS, which Again, Your Honor, for the record, the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines supports the efforts to separate regulation and the operational duty of the CAAP at this point. Because ever since we believe, Your Honor, the CAAP as an organization, that it should be a, uh, a purely regulatory body to ensure that safety is not compromised, especially in cases of investigations. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you, uh, DG, uh, Assistant D Deputy DG. Um, just submit to us no, the details of those. Again, no, we passed the, out of the eight items, we passed the six and failed the two. Uh, but the two, uh, especially the air navigation services, is what we are discussing right now. No? And um, submit to us uh, that report and also su your suggestions on how to improve our scores in that uh, light. Because um, definitely uh, after this, we want to improve ourselves and prevent all of these things from happening. And one of the things that we can do is pass the audit because the audit uh, assures the public that uh, we are uh, of international standards. So just submit to us and um, uh, it's important for us to understand how we can uh, support your agency to pass this uh, audit. Marami salamat po, Your Honor. But again, for the record, we just want to reiterate that the Philippines as, an, as a government, as a state, passed the safety audit of the International Civil Aviation uh, Organization. We just need to improve further, but again, we want to reiterate to the Filipino people and to this August body that uh, the Philippines 
pass the safety audit as a matter of fact from the last on-site audit of 67 percent we uh, increased to 2%. But we do understand the concern that insofar as the Air Navigation Service is concerned, uh, 45 pa lang po tayo. And yung mga nabanggit po namin kanina, those items are still up for validation. So when they validate it, we will get the final uh, grade that we will have for ANS. But we do appreciate the support given by uh, Senator Villanueva and to the Chair. Maraming salamat po. We will Gatsalian submit po, a Gatsalian. Po. Senator Gatsalian. Senator Gatsalian. Senator Your Honor. <laughs> Pero hindi, hindi ka nag-iisa nun. Buong Pilipinas, ganyan ang, uh, ganyan ang confusion nila. For the record, pasensya na po. Pareho po kasi kayong guwapo. Uh, <laughs> but we will submit, uh, Madam Chair. Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagkakataon. What is your name again and your delegation? Uh, ako po yung binabanggit Des ni Secretary Tugade kanina. Dan Jun Lucas po from Deputy Director General for Administration. Salamat okay. po, ma'am. Um, Mr. Lucas, Yung evaluation na yun, kailan yun ginawa na binigyan kayo ng grade na 59%? Kailan yun? Ah, yung 69 po, that was ano po, last quarter of 2022. Last ah, year 69%? 69%. Okay, the, the global average is what? 67%. 67. So you're just 2% ahead, ha? Although, yeah, it's quite an achievement, but because of what happened here now, they will be more critical, ha? Kung mas bubusisiin nila dahil sa nangyari ngayon. Just as an advance uh, reminder. Okay, I, you know, uh, we're really running out of time, and I think this is dragged on for a while, but Senator Tolentino is next. And then, can we reserve our, our unless you think it's really pressing, can we reserve our next round for another day? Okay, thank you. Um, Senator Tolentino, you are recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, this, this will not really be inquisitorial. I, I, will have, I will have some friendly suggestions to our good friend, Secretary Bautista, as well as the DOTR family. Mention was made a while ago of the IACIA, ICAAO. ICAO. ICAO. And you're probably referring, referring when you mentioned that uh, organization to the Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation, if I'm not mistaken. Three questions. The, Mr. Lucas was here. He mentioned something about 69%, 69% average garnered by CAAP. Napatingin tuloy ako, Madam Chair, sa 69. Alam niyo po yung Article 69 ng uh, Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation is very revealing. Alam niyo po yung nakalagay doon sa Article 69, and I'd like to quote this, Improvement of Air Navigation Facilities. That's Article 69 of the Chicago Convention. Nakalagay po dito, if the Council, I'm referring to the Chicago Council, ICAO Council, is of the opinion that the airports or other air navigation facilities, including radio and meteorological services of a contracting state, that refers to the Philippines, are not reasonably adequate for the safe, regular, efficient, and economical operation of international services present or contemplated, the Council should consult with the Philippines. Tama po yan, di ba? Iko-consult kayo pagkatapos ng audit. Subalit sa succeeding sec article, Article 70, you can, re you can ask your lawyers to refer to this. Financing of air navigation facilities, a contracting state, and that includes the Philippines, in the circumstances arising under the provisions of Article 69, which I previously quoted, may conclude an agreement with the Council for giving effect to such recommendations. The Council may elect to bear all the costs involved in any such arrangement. Ibig sabihin po, they will fund totally, 100%, all our requirements to make it up to date with international standards. Questions addressed to CAAP. Have we done this? Have we attempted this? Wala tayong gastos. Ang gagastos yung council. Any answer? You're, you're nodding or what? Uh, oh, except for training, sir. Training. But as far as the air navigation facilities, we have not uh, communicated, but we will look into it. So you are not familiar with the convention, because you mentioned, uh, we've heard a lot of uh, uh, 
a lot of international civil aviation organization items so hindi hindi kayo familiar dito take a look at this kasi libre oh if the if provision and maintenance of inter I, i'm going further provision and maintenance of facilities by council and i quote this if a contracts a contracting state so request the council may agree to provide man maintain and administer any or all of the airports and other air navigation facilities including radio and meteorological services required in its territory for the safe regular efficient and economical operation of international air services of other contracting states and may specify just and reasonable charge for the use of the facilities provided libre na i-maintain pa nila ayo ba natin ito yung standard hindi na tayo babagsak yung 69 mo na grade eh baka maging 99% na yon kasi sila yung gumastos sila yung nagmaintain at sila rin yung mag evaluate do you agree I agree, sir. Thank you for the information. Why are we, we not doing this? We will definitely look into it. So, sinasabi ko nga, I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting yes, uh, some things that probably may, might prick your imagination. That this, if this can be done, eh, nakatipid po tayo. There might be some exceptions. There might be some uh, triggering situations. But this is it. Ito na po yun, uh, Secretary Bautista. Kung meron pong magtitrigger, ito na pong nangyari noong January 1. Can I now ask the one, the guy who mentioned that there is an interagency committee uh, created? Uh, yes, Senator. Identify yourself. Uh, I am uh, Yusek Roberto Lim for Aviation. Your Aviation. Honor. And when will the interagency committee report be finished? Uh, by next week, we are scheduled to give an initial report. Initial report. Uh, but the, uh, the investigation is ongoing, Your Honor. So... Uh, with respect to the ICT, uh, the initial estimates for a full report will take more than one month. And but, another, but, but on a rolling basis, we will do it weekly. That will you accept ours. another friendly recommendation or advice? Uh, yes, Your Honor. If you follow the Chicago Convention on International Civil Aviation, you can provide ICAO a copy of the report. That's pursuant to Section 22 of the said convention. Otherwise, we will be in default. And if we are in default, we might be deprived of our voting rights within the assembly or if we are a member of the council or even the council. So are you providing ICAO a copy of your terminal report? Uh, at this point, well, we will do that, uh, Your Honor. And thank you for pointing out that provision. That's a friendly when, suggestion. Yes, Your Honor. When we so have the final report, can, we will submit it to the IKO for their information. You can uh, submit an initial communication that you are conducting an investigation. And before the end of the month, you will be submitting a final report. Yes, Your Honor. Thank that you is our for, schedule, Your for Honor. accepting my friendly uh, suggestions, Madam Chair. I, I intimated to the good chairperson that I have a, a video. This is also friendly, but I would like to ask Secretary Bautista and Captain Tamayo. Yun naman pong nakalagay doon na lalabas na tao, ay sana po hindi malipat sa ibang pwesto. Baka bukas ay malipat na ito sa Tawi-Tawi Airport o sa Poro Point. Baka magalit kayo. Huwag naman po sana. Tumulong lang po yun. Uh, do we agree uh, to have that on the record with the presence of our colleagues here na hindi siya tanggalin, administratively suspended, or transferred to another uh, airport with no with no airstrip? We agree, sir. So you're under oath. Hindi ko nga kilala yung tao. To set the record straight, uh, Madam Chair, uh, during this, during that January 1, uh, incident. I was, my attention was called by Secret Senator J.B. Ercito. I was in Tagaytay. I was in Tagaytay. Doon naman po ako nagbabagong taon eh. Kaibigan ko po yung mga kaap, yung mga ato pa ho nung araw, si General Charlie Taniego. Bata pa ho ako noon, ato, nandun sa, sa CAA pa ho nung araw yan. Kaya, kaibigan ko po lahat yan. So, my initial reaction was to send the Chief of Police of Tagaytay. And all all members of the PNP Tagaytay, bantayan nyo yung kaap, 
kung ano nangyayari doon, uh, report any abnormality, kasi nagkakagulo na sa mga airports natin, report any abnormality. Kung merong gustong pumasok, huwag niyong papasukin. Kung hindi authorized, kung merong nakikialam, tulungan niyo kung sino mga tao sa kaap and support them. Yun po yung napag-usapan namin ni Senator uh, J.B. Hersito. And lo, lo and behold, siguro po itong mga bandang 2.30, matraffic po nun, hindi na po ako sumama kasi maraming namamas ko sa bahay kahit bagong taon na po nun, January 1. So nakarating po yung chief of police ko. Hindi ko naman mention yung name. Pagpunta niya doon, ang report, Sir, wala naman pong nangyayari dito. Very normal. Very relaxing. Very soothing. Very tranquilizing. Tahimik na tahimik. Alam niyo po kung ilan ang tao doon sa kaap station ng Tagaytay? Isa. Isa. One solitary individual manning that station during that critical period in our aviation history. Isa lang siya. Cool na cool siya. nag inom, inom lang ng mineral water. Good afternoon, sir. Welcome. Well, ano ba nangyayari sa Maynila? Alam mo ba? May fluctuation mo ng power. Kaya, ba't hindi ginagamit yung Tagaytay? Inang tan inang patanong ko kay Hepe. So, nag-tour. I'll show you the video. Nangako naman kayo hindi siya tatanggalin. Nag-tour. Na, na, nag Nabanggit ni uh, Senator Grace po our chairman here, na very revealing. Very revealing kasi if you follow the Chicago Convention on International uh, Civil Aviation, it has to be professionalized, it has to meet minimum international standards. Very revealing kasi naka-short pants lang siya, revealing talaga, naka-chinelas, naka so lakad-lakad lang. Okay lang ho sir, walang nangyayaring masama. Tamanawagan na ba kayo ng kaapanila? May text po na wala na hong flights. So ikaw, anong ginagawa mo? Ba't ikaw lang mag-isa? Monitoring lang po ako dito. I, I, I hope you will not take it again, Zim. Uh, Tagaytay has been known to be a hospitable city. Oh, actually, so, there should at least be two people, di ba, in the shift? Para kung nabahan niyo yung isa? O, di ba? Okay. So, pakinggan niyo po ito. Uh, why why the airport fiasco is going to Chinelas nga siya. So, very relaxed. Parang wala nang ngayon. That's January 1. January 1, 2 p.m. Thereabouts. Second video. Can, can we have that second video? Yung labas naman ng facilities. Huwag niyo po tatanggalin to. Ang apakabait nito. Huwag niyong ililipat. Ito po siya. Ayun. Lentor. Sabi ni Senator JD, walang security guard. Pulis na ho namin niyang nagpaikot-ikot dyan. Siya lang mag-isa. Iniwan na yun na yung loob. Nagtor to sa labas. Iniwan na yung loob. So wala nang tao doon. Baka tumatawag kayo. Nasa labas po. Kasalanan ko po yun. So again, very revealing. Very very peaceful, tranquil place in Tagaytay. Uh, lakas na akin. Nakita nyo. Naririnig nyo. So having, having viewed the stage, Uh, you promise not to transfer them. You promise to uh, transfer him, not to administratively sanction him, nor even admonish him. Pabantayan po namin yan. Kawawa naman yung bata. Napakabait niya. Pero ang tanong ko po dito, and this, again, this is a friendly suggestion. We, we have reached a high level of alert. During, during that critical moment, nagdidetour na yung mga aeroplano, bumabalik na yung mga galing ng... Uh, Japan, Hong Kong, Davao, Cebu, grounded na lahat. And yet, we don't have that state of urgency required to address a very critical situation involving at that national security. So, are you saying now that we are now not following this convention that we have been mentioning for several times now? Baka yung 69 natin, pag napanood nila to, baka gawin, gawin na lang 6. Point nine. So, another friendly suggestion. 
can we make this more uh, professional level of alert? Is, is it orange? Is it yellow? Is it red? Di ba? Para automatic na, alam nila yung gagalawin nila. Yung gagawin nila, uh, sabihin nila, chief, pupulis, tulungan nyo kami, mag-deploy kayo sa labas para walang makapasok dito sa loob. Di ba? C can you explain that, uh, Captain Tamayo? A friendly ano, friendly lang naman yung akin eh. Kasi na, Na-alarma ho ako nun. Sabi ko, ba't isa lang tao nandito? Go ahead, sir. Thank you for the information, sir. Because during these holidays, our policy is to be on heightened alert. So if information like this, we receive information like this, hindi naman ho namin pag-initan yan, but we will look into all of our facilities to make sure that whatever directive we give is followed. Uh, isa pa ho yung ano eh, dapat ho yan eh, security guard eh. Laging may security guard yung facilities natin eh. So, at saka bawal ho magpapasok talaga. It's a restricted area. So, so sa, huwag kayo magagalit sa kanya kasi pinakialaman ko na yan dahil alarmado ho rin kami. Tsaka nasa Tagaytay ho yung, nandun din ako eh, a few kilometers away. Sasama nga ho ako doon, kung wala lang namamas ko sa akin, nandun din ako. Kaya lang ang biro ko kay Senator JB, Pag sumama ako doon, baka may makalikot pa ako doon na ibang mga gadgets, lalong mga pasama. So, how can we improve this? Uh, ka lessons learned. Yes, sir. Uh, we, we will look into this, especially now that you have uh, made us aware of it. Uh, I-review ho namin yung mga policies ulit when it comes to yung outlying facilities natin. And dapat ho talaga, ma-monitor ma ho yan eh. Uh, you really don't know what will happen kasi yung uh, during that situation last January 1 yan was very important for us the Tagaytay facility because that's a microwave facility and when we restored uh, uh, power at the CNS ATM yan ho yung unang tumulong sa amin sa communication flight uh, came from Brisbane, Australia PR222 that's yung, yung Tagaytay yung tumulong so Siguro po, yung installation lang ng CCTV cameras, naka-monitor naka kayo dito sa Kaap, Manila, kaya po yun. Lapit lang naman ng Tagaytay. At ulit-ulit ulitin ko po, Madam Chair, huwag nyo naman pong pag-initan itong naka-short naka pants, naka-chinela. Siguro, inabot lang ng, ng chief of police ko, nakaliligo lang, uh, napuyat, siya lang ang inabutan nandun, mag-shift. And uh, he was very accommodating enough to brief me, and thereafter I brief my other colleagues, of what is happening in Tagaytay. And, and surely, he was able to help. So, huwag niyo po siyang pag-initan at babaltayan po namin yan. Hindi ko po kilala yun. Uh, Madam Chair, I have no other questions. Um, I just gave some friendly suggestions to our good friend, Secretary Bautista, and I hope they can increase the 69% mark uh, they got from ICAO to 89%. 89%. Yeah. Thank, thank you, uh, Senator... Uh, Senator Tolentino, tinan nyo, he's uh, working even uh, during the break uh, to find out, to investigate what's going on. And in the, uh, as I mentioned, it was, it's very helpful that we have that information. But it's also worrisome. Can you imagine? Major site yung Tagaytay, kahit pa paano. What, can you tell me, what's the importance of the Tagaytay CAP uh, facility? Can you tell us, sir? It's, it's uh, very... Uh important, very critical, because it's part of our communication system. Especially when the CNS ATM went down, yan ko ang nag-save sa amin eh. Because uh, it is microwave. Unlike CNS ATM, it's satellite-based. Okay, so having said that, bakit hindi ninyo man lang chinecheck na merong karelyebo yung tao doon, na may security guard? Kaninong responsibilidad yon? I mean, that's very basic and uh, uh, I guess very visual that you can actually see right away that you're not being compliant. Eh, lalo na siguro itong mga technical, kaya pala kayo nagkakaganyan with all your technical aspects. If just manpower, hindi man lang ninyo maayos yung sitwasyon, bakit ganon? Sino yung, sino yung dapat nagre-report tungkol doon? Sino yung USEC? Or sino yung, kung hindi man USEC, sino sa CAAP? Through the chair, Your Honor, based on our, our schedule po, 
ang tao po doon sa facility ay apat po, dalawang CNSSO at saka dalawang ELPT. At saka mayroon pong security guard doon na naka, ano, uh, kaya nga nagtaka po ako bakit wala okay. pong security guard. Alam mo guard siguro, doon. kahit na sinasabi nyo, they think it's just lip service that you're on heightened alert when it's the holidays. But then, because it's the holidays, a lot of them probably took the liberty of uh, working part-time. We don't know. That's why I think you should really install those CCTVs ASAP um, here in the main office as well as in Tagaytay. And um, if Senator Robin Hood Padilla is still online, I know that he's been ob keenly observing. Um, he has a lot of comments. I, I would like to invite him to to speak if he's still online. If not... What I will deliver a message that he texted the group. He said, kanina, nagpapatawa tayo, may nagpapatawa, pero ang totoo nun, tayo ang nakakatawa at kahiya, kahiya-hiya ang ating sitwasyon at ang nangyari. So we should not take this lightly. Ang babait nga namin sa inyo eh. Pero ang totoo niyan talagang, kaap, you really bungled this, ha? Anyway, um... I think Senator JV just, uh, he knows a lot of technical details. So I'll leave the floor to him and then later on, I will issue now my uh, closing statement. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. I think that this is very important because uh, these are three items. No? Um, number one, I'd just like to uh, ask up again. Yung pong statements una, sabi outdated yung system. Again, uh, for the record, um, Digitamayo, is our CNS system outdated or not? As, as I mentioned earlier, sir, uh, the CNS ATM at this point in time is still state-of-the-art and a gold standard as far as air traffic is concerned, air traffic control is concerned. It just needs updating, upgrades, upgrades, upgrades software, and hardware. No, the, the reason why I ask so that Rina will know what the needs of CAP are so that this thing would not happen again. And from what I know, through the IKO or the International Civil Aviation Organization, correct me if I'm wrong, mandated the use of seamless global air traffic management years ago. Para nga po, seamless na. All of the traffic management system all over the world, i.e. isa na lamang. Hindi pwede ring, tama kayo, hindi pwede outdated tayo. Eh. Because if you are still using ground radar, well, the whole world is using already the satellite-based uh, global air traffic management system, hindi po tayo dadaanan ng airlines, international airlines, and even pilots themselves will not go through our airspace. So, tama ho ba na it was mandated sometime 2011, but it was only 2018 when we were online with the new CNS system. That, that, that's correct. Sir. So, we are out, uh, update, ano lang, it just needs updating and upgrading so, yung CNS is now, hindi na tayo ground-based. No? We are now satellite-based as the rest of the other um, countries are using uh, the global air traffic management system already. Second, yung pong system redundancy, um, I'd like to ask because ang naging problema dito, sabi, wala, you, the backup did not work. Um, do we have a backup system, uh, Digitamayo? that in case our air navigational management system or CNS system fails, ano po ang backup po natin? Because, you know, make a mechanical failure, as you are pointing out, electrical failure can happen kasi ano yun eh, gamit yun eh. So do we have a backup system? Uh, basically, sir, uh, what, what happened nung nawala ho yung CNS ATM natin, we resorted to the old procedural, I think that was explained by Marlene Oleli, the conventional system tayo. Conventional system. Bali, ang nangyari no, nag-VFR na tayo. Yeah, Tama ho ba? Oh, in that fairness. time, that uh, during the crisis situation. Yeah, in, in fairness Visual them, flight rules. Yes, sir. In fairness to them, they are maintaining their qualification for this old procedures that we used to do. So we do not have, uh, ang ano kasi, no, um, what is uh, recommended, that's why we are asking uh, Digitamayo so that we were moving forward. This does not happen again. That yung pong, I think I, I also read in an article that Secretary Bautista also wants a backup system, so to speak. It's not really a backup, but it's a redundancy. 
Tama ho ba na dapat habang gumagana po, we are using the CNS system, we have a second system, for example in Cebu, that is also operating at the same time. So that in case our main CNS system uh, malfunctions or is uh, what happened here uh, is offline, yung pong CNS system or the, back, the redundant system, the secondary system, is already working. Hindi po yung pag namatay yung sistema natin dito, tsaka pa natin sa startup, hindi po. So, the ideal system is that we have a redundant CNS system. Tama ho ba? That, that's correct, sir. It should be an independent system. So, that in event from, of a failure or a breakdown, yes, at the kayang saluhin. Yes. Tama. And I think yung the plan before was to put the that system, supposedly yung may MACC na hindi, it was not commissioned. Can serve as a, does, that, can it serve as a backup na in case mag-fail yung CNS natin, it kayang saluhin for the meantime until the new, the main system, uh, the primary system is back online? Uh, as mentioned by uh, General Hatsikis, that MACC system never went online yeah. kasi ang dami home yes. defects, ang dami issues. Kaya ho, hindi pumasok. So that's the reason it was not commissioned. It was not commissioned. So we spent about 500 million that was never uh, commissioned or never was operational. So yung ano po, no? uh, anyway, kaya po tinatanong, so that, you know, in the next budget hearing, we would be able to support you so that uh, we will make sure that our air, air uh, aerospace uh, are, uh, are safe and this doesn't happen again. So pagkakalam ko, tama nga po, meron pong duplication, redundancy. In other countries, may triplicate pa nga ho eh, di ba? So that in case our primary system goes down or uh, is being uh, updated or upgraded, yung, pumbak, yung redundant, yung second system is working, pero meron pang isa na triplicate system. So, ito po ang ano, what's the plan? Finally, uh, finally um, before we ano, move on, so that uh, we would find out what uh, the plans of CAAP are. So, is it the establishment of a redundant system so that they will now have two systems, uh, Madam Chair, working at the same time na in case mag-fail yung primary, kayang-kayang saluhin ng secondary system. That, that's correct, sir. So, uh, moving forward po, we would like to do uh, a feasibility, have a feasibility study immediately for the second independent system because, for the backup system, because it takes, as you know, it takes time to set this up. Thank you, sir. So, that is the long-term, yun na talaga yung plano natin, so that we will have a safer, I would say, um, air navigational uh, system para aerospace that at least we will have two redundant system. How much would it cost? Uh, the feasibilities are approximately 200 million just for the feasibility study. Just for the feasibility study, yes. but for the system, probably for 13 billion also. Is it the same as the primary Perhaps, system? Sir. Likely, sir. Almost the same as of this time. At least we know for the record, uh, Madam yes. Chair, the, so that uh, in, the, in terms, uh, when we go through the budget hearings, probably we can uh, uh, support you with this uh, because, again, what really happened was uh, it cannot happen again no? because the, the effects, no, to tourism and other, um, and other uh, factors are also uh, no, no, more enormous, no? the effects the, to, the, to the economy, to national security. Uh, is enormous. But uh, I'll just wrap up my, uh, ano, Madam Chair, because uh, Senator Bato, I uh, heard, uh, still would want to ask questions. Going back, kasi nandito na rin po yung Air Force, I'd like to take advantage on the national security uh, issue. Sir, sir, Air Force, Colonel, uh, please identify yourself. Yes, sir, I'm Colonel uh, Robert Bita, sir. So, um, going back, no, the, kanina siguro narinig mo, that, uh, Doon po sa ating CNS, the Communication, Navigation, and Surveillance, are there any Air, Air, Air Force personnel always there to monitor? Uh, meron po tayong naka-duty sa ATMC. Parari, sir. Ano yun? Talaga 24-7 yes. nandun? Okay. So again, uh, going back kasi yan, yung pong Air Defense identif Identification Zone, ibig sabihin, pag pumasok sa zone na yun, Luzon Area, critical, dapat all aircrafts will be identified. Tama po ba? Yes, sir. We also have the monitoring at PADCC, sir. Sa PADCC, no? 
Yes. So in case merong isang intrusion that unidentified aircraft enters our aerospace and does refuses to identify or it cannot be identified, ano po ang protocol ng Air Force? We intercept, sir. Immediately intercept, sir, the aircraft. So yung pong personnel nyo will call uh, our uh, strike wing? So uh, fighter wing, sir. Fighter, fighter wing. wing, sir, yes, sir. Okay. To intercept, sir, and uh, uh, mag-deploy na po kaagad ng, uh, ano, sir, ng fighter aircraft, sir, to intercept. Did this happen again? But our chair is uh, asking or may bang intrusion ang uh, ident unidentified aircraft that you intercepted? Uh, as of now, sir, wala pa, sir. But we already made some exercises uh, regarding that, sir. So, um, last point. So, the whole time that the CNS was down, our air defense system, our air defense also, we were done, the, the, the armed forces and the de our defense was blinded also the whole time that the CNS was down. No, sir. Hindi naman. Yung no, ating radar is a Poro Point yata, that's Air Force, uh, no? We is have three radars right now, sir. Uh, Pasukin, uh, Mount Salakot in uh, Palawan, sir, and uh, Gasar Air Station in Mindoro, sir. So those are all working, kahit na down yung CNS. Can it cover yung area ng uh, na aerodrome ng CNS nung nawala ang CNS? Kaya ng can it cover, na monitor natin o na surveillance ba, kaya lahat ng aircraft? Hindi, hindi pa, sir. Because we have uh, uh, sa modernization natin, sir, hanggang Horizon 3, sir, yung ating ano ng radar. So itong tatlo na ito, sir, ito pa lang yung first uh, sa Horizon 1, sir. So we still have uh, Horizon 2 na another uh, four radar, sir, isang mobile and three uh, fixer and Horizon 3, sir, is uh, three mobile and one fixer. So that will cover already the whole Philippine aerospace. Yes, sir. So yes. Horizon 2 or 3? Yes, sir. So, uh, Madam Chair, we want to find out also because, again, this uh, incident is an eye-opener for our national, national security. So thank you for that, uh, Colonel. So, Madam Chair, with that, I wrap up my, you know, uh, for the, the next hearing for other matters. If Senator Bato is online, if not, let me just... Uh... Let me just talk about a few points that I observed during this hearing. Um, do we have any uh, official way of updating the software of our CNS ATM? Is it something that has a software that needs to be updated regularly? Oh, there, there is, ma'am. We are advised of the so software upgrade requirements uh, coming from so you are advised uh, by them yes we are informed and are and have you done the updating uh, not never for the, well, not for the past two years um Thales or somitomo can you please verify if at this point they should have upgraded the software is there a notification for that yeah that that's uh, that's correct madam chair um the uh the software we recommend is, uh, is updated at least yearly uh, to maintain uh, pace with uh, international standards. So they haven't upgraded the system since you... Correct. Since 2020? Uh, in fact, uh, the, last, the last upgrade was... Uh, yes, that's correct, 2020. How can you go on like that? Are you just winging it, uh, Director Tamayo? Alam... Since 2020, kailangan na upgrade yan. Hindi rin yung ina-upgrade. Uh, How can you be to, compatible to chair, with other systems? Uh, that, that's still part of the issues between Thales and the OTR. We have the funds for the upgrade. Okay, so listen. Initially, you were saying you don't need the maintenance. Uh, well, you don't. It's not that crucial because your engineers are trained to do the inspection and the audit. But apparently, that's not the only case. The upgrade of the software is something that has to also be provided by Thales. So that is affected. I mean, if it's an, an amount, let's say, that uh, you think is too much for us to be able to shoulder, as the Senate President said, if you approached us and said, Medyo ano na tayo na o obsolete na yung ano natin, kailangan na i-upgrade. Hindi naman namin, hindi ibibigay sa inyo. In fact, we gave you money in the past three years since the pandemic. So, 
what is the excuse? Why did you think that this is something that you can, you can wait for, or or you can, I don't know, not prioritize at the moment? Sir? Through the chair. Uh, the uh, updating uh, that is uh, software contains the new application. New application po. So, uh, so far po, yung application na ginagamit ng air traffic service ay sufficient, sufficient naman po na uh, ma-provide ma yung required service. De uh, yes, sir, ha? Yung isang UPS system ninyo, uh, di umano ay narinig ninyong maingay na nasira yung blower. Uh, pero sabi ninyo ay umaandar pa naman so tinuloy-tuloy nyo hanggang ito na nga yung mga nangyari. Tapos ito sasabihin mo, eh kasi okay pa naman. So at what point will you say, no, it's really crucial that we update it already until something like this happens? Pero the chair, uh yung pong application yung mga application po na na bago po yung po yung uh, kailangan na upgrade uh, pero hindi pa naman po natin kailangan yung application na yon kasi mayroon pa tayo mga kakulangan so sa ngayon po uh, hindi siguro, natin kailangan yung application na yon kasi mayroon tayo mga may, may, may yung ginagamit po natin po ngayon is sufficient pa para ma-provide yung required service na kinakailangan po. Ang uh, example po dito, Your Honor, is yung space-based ADSB. So, pag mag-provide po yun, pagka, pagka, kasama po yun sa latest upgrade po nila, ngayon po, uh, pagka kunin po natin yon, yung hardware po naman natin ay kailangan pang ano, kailangan pang uh, dagdagan at saka mayroon pa tayong contract with another service provider na para ma-provide po yung space base ADSB. Okay, alam mo, minsan sinasabi nila na yung mga ganitong pangyayari ay ginigising tayo. It could, it's, it could be now a blessing in disguise that this thing prompted us to focus on the deficiencies of CAAP and your equipment. Thankfully, there were no deaths involved because of the skill of our, well, of our operators, air traffic uh, control operators and some of our engineers. But the fact is, you, you were just winging it. You're just hoping against hope that nothing will go wrong. Since you're doing not just the bare minimum, but not even the minimum of what is required, which is, I think, uh, at least a yearly uh, audit and inspection by a third party. In fact, there's a daily check that uh, was being mentioned. Number two, a software upgrade. And then number three, a hardware uh, upgrade that is also necessary to be able to make that software uh, hardware, that, that software update uh, effective. Kasi kung wala ka naman, mag-update ka ng software mo, pero obsolete naman yung mga hardware mo, eh bali wala rin yun. So lahat yan nakikita natin, problema pala. So sa susunod na budget, normally, CAAP does not remit money to the national government. Am I correct, Director Tamayo? Yung CAAP ba nagre-remit ng pera sa national government? Alisin natin itong pandemic kasi you were required to give 4 billion plus in cash and 4 billion in dividends. But in the past, are you remitting money to the national government? No. I, I, st I uh, stated that to Levy. A total of $22 billion was remitted. For the past how many years? Uh, 2016 up to uh, the present, 2022. So maybe it should have been asserted that CAAP is a, an autonomous, uh, yes. a, what do you call them? Uh, uh, fiscally, fiscally, fiscally autonomous, autonomous uh, yes, body. So, dapat talaga, sabihan sa national government, you cannot rely on this because you need your revolving funds.
to be able to upgrade your system. Imagine 22 billion from 2016 until the present. Um, that could have secured all of the necessary services and upgrades that you needed. So nangyari, pinapadala lang ninyo sa gobyerno, kayo ngayon ang naiipet. You should assert your leadership the same way General Hotchkiss did during his time. Not, I, You know what, I'm sorry if I have to mention and compare this, but it seems rather relevant at this time to, me to mention that, sir. Um, so that's that's the point. Now, I, I would like to just do this uh, closing now. Yeah, In this, Your Honor, to uh, the yes. chair, if uh, I, uh, before, I may Before I, I recognize you, uh, you said Bobby, before, before I read my summary, I want to hear also from Secretary Bautista your thoughts on what's going on, what your commitments are, because even if you're not directly involved, uh, you are responsible for the entire transportation sector. So by command leadership, that's under you. And ultimately, you will be responsible for that. I, I, when I was asked if, you, if, if they think that uh, you should be liable, you were just sworn into office. So your chance now is really to find out what caused it, uh, to fix the situation, and, and to hopefully guarantee that it will not happen again. So from this time forward, um, it's, it's almost on you already. So uh, Yusek uh, Bobby Lim. Thank you, Your Chair. Just to put context, uh, Your Honor, the, maybe the analogy given to us by Thales about the application of the software. Uh, the... The CNS system uh, is just like a phone, no? It's an Apple phone. There are regular updates that happen. So if the, up the latest update has not been uploaded to the system, it does not render the phone uh, obsolete or useless. It can still function. But over time, if you do not uh, apply or download those software, it will make it slower, operate sm slower. Uh, Yusek Bobby, are you uh, sitting on the board of CAAP as a representative of the OTC? Yes, uh, the OTR? yes, Your Honor. Okay, so why didn't you mention uh, this during our budget hearing? Well, Your Honor, there was, uh, in fact, we, we had identified this as a priority project uh, for 2023. Uh, and... In so far as the upgrade is concerned, we have received advice from Thales that what you need to do are upgrades and you don't need, you, you do it on, in step by step. Sure, we are behind in terms of software, but you can do that step by step. Uh, the other thing that was hindering the commercial negotiations between CAAP and Thales was the outstanding claims issue arising from the major contract. So one of the first things that the secretary did uh, upon assuming office was a meeting with JICA and the Embassy of Japan to discuss this claims issue because it involved uh, the joint venture of Thales and Sumitomo. And it was agreed that the parties will constitute a claims committee to review the matter because it had been pending for three years, unresolved. There was a decision that denied it, but it needed to be reviewed so that uh, we could actually assess uh, the factual issues of the dispute because the factual issues revolve around delay. So the contractor was asserting that the delay was excusable. The engineer of the DOTR was saying, no, uh, those are inexcusable delays. So it's a factual issue. And when you add it all up, it, you know, the claim is in the hundreds of millions. So the secretary uh, created a new claims committee. And uh, this claims committee is comprised of myself and two undersecretaries. When was this created? It was created in September, Your Honor. Uh, we came up with a procedure, and in, in, in fact, we all agreed to use an expedited uh, methodology, so we agreed and directed the parties to have a joint memorial 
rather than each party coming out with, with its own position paper and we having to go to a litigious process. And in fact, in December, we directed the parties to submit this joint memorial uh, in, in January. And in fact, they did submit this already yesterday, uh, two days ahead of the scheduled deadline of January 13. So we have a joint memorial regarding the delay damages. There are three other damages, uh, three other claims that we will proceed thereafter. The procedure now requires the committee to uh, pass upon this delay damages claimed by the OTR. Uh, well, while that is being assessed by this committee, uh, another joint memorial will be prepared by the claimant, uh, Sumitomo, for their suspension claims, prolongation claims, and uh, escalation claims. So we believe your honor. What is that, your timeline to have uh, this resolved? Pay whatever damages we need to pay or, or minus whatever damages they claim? Yes, Your, yes, Your Honor. We, we are exploring that approach to expedite the process. Uh, we believe that uh, within the month we can resolve okay, so one, of, one, of, one of the claims, uh, the first claim, uh, which is the DOTR claim, and then in the next month in February resolve the, the remaining claims of the contractor. Yeah, that is our timeline. Each Your Honor. time, each delay that you uh, encounter or that that we encounter is a delay also in the service and maintenance uh, agreement. We, we agree, Your Honor. So, I don't know. I mean, a month, two months, it, it's, it's still quite long, but I guess it's better than years. So, in the, in the meantime, I would like to ask um, Secretary Bautista, you know, there was a proposal for uh, the consortium for the Manila International Airport. And I was part of that initial uh, talks with regards to this in 2017. And then in 2018, uh, they were approved by NEDA. But for some reason, that was taken back because certain provisions of the concession agreements, uh, the consortium, didn't think was fair. And uh, that was, well, NEDA is under the DOF, so I don't know what. I think what they were trying to ask for was um, something to do with the material adverse government action. That if you agree on something based on the laws at that time, it will not be changed, even if there's a, both from the, I mean, from the judiciary, executive, or the legislative branch, which I think is, is fair that you honor the sanctity of a contract. So, of course, the consortium group didn't agree that this would be feasible because there'd always be threats that uh, their contracts might, might change. Um, I heard that this is one of the president's priority issues now, is to privatize uh, the management of the Manila International Airport. Can you confirm this, sir, that you are actually in talks for the terms of reference for this? And... If the terms of reference are there, would you also be open to accepting an unsolicited bid, sir? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, we confirm that uh, this government is planning to uh, privatize the operations of uh, Manila International Airport. No? Uh, and uh, we are open to... Uh, a solicited or unsolicited proposal, although we prefer uh, to have a solicited proposal. No? And uh, the government now is working with uh, ADB and uh, the PPP Center for the finalization of the terms of reference. No? Uh, we're expecting that uh, we should be able to have this by uh, the end of uh, first quarter of uh, 2023. And uh, we will be able to accept proposal from uh, interested parties. No? So uh, we confirm, uh, Madam Chair. No? So thank you. That's quite reassuring. Because I remember that if they started this project sometime in 2019, by 2024, it would have been fully operational. So they, we had that time during the pandemic when there was less uh, airport activity to have gotten construction under the way, underway. Um, I spoke to those that are interested and they're, st they're still highly motivated because it can you imagine just in September we're already back to pre-pandemic levels even higher in terms of the fees uh, the cap alone 
So, I mean, the airport can be a profitable thing, but at the same time, convenient for our, for our passengers. And it will not really be in conflict with the Bulacan Airport because you have Tokyo, Narita, and Haneda. You know, both serve the purpose. If you want a little bit more convenience and land in the city center, you can go to Naia, but then a majority of our population also live in the north, and it's easier for them to land in Bulacan. And there are more, air, there are more runways there. And Naia will never expand to more than two. And in fact, they cross pa. Yes. Diba? So, ay, hindi naman matatalo yung concessionaire dun sa Bulacan Airport. Pero, ito talaga, sana ma mag-grant na kasi yung, yung I remember, uh, there was a time in uh, 20, 2014, the concessionaire GMR attended the hearing here in the Senate of Public Services. Senator Serge was uh, in charge of the public services. And their contract, their concession agreement was being questioned. But they already won the bid, fair and square. So I, th I, I thought that we should really honor. So I really advocated for them. And look at them now. Um, the, the Cebu Airport is, is beautiful. I think it's run pretty well, considering. So I think this is something we need to look into, and also the air traffic controls. Um, Canada did this, and by ensuring their national security, they have a government representative, as well as uh, union representatives in the board. Uh, I don't know, since we have this bill now separating uh, the functions of CAAP uh, to be a regulatory one as opposed to being in operations, perhaps we can look at uh, air traffic control as being privatized as well with the safety measures in place. And any time the government can step in if our national security is in jeopardy. So uh, with that, before my closing, I would like to hear uh, Secretary Bautista what can we expect from you, sir? Anong, anong pwede naming asahan sa inyo tungkol dito sa airport? Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. No? Uh, as far as uh, the Department of Transportation is concerned, no? uh, we'll see to it that uh, we will uh, work and uh, fast track the privatization of uh, Manila International Airport no? because uh, MIA po is uh, the gateway to the Philippines, no? And uh, right now, uh, it's the only uh, major airport uh, in Metro Manila. Uh, it has reached its uh, rated capacity. Uh, it even uh, exceeded its uh, rated capacity. Uh, that's why uh, we need to improve and modernize uh, NAIA. No? Admittedly, uh, we had two airports that cross each other. Uh, we can uh, only... Uh, uh, handle uh, 40 to 44 movements per hour. No? But uh, with uh, newer technology, we should be able to increase this to 50, to even 55. No? Because uh, there's one airport in the uh, UK uh, with only one runway, but uh, with the use of uh, new technology, uh, they can handle up to 55 flights uh, per hour. No? And uh, one of uh, the... Uh, the operators or the owners of uh, that airport is uh, also interested to be part of uh, the group that uh, will uh, bid for uh, this uh, Manila International Airport privatization. So uh, we, we will fast track uh, the uh, completion of the terms of reference. Uh, also, uh, we are happy to inform you that uh, there was uh, an amendment to the IRR of the PPP law, which will address uh, the MAGA issue that uh, you just mentioned, uh, Madam Chair, and also uh, will allow uh, arbitration in case uh, there is dispute between uh, the Philippine government and the private sector. Uh, these two provisions are uh, a part of uh, international uh, practices. No? So we'll see to it that uh, we also adopt this because uh, it's uh, internationally uh, being uh, adopted uh, for PPP projects. No? So uh, this is uh, as far as the airport is concerned. No? On uh, the uh, uh, Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines, uh, we will fast track the uh, resolution of the dispute between uh, the OTR and the uh, and uh, Sumitomo uh, Tales. No? I have been uh, talking to them since uh, September of uh, 
last year because I know that uh, it is important that uh, we complete uh, the, this uh, maintenance agreement and upgrade of the system. No? Uh, in fact, uh, we included this in uh, the list of our priority projects as I have uh, presented to the President during uh, the October 11 uh, cabinet meeting. No? And uh, uh, we agree that uh, we will uh, have a budget uh, to uh, do the feasibility study for uh, this project. And uh, we will uh, work with uh, Thales uh, uh, as far as the upgrade of the uh, software is concerned. Uh, I, I, even, uh, I even offered to Thales that uh, we enter into a uh, a maintenance agreement uh, separately while uh, while uh, we are uh, fixing the problem no? because uh, the dispute is between uh, the OTR and uh, the joint venture and I recommended to them that uh, we separate the issue because uh, uh, CAAP as an independent body can uh, enter into an agreement with uh, with uh, Sumitomo and Thales for uh, the upgrade no? while uh, fixing uh, the dispute between the OTR and, uh, and uh, the joint venture. No? Uh, we're waiting for uh, the decision of uh, Thales, although uh, I, I, I talked to the representative uh, earlier, but uh, their head office would like to uh, really uh, resolve the issue before uh, we sign the, uh, the maintenance agreement. But uh, I will, again, uh, appeal to them if we can... Uh, uh, separately uh, work on uh, the dispute resolution and uh, the uh, signing of a new maintenance agreement. So, uh, Madam Chair, uh, we support uh, the, uh, the bill that will uh, separate uh, the operation and the regulatory function of CAAP. No? Uh, also, uh, MIAA, when uh, the uh, privatization is implemented will be a regulator because right now uh, MIAA is both a regulator and an operator. No? There are other uh, agencies in the department that are regulator and an operator and uh, we will push for uh, legislation which will uh, uh, separate uh, the operations and regulatory function of uh, agencies under the Department of Transportation. No? Uh, we also support the bill that uh, the uh, uh, employees of the Civil Aviation Authority of the Philippines uh, should be exempted from uh, the uh, government uh, salary standardization because we know that uh, we need to retain these people uh, or else uh, they, will, uh, they will leave the country, not because they don't love the country, but uh, for economic reasons. Uh, uh, they, uh, they also need to support their families and uh, give their families uh, a very good uh, uh, livelihood. No? So uh, uh, there are uh, other uh, measures, uh, bills that we would like to uh, discuss and uh, present to uh, both Congress and Senate, and we will work closely with, uh, with you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. That's actually uh, quite reassuring, uh, Secretary. I, these are very nice uh, proposals and that, that you have. I think uh, Senator Lisa has a quick uh, interjection. Salamat, Madam Chair. Uh, as a member of the committee, we now welcome ko po yung uh, conflict resolution na ginagawa ng Secretary between the Department and Talis and Sumitomo para hindi ma, parang maafektuhan masyado yung CAAP at yung joint venture. We ni welcome ko rin po yung suporta ninyo sa dalawang bills na kinoconsider namin sa Senado. Pero merong baka uh, akala po natin mas maliit na bagay pero napaka-importante. In fact, instigated uh, this hearing. Kailangan pong sabihin ng DOTR at ng CAAP, sa, di lang sa Senado, sa buong publiko, ano ang nangyari talaga, kompleto at makatotohanan noong January 1. Kasi wala pong moving forward kung hindi natin alam eksakto ano yung iniiwanan natin sa nakaraan. Hindi wala po tayong uh, so that we will not repeat it kung hindi natin alam kung ano yung it, ano yung mali, ano yung kulang, sino ang nagkamali, sino-sino ang nagkulang o ano paman. 
that's the basis on which our committee could also make recommendations moving forward. Salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you. In fact, that's uh, part of my closing. Eh. <laughs> Sa hinabahaba ng ating diskusyon ngayon, hindi din talaga natin masabi, hindi nyo pa rin masabi, hindi kami, hindi ninyo masabi ano ba ang naging dahilan bakit nangyari yon. At hindi pa rin natin matukoy talaga kung ano talaga yung nangyari. So, tama si Senator Risa, paano natin actionan nito na hindi naman natin alam talaga kung anong punot dulo. Subalit, nakita natin na may mga bagay na hindi tayo nagawa, kaya nangyari ito. So, ito ito yung mga nakita natin dito. Yung sinasabi nga na hindi nag-upgrade ng software, wala tayong independent third party auditor. Um, tapos, yung mga sinasabi din naman ni Ito yung, isasummarize ko yung sinabi ni Secretary Bautista. Ha? Dahil, I think ito yung importante. Ito daw yung mga solusyon na nakikita niya. Unang-una, privatization ng airport. Dahil mas magiging efficient. Ito yung mga benefits niyan. Pag na-privatize yung airport at saka yung air traffic control, pero siguro uunahin natin yung privatization ng airport muna. Kasi yung air traffic control, meron yan mga national security concerns. But, in the end, for, for the air traffic controls, ito yung mga benefits. Number one, stable and long-term capital investments without the bureaucratic red tape na manggagaling kung may mga budget pa na kailangan kunin. Air navigation technology resulting in shorter flights and less fuel usage. Billions of investment in infrastructure and billions in reduction of government debts. Hindi tayo yung mangungutang. Trimming of redundant staff while increasing employee salary. Kasi hindi nga sila kasama sa government standardization. So, yon Privatization, um, fast track of the dispute resolution. Number three, upgrade the software with Thales with a separate maintenance agreement if necessary. And removing uh, technical employees from the salary standardization of the government. Kasi hindi nga natin mabibigyan ng magandang bayad eh. Kung gano'n na nangyari. Now, um, ang mayayari, mag-aalisan lang lahat. Pupunta sila sa Dubai, pupunta sila sa kung saan sa mga bansa para magtrabaho. I would like to reiterate, reiterate the submission of the following documents to the committee. A. Technical report on the circuit breaker. B. Minute-to-minute, -minute, second by second timeline of the incident. 3. Electrical plan, plans of the ATMC, CAAP, and Sumitomo will provide this. We ask the help of the country's leading electrical engineers, uh, Engineer Bagwet, to help us make sense of this. Uh, relevant system logs of UPS, CNS, ATM, VSATs, and other relevant systems. Manual contingency protocol and schedule of drills and rehearsals. Position of CAAP on a possible MOU for military takeover when civil aviation fails and coordination with the air defense system and on the division of its regulation and operation responsibilities. This has to be studied well because I'm kind of uh, not too sure about that. Um, this was just one of the suggestions, yes? Salamat, Madam Chair. In addition po dun sa system logs, kung maari din yung manual logs. Salamat and the manual po. logs, um, as mentioned by Senator Risa, the confidential memo on the findings of investigation on cyber security. Now, <clears throat> I call on the employees of CAAP if for some reason, meron kayong nalalaman tungkol dito, maring wala kayo dito ngayon, pero siguro maririnig ninyo yung pinag-usapan dito sa hearing na ito, pumunta po kayo sa amin, kahit sinong senador na inyong pinagkakatiwalaan. Sabihin ninyo kung anong alam ninyo. Kung meron kayong video na nangyari dahil walang CCTV doon, ipaalam ninyo sa amin. Kung hindi ninyo nais lumantad, pwede naman namin kayong protektahan na hindi. Pero para ito sa uh, siguridad ng ating mga kababayan. Kung sa tingin ninyong nagkukulang ang gobyerno at may itinatago, sabihin po ninyo sa amin. Poprotektahan po namin kayo dahil nakasalalay sa inyo ang buhay ng milyong-milyong mga pasahero araw-araw. Um, so this committee will wait for these submissions before we determine the propriety of a second hearing. I think Senator Robin might want to do a short statement before I close finally. 
kasi nagdadasal po kayo kanina nung uh, natawag ko kayo. Pero medyo pagod na yung mga guests natin. So, we'll just give you a, a short time to give your closing statement, sir. Uh, magandang gabi po uh, sa ating ginang na tagapangulo. Uh, at sa lahat po ng ating mga kama na mga doktor, isang magandang gabi po sa inyo. At sa atin pong mga bisita, uh, magandang gabi po. Ang uh, 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 maswerte po kayo, wala yung tigre. At nandito lang yung kuting. At yung ating uh, Senator Rapi Tulpo, wala. Eh, medyo hindi tayo maka... Eh, wala ang magagawa, wala pa rin umaamin kung ano talaga ang nangyari. Pero gusto ko lang ipaalam sa inyo na 56,000 na tao ang uh, uh, naistorbo po diyan sa nangyari noong January 1. At hindi ko po naramdaman sa hearing na to magmula alauna 30 hanggang ngayon na meron pong pagsisisi o may remorse o wala ako kung nakaram di ko naramdaman yun. Uh, nakakalungkot lamang po ano na wala tayong uh, hindi sana ganun. Sana matuto na tayo sa gobyerno. Isasama ko na yung sarili ko. Na sana oh, matuto tayo kumamin kung meron tayong pagkakamali. Puro-puro tayo, ano eh. De, ganito gagawin natin. Ganito gagawin natin. Eh, meron nga nangyari. Wala naman lang kahit sino ang aamit na may pag... Ay, nako. Maraming salamat po. Mahal na ginang na tagapangulo. Yung lamang po. Maraming salamat po. Oo oh, nga naman, alam mo, sa ibang bansa, di ba, pag, diba, pag mga ganyan, mahihiya na sila, sila na mismo ang bibitiw sa pwesto. Pero dito sa atin, um, well, anyway, hindi man natin alam diretsyo kung sino talaga ang, ang umamin na may kasalanan. Alam naman natin na talagang nag, nagkulang ang kaap naman. Alam natin yon nag, nagkulang sila. Um, pero nga, ang, ang ating tinutuntun ngayon ay yung kaligtasan ng ating mga kababayan. Susunod yung mga kung sinong liable, kung may naging negligent, uh, kailangan talaga merong ganon. Kung hindi, patuloy lang natin gagawin yan. Walang mananagot. Hindi naman tama yon. So, this hearing now will be suspended pending the submissions that we are waiting for. Uh, when we have the submissions, we will probably conduct another hearing, but by that time, Hopefully, we'll have more of uh, a progress report on what's happening. I would like to thank all of our guests. You've been so patient sitting there for uh, seven hours, almost six and a half hours. Um, to our two senators that stayed until the end, Senator Gachalian, Senator Risa, thank you very much. And to my very uh, knowledgeable vice chair, Senator J.V. Ejercito, also I'd like to thank him. So with that, this hearing is now suspended. Thank you.